think the Netanyahu government does not probably want to lose the international support that it gained. After all, Israel diplomatically was in the hole quite a bit over the last few months over it, its humanitarian failures in Gaza. Uh, and yet, at the same time, you have a divided cabinet, a war cabinet, where Benny Gantz uh, and uh, the defense minister are pushing the government not to directly retaliate at this point in time and not to cause a, an expanded war, which the Biden administration has said it would not support. And Israel needs American support in the event of an expanded war. Uh, Israel would not have been able to intercept all of these missiles without American and allied support. Uh, if um, they do choose to respond, let's say they try to blow up the drone manufacturing capability of Iran, what do you think happens then? I think in the end you probably have a much more concerted attack by uh, Iran's proxies against Israel. The question is from Hezbollah to Syria to Iraq, where the proxies are, let alone what we see from the Houthi rebels, rebels David. You probably will see a more uh, axis of resistance attack, retaliation against Israel, and it would be low caliber uh, quality weapons, weapons that have already inflicted significant harm against Israelis in the north. Uh, Hezbollah has used anti-tank uh, weapons uh, to kill civilians, and that war, as you know, David, has been going on. There's going to have to be some equation that changes the straitjacket that Israel is in right now, and let alone the need for a hostage deal that would lead to a potential six-month ceasefire that could provide Israel the off-ramp from its current conflict with Hamas. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. other interesting dynamic, of course, is public opinion within Iran appears to be somewhat dissatisfied with what some there would argue are expansionist uh, stances regarding the Middle East. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, appreciate that very much. I'm sure we'll talk again, Ambassador sure, Ginsburg. thank you for having me. A lot more to get to this morning, including Tesla and some new data from IDC on Apple iPhone sales. Take a look at the pre-market. Pretty solid here as we kick off uh, a new week after the worst week since about October. Back in a moment.
NBC. For more on Iran's weekend attack on Israel, let's go to NBC News. Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel in Jerusalem. Richard, for an update on what we might see next. So the Israeli government officially is uh, being very vague on what its uh, responses might be. Uh, there was a security cabinet meeting uh, last night, another one today, but no conclusive statements. Uh, Israeli officials uh, from the president on down are just saying that Israel will uh, act at a time and place of its choosing. It will act in the interests of the, the, the Israeli people. Uh, so there are no indications at this moment that a military strike seems imminent. In fact, sources that I'm speaking to do not expect that you're going to see uh, an Israeli strike coming in the next hours or even days. Um, and that's also been reinforced by the fact that uh, late last night, Israel relaxed some of its restrictions that had been put in place. They were supposed to be in effect through the end of, uh, of the day today, today uh, through until 11 o'clock uh, Monday local time here. Uh, but those have been, been, uh, been relaxed. So that means uh, Israelis are back in school. There can be large gatherings, gatherings over 1,000 people. So they're trying to signal to the, uh, to the Israeli uh, public that they can relax a little bit. And we are, are in this unique uh, stage, which is, is, is unique in conflict and, and usually a, a positive sign, where both sides can claim a degree of, of success and, and can claim victory with Iran saying that it responded to Israel's attack two weeks ago on its uh, uh, embassy compound in Damascus that killed seven people, that it uh, wasn't afraid of, uh, of, of Israel, and Israel saying that it succeeded, it was victorious because it re rendered Iran's attack with 60 tons of munitions fired at this country ineffective. Richard, thank you. Uh, Richard Engel joining us today from uh, Jerusalem. We continue to watch that. Uh, markets highly tuned to any news regarding uh, the news out of the Middle East. Meantime, the opening bell is coming up in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere.
ECB's REN says I've seen June uh, rates cut infl as inflation sh uh, slows as predicted. So again, ECB's REN sees a June rate cut if inflation slows as predicted. Tesla's down in the pre-market. Electric reporting the EV maker plans to lay off more than 10% of its workforce in wake of uh, falling sales. The tech publication cited a company-wide memo from Elon Musk in which he's quoted as saying... ECB's REN did make that comment Tesla earlier this morning around 7.30 a.m. Eastern time. Of growth. Reuters uh, later matched that headline, uh, one of the lines from the email regarding layoffs from Musk says there's nothing I hate more uh, but needs to be done. Well, if you look at the stock performance year to date and it continues to fall, questions about EV demand. Tesla's been in the spotlight. We've seen price downgrades or target cuts every single day on this stock. We know they're dealing with something. And after the last delivery update, Clearly, he's making adjustments. Saw my first cyber hot. truck yesterday. I don't know if you guys have seen, seen one on one. the roads. I, They're I, cool. Yeah, they are cool. You clearly do not follow Kim Kardashian on Instagram. Barreling down. I don't have Instagram. Barreling <laughs> down uh, Broadway. Actually, I did finally get Instagram only because people keep <laughs> sending me Instagram. So I got to like have somewhere to look at what they are. But So pathetic. Uh, I am pathetic. Thank you for that, <laughs> though, for reminding me. When it comes to Tesla... I mean, the key question continues to be, of course, overall demand, the competition from Chinese EVs that we've talked about. You were at that showroom, Sarah, not very long ago, looking at the quality uh, of those of those automobiles that, that compete worldwide with the company. Shanghai obviously continues to be its main factory. I wonder if those layoffs will even include some of the workers there. It must be very difficult to compete for EVs. Look, we saw a lot of Teslas on the street in, in Beijing as well, but those showrooms... The Baidu, for instance, Geely, new robo car. Yep. I mean, you meant you asked me about quality. They look nice. They look nice. They did not seem like a silver mine. That is a competitive market, and it's a competitive market increasingly in Europe. We're looking now to the market on open imbalance of 340 million for the buy side. The big board is Fidelity uh, celebrating the launch of three new ETFs. And at the NASDAQ, it is Yahoo Finance. Uh, Brett filling in uh, fairly nicely here, trying to reverse some of the losses from last week. Levels, uh, Sarah? 51.61. Uh, we'll watch that. We're also watching for arrivals of former President Trump uh, outside the courthouse in Manhattan. I'm not sure. Are we going to take this live? We won't listen in. Uh, but the uh, the first uh, criminal trial uh, for the former president uh, regarding uh, the hush money, and uh, we'll talk about the implications of whether or not that constituted falsifying business records and election interference. Uh, so DJT was down good, a lot more pre-market. Yeah, it's a good segue into DJT, which we've been following uh, for some time. Obviously, we were early in sort of discussing with you prior to the de spacking uh, what it meant on the economic front, potentially, from a, for the former president who uh, owns some, let's call it, 78 million shares right now, due to get another, well, TMTG is due to get another 40 million this week, or maybe it'll be early next week. Remember the 20-day the period after yeah, so the on the market open here, the seeing uh, Goldman Sachs climbing fast below percent following Q1 well, profit beating happen. estimates. Despite what has been the significant fall in shares, the latest uh, uh, decline is is due to an S1 filing from the company. This is typical of what you get from a from a company that was acquired by a SPAC um, or merged with a SPAC. You have uh, a lot of Warren holders, uh, including the sponsors. Right? They own Common. They also own Warrants, and you are going to register those warrants and that's what this filing is registering the warrants and then if and when they actually are exercised that's what you get uh, a lot more float a lot more float we've made that point any number of times of course that what was trading right now which really was only the shares of the SPAC itself remember DWAC um, uh, is uh, is going to be seeing a great deal more shares in the not too distant future when a uh, shareholders can actually sell and that lockup is still some ways away but more importantly many of the warrant holders both private and public get them registered and then can make a decision as to whether they want to exercise said warrants 1150 is the exercise price obviously you can see where they're trading but with uh, with the stock in the mid 20s many people may choose to sell huge profit there that said, if they believe that uh, the former president is likely to be reelected, and that would perhaps 
bring great economic benefits to a company that had roughly four million in revenues and 50 odd million in losses, well then they may choose to hold on. But that's what we're dealing with here, guys. Nothing unusual in this other than it is making it very clear to what may be a largely retail held stock to some extent that, hey, there's going to be a lot more supply out there. Typically, the SEC takes three to four weeks to review a registration statement like this. That said, with DJT, you never know. I do wonder if it's a sort of like real time gauge of what's happening in the courts, you know, how people are feeling about it. We do have this sort of interesting mark to market poll, non poll yeah. in this stock. Yeah. Um, you know, I just come back to the sort of on the fundamentals. You're going to have some when all the converts and warrants and everything is or the, uh, as everything is sort of counted. Some 200 million shares. Let's call More it. More shares. And uh, you know, 200 million even times the current market value. You can see what that is for a company that again has not at this point shown or executed on a detailed plan to be able to have significant revenue growth. Doesn't mean they won't. But. Uh, but that's what I sort of come back to. And again, um, uh, the former president himself will own some 100 and almost 20 million of those shares. Which is a lot and helps his it's a lot. the financial it's a lot. issues. Now, again, in, in the, could you, could you um, uh, uh, push the lockup aside to some extent because he controls the board and you could get a waiver, it's possible. So that would, to your point, Sarah, allow them to sell. Would they ever do, would he do so in order to just help finance his campaign? It, it, it's not unimportant mm -hmm. in the context, obviously, of the presidential campaign currently on. Just looking at this open, it is pretty strong in the market across the board, and the S&P is up almost three quarters of one percent. It's worth noting, Carl, that last week, especially Friday, we saw a pretty broad-based sell-off. 460 stocks in the S&P closed lower, the S&P 500 on Friday. And I thought this stat was interesting. For the first time since September, so the first time all year, every S&P sector was lower on the week. So higher yields in focus, stronger dollar in focus, pushing Fed cuts out in focus and what that's going to do potentially to economic growth. We're having a comeback moment today. Best performing group is financials. That was a hard hit group last week. Today it's Goldman Sachs. That's really the, the strong story. 5.6%. It's one of the best performers in the S&P. I would also note that M&T Bank is higher by about 5.5% reporting earnings. Schwab is higher by 3%. They also reported earnings. We're going to talk to Walt Bettinger and Money Movers. But again, a lot of these problems that were in focus this time last year, like for Schwab, the cash shorting, sorting issues, the deposit worries, have reversed. They saw deposits go up. They are seeing better numbers um, and also seeing a lot more trading activity, as Goldman saw, but on the retail side for Schwab, and that's helping out. Yeah. Stocks up three percent. As we pointed out, Goldman had it, what uh, seems to be uniformly reviewed as a very strong quarter, both in investment banking and trading. Uh, its key franchises, where it may even have done better than many of its peers, and that stock is up some five and a half percent. You see it right there. And to your point, Sarah, I mean, uh, and and. Carl mentioned this. J.P. Morgan shares just got shellacked on Friday, and a half percent, in part on on what was the guidance from the company in terms of its net interest margin and the like. But uh, we have not seen that kind of bouncing back today. Uh, obviously, not to the extent of the losses that occurred on Friday. Meantime, Schwab was in line, I think, yeah. on, on the top and the bottom line. Deposits roughly in line. Uh, BAC and Morgan Stanley tomorrow. Uh, later in the week, we'll get some of the regions and Huntington's of the world. Uh, yeah, but it'd be good to talk to Walt and see what the picture's like right now. And, and KRE is in focus this week. PNC is coming on Wednesday. We're going to talk to Bill Demchek about that because it's just, it's, it's amazing how different of a place we are in now just in terms of sentiment, although there are still concerns, right? When, when last week we had rates move up, the KRE got hit really hard because there are still, there's still this narrative on Wall Street that the big banks are much better insulated from a more hawkish Fed, higher rates, they do better on net interest margins, partly why there was such a disappointment on the J.P. Morgan forecast on that front. Right. But the regional banks are in weaker shape and they're also more exposed to, say, bad loans or credit right. issues when you do have these higher rates than just getting the upside on margin. Yeah. Uh, we're taking a look at shares of Apple. And again, uh, remember, Apple shares actually had a very strong week last week because of renewed enthusiasm about what the company may be able to accomplish when it comes to generative AI and the introduction of any number of potential products that may fuel the next generation 
of, uh, of iPhones. That said, it, it is down today on a report from International Data Corp. In which That's they noting shares the overall of Goldman Sachs for, extending uh, jump to 6% for, uh, now from their Q1 revenue beat pre-market. 7.8% in the first quarter of 24, but Samsung, as you see there, regained its, uh, its top position in terms of market share. Um, and Apple, which had been at 20.7% in the first quarter of 23 overall, fell to 17.3%. So its year-over-year -year change was down 9.6%. That seems, Sarah, to be giving some concern to some shareholders, though, again, uh, just to, I mean, the stock has not been a strong performer this year. Nonetheless, it did have a very good week last week on, again, those sort of uh, exuberance around what it may be able to accomplish when it comes to a generative AI. So, yeah, small give back. I just want yeah. to point out that the dollar yen is at 154 point. We should just stop the show and take it to Japan right now. Because these are these are pretty extreme levels, I think, and and everybody's watching for some, was there going to be some sort of intervention from Bank of Japan? Um, it, it, it will impact U.S. earnings. Companies that do business in the U.S. get hurt on the stronger dollar. I mean, that do business abroad. U.S. multinationals, whether you have a big chunk of business over there, it, it you feel feel it. And that this was a tailwind recently, as the Fed was going to cut rates and rates were going to come down and the dollar was going to go weak. It's gone completely the other way. And that's been a surprise. And that's going to be another earnings headwind. Not so sure the market punishes companies, though, when they miss on foreign exchange. But they'll be able to use yep. this excuse now. Uh, nice commentary out of uh, Savita Subramanian and B of A. Just looking at how Q1 guidance is typically the worst of the year. Uh, there's no real upside to promising great things for the, the full year. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how dollar commentary gets folded into some of the qualitative uh, calls uh, from companies today and what they expect. That Procter & Gamble, for example, coming up on Friday. Absolutely. The guidance is the question because there's been such optimism around earnings with the better GDP and forecasts and prospects for the U.S. economy. But CEOs have sounded more cautious. We picked up on that last quarter. I do wonder where that's going to go this quarter, especially with geopolitics front and center. You know, you continue to hear anecdotally that the new sort of in vogue thing to hear from CEOs is Fed's not going to be able to raise rates this year if they are in a remotely healthy part of the economy and business, IT spending, um, food spending. Like, unless you're in furniture or some parts of retail department stores or real estate, which has really been hit off the back of, of these high rates, it does increasingly look challenging, and today's retail sales numbers make it even harder, showing we have still inflation and we have still a consumer that's willing to spend. We still have an economy that is operating at capacity and also a jobs market that is near performing near its potential and inflation that's higher than forecast. Yeah, I loved Yardeni over the weekend looking at the record net worth among baby boomers which will be the richest senior citizen generation in the history of the country. And Ed's argument is they're going to spend it all. They're going to spend it all and that that demand for financial services and elderly health care and travel is got, that's what makes this last mile tough. That, I mean, that's one of the things. Also, I think back to Larry Fink of BlackRock, who was telling us all these sort of structural factors that's going to make it very hard, that people's roofs, you know, and their parts of their homes yeah, we're starting about are talking deteriorating. Because they've, well, they've, been, they've been living in them for so long, yeah. and they're locked into these low mortgages, yeah. and that's why you have home insurance rates higher. And right. Auto, you know, more crashes. Auto insurance rates higher. I'm just seeing off the demographic trend right. about what we might be seeing in the data and why it might be hard to have a change. Spend it all? What do you think, Carl? That's a probably a good motto in general. Who, who are you going to leave it to? I, no, why, they'll be why fine. Bother? They'll be just fine. They need to make it on their own. <laughs> I'm in spend it all mode. I've moved <laughs> into that mode. Yeah. You guys will be the beneficiaries. <laughs> spend it all. It's tax day, though, so I thought maybe, I don't know, sometimes we see some selling because people have to pay their taxes, but maybe we got that last week. Although the, the back yeah. half of April for the S&P is generally a little better than the front half because people do get uh, some refunds. What's not playing along today is some tech. Uh, CRMs uh, among the S&P laggards, this journal piece, David, on Informatica. Yeah, um, would be a fairly large deal for, uh, for Salesforce. A uh, number of outlets reporting on uh, advanced talks that actually could involve a, 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 a sale at a price below the current price. The stock of Informatica has moved up rather dramatically of late. Uh, take a look at Salesforce, though, because we have talked a great deal about it over the last year. Remember when they settled with all the different activists and really did go to work on the margins at the company and in part stayed away 
at least for the time being, from large M&A. But large M&A has been a key part of, of what Salesforce has been doing as a company for a very long period of time. The last large deal there was, was the Slack uh, transaction. Uh, and it appears that they may be near doing another uh, deal of some size here. Again, Informatica is a controlled company, so um, a private equity firm from Myra and the like took it private, took it public again, but control it at this point. Is it surprising? I, I found it surprising to see that Salesforce might be doing another big deal, because weren't they a non-big deal mode well, for a that, while? I mean, the I think came? they were being encouraged by that large group of activists that was involved in the stock in part to focus on execution, focus on getting margins up, Sarah, and to your point, stay away from potentially large M&A. One would expect that if they do move forward with this, they would have socialized it with uh, any number of the, you know, at least in some way. And I should point out Mason Morfitt, of course, from Value Act is on the board. Meantime, as Sarah said, all sectors green, VIX below 17. Let's get to Bob Pisani and talk about, Bob, whether the Bulls can hold on to the ball today. Yeah, uh, look, we've got Middle East concerns mixing with sticky inflation, and that's a very complicated stew for investors. What we have today, obviously, is a bit of a relief rally. Uh, all 11 sectors up, 4 to 1, advancing to declining stocks. just want to show you some of the sectors that are moving. Obviously, banks higher. Goldman's the leader on the S&P 500 right now, up about 5%. But you see here the reflection. Inflation trade, again, doing well here. What's that? Well, that tend to be cyclical stocks, material stocks outperforming, uh, doing well. Uh, Freeport McMoran and Mark Marietta uh, up uh, strong. Industrials like Caterpillar is up 2% uh, right now. Um, retail strong on the report this morning. The auto names are strong like uh, Advanced Auto Parts and uh, uh, Group One Automotive. Uh, tech's lagging, obviously, with Apple down a little bit. Uh, interest rate sensitive. Remember, higher rate environment. That's really been uh, uh, messing around with the sectors this year. REITs generally, uh, higher rates, not great for REITs overall because REITs are, rely on debt financing. Rising rates increase the borrowing costs. Uh, not surprisingly, that is lower uh, this year and underperforming. And utilities generally, rapid rise is not good for them either because they're, uh, you know, treasury bonds are more attractive for their higher yields. So higher rates also mean increased borrowing costs for the utilities. Not surprising, utilities also are underperforming uh, this year. Higher rates, again, on this idea of the reflation trade here, in a strong economy, you get cyclicals outperforming. And no surprise, that's exactly what's been happening this year. We keep emphasizing every day, I put up some new highs on energy stocks, uh, in, in big industrials like Caterpillar, Parker Hannifin, uh, have all been strong this year. General Electric have been strong. These are classic deep cyclicals. Defensive names, which are traditionally associated with consumer staples names uh, and healthcare, have been underperforming. So again, this reflation trade, when you have a strong economy, higher interest rates can benefit certain sectors over others. We're going to have Jan Von Eck from Von Eck on a halftime report today. He runs a big suite of commodity ETFs, uh, and he'll tell us all about uh, who the beneficiaries are for this reflation trade here. I guess the bigger question is, what could happen uh, what would be a catalyst for a larger pullback? And to me, 10% is a larger pullback, not 2% like we've seen recently. So you get traditionally three or four things that happen that have to happen in order to get a big pullback. You have to have a slowdown in the economy or job slowdown, notable one. That's not happening right now. An exogenous shock, uh, remember oil embargo in the 70s or COVID or war? Well, unfortunately, that's very elevated right now. We saw those concerns over the weekend. So that's definitely a real concern. And then a rapid Rapid rise in interest rates has also been a problem uh, for uh, a correction uh, in, in the past here. So uh, you can go in all sorts of different directions on this, but the important thing is that interest rate rise doesn't have to come from the Federal Reserve necessarily raising interest rates. Sarah's been talking about this for a while. You could have a series of poor Treasury auctions. Uh, you could have um, a debt downgrade, uh, various things. So in my mind, if you look at the big three things that could cause... So we're surely expecting the Bank of England guilt to sell results. Three, um, are still very real concerns for the market right now. And I think that's why a lot of people are still on eggshells. Carl, back to you. All right, Bob, we'll talk a little bit later about Pisani. As we go to break, uh, watch bonds today, of course. We mentioned 10 year above four six. Not quite done with data for the morning. We'll get business inventories and NAHP in about 13 minutes. And then Logan and Daly on the tape today as well. Back in a moment.
So the Bank of England sells £600 million of bonds in auction, receiving £909.6 million in bids. The APF gilt sale operation cover ratio was one spot five two. In 10 minutes time now at 10 a.m. Eastern time, hit the U.S. business inventories month over month. Forecast 0.4%, prior 0%. Also get the U.S. NAHB housing markets index. Forecast 51 on the prior 51. CNBC. Take a look at oil as we continue to monitor developments in the Middle East. Interestingly, Goldman on Sunday said uh, hedge fund exposure in their prime book is uh, the lowest versus the S&P uh, in about five years when it comes to energy exposure. Uh, and they do not expect substantial upside further to prices. We'll watch that. Dow's up 340 here and S&P holding 5165. Stay with us. Sam's Clubs. Samsung, the latest company to secure funding from the Chips Act. Let's get to Megan Casella. She's live in Texas and has details of this latest large transaction. Megan. Hey guys, so we're here in Taylor, Texas, about 30 miles from Austin. And just behind me, just past these cornfields, is a massive Samsung facility that's about to get a major infusion from the CHIPS Act. The Commerce Department is giving them $6.4 billion in awards, and Samsung is set to invest $45 billion in the next decade. On top of that, to build what they're calling an advanced manufacturing ecosystem. Construction got underway in 2022, but it will now include two leading edge logic fabs, an advanced packaging facility, and an R&D fab. Officials say this should create some 21,000 jobs within five years. Right here in Taylor, they're mostly going to be in construction, but also in manufacturing. And they'll produce some of the world's most advanced chips to power AI. 
Now this is the sixth award coming from the Commerce Department's CHIPS Act. And the Commerce Department does have about $16 billion left to dole out after this. It's hard to really grasp the scale of this project, guys, but take a look at this drone footage to try to get a sense of it. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo told reporters yesterday that each of the two leading-edge logic fabs that Samsung will be building here will be the size of 11 football fields. And In five minutes' time at 10 a.m. Eastern, we get the U.S. business here. inventories we'll month on month. Cool cost, 0.4%, prior, 0%. We also get the U.S. N. NAHB housing uh, market in debt, full cost 51, uh, prior and, 51. And loan from last week uh, about Arizona. It's, it's amazing the ways in which the southern United States economy is changing when it comes to tech. Absolutely. I think officials here told us yesterday they expect this to be a transformative investment for Taylor. And just driving around here and in Austin, you can see how much development there is, how much money is coming in. The CHIPS Act and some of the Biden administration's other stimulus programs have really been a part of that. And so you can really see that here with the number of cranes that are going up, the amount of new housing that's going up. It's really been a big part of the development here in Texas. Appreciate that. We're going to get TSM earnings on Thursday. And uh, as it pertains to supply chains around the world, guys like China, Tim Cook and Hanoi today for a couple of days, uh, sort of committing uh, that their supply chain will get diversified probably in the years to come. Vietnam, I guess, a key part of that. And yeah. he was in China a few weeks ago because that's a key demand story and supply. And obviously, for Apple. India continues to be an important uh, part of their execution as well outside of the Chinese domestic market. Uh, speaking of Apple, those shares are down 1%, um, defying the overall tone in the market, which is quite positive, as, as we've been seeing for this last half hour. The S&P up some 0.8%, NASDAQ following uh, right along. Uh, but there are Apple shares on those market share numbers that we got from IDC. Uh, and Tesla shares, interestingly, also down about 3.5%. Oftentimes, when we talk about layoffs from companies, they actually generate a positive response in the market but not so with Tesla. Perhaps the fears of overall demand sliding for, uh, for their product are outweighing what may be margin improvement as a result of these layoffs. Yeah, uh, BP as well, cutting some uh, jobs in their, in their EV unit, trying to get back to uh, different drivers of growth as uh, questions continue to be asked about global demand. Everybody likes hybrids, That's yes. the right, Toyota? Hybrids revenge. So holding the opening gains, Dow's at 330 and the S&P 5163. Uh, Squawk on the Street continues in a moment. Don't go anywhere. U.S. 10-year Treasury yield hits five-month high of four spot six to six percent, following the strong retail sales data. One minute remaining, I'll leave it with U.S. business inventory for month. Protect your trades from macro headline risk with Financial Juice Pro. Now only $99 a year for our real-time service.
10 seconds. Zero spots, 4%, zero spot, 4%, as expected. Uh, NAHB housing market index, 51, 51, as expected. The economy. Good Monday morning. Welcome to another hour of Squawk on the Street. I'm Sarah Eisen here with Carl Quintanilla and David Faber, live as always from Post 9 of the New York Stock Exchange. Take a look at stocks. It is a strong start to the week after a sell-off last week. The S&P is up eight-tenths of a percent. You've got every sector higher right now. Who's leading financials? After a really strong quarter from Goldman Sachs and from some of the regional banks, M&T Corporation surging 6 percent. Charles Schwab also up nicely. Healthcare is the second best performer. Industrials are up in the top three as well. The Nasdaq's coming back 7 tenths of a percent. Uh, it actually outperformed last week. Today it's NVIDIA, Microsoft, Broadcom and Amazon. Meta's also higher. Apple and Tesla on the other side, weighing on the tech trade. And take a look at Treasuries. It's been a story of higher yields and continues to be so. The 10-year yield now at 4.6 percent. Remember, the highs last October were around 5 percent on the 10-year. We continue to march toward those levels. The two-year yield uh, almost at 5 percent. We're 30 minutes into the trading session. Here are some movers we're watching. Got to start with oil. Prices are actually lower despite all the geopolitical fears. More on the direction of crude and what to do with that coming up. Shares of Goldman Sachs rallying. The company reporting a big beat on the top and bottom lines fueled by trading and investment banking. Tesla, as mentioned, under pressure, the EV maker making big job cuts. We're going to have more on that story and Tesla's future ahead on the show as well. And then look at shares of Trump Media. They are plunging after the company filed to issue millions of additional shares of stock. Trump Media now down more than 40 percent since its market debut. Getting some breaking economic data this hour. Business inventories up four tenths, exactly as expected. Last month's read was unchanged. Uh, meantime, we're going to watch for NAHB, get a sense of how the housing uh, market is feeling as uh, rates have stayed high, makes it difficult to get in or refinance. I wonder what that'll be doing, especially as we head into a busy spring season. Right. So we're reversing some of the easier financial conditions, lower rates in places like housing that kicked off the beginning of the year from last year. It's a big week on data, on earnings. Just give you a taste of what's ahead and what we're watching. We're still going to get a number of the big banks uh, tomorrow. We get Bank of America, Morgan Stanley. We get existing home sales, as Carl mentioned, and starts. Retail sales were out this morning um, and they they added fuel to the higher rates, hawkish Fed story that has been playing out in the markets because they were better than expected. 0.7 percent rise in March. The expectation was 0.3. The revisions on February and March higher, important, especially on February. If you break down where the spending occurred, well, the biggest categories were non-store retailers, so buying online. Uh, up 2.7 percent on the month. Gas stations, we know we've been paying more for oil prices lately, so we're spending more at gas stations. General merchandise had a nice 1 percent bump. But that did not include department stores. They were negative. Health and personal care, groceries higher, all the places you know where you're paying more but have to buy more. Negative numbers at clothing, ele electronics and appliances, motor vehicle and parts dealers, and furniture. So those are still weak categories. There really is this total separation in what we're spending on. Services continue to be strong, and general merchandise has come back a little bit. And those weak spots that are tied to rates and inflation continue to be weak. And as I mentioned last hour, one important note on retail sales is that it's not adjusted for inflation. So it includes the higher prices we're paying, which is translating into higher sales. But even with the rise of inflation that we saw, David, in March, you still saw a spending bump because 0.4 percent was inflation. And we got 0.7 percent retail sales increases. Right. So there was still a, a boost. All of which means when I, I'll a, I ask you this every day, I mean, how is this changing people's anticipation in terms of what it's going to mean for 
for rates and for the probability of a cut at some point during the course of 2024, as now we say since June certainly seems to be off the table. It, it just continues to, to fuel the notion that it's going to be hard for them to cut sooner rather than later. We came into this year expecting six cuts, or the market hard did. Imagine, yeah. A lot of people thought that was crazy, but that was the market's expectation because the Fed itself was sounding very dovish and offered many chances, Fed Chair Powell and many meetings, to try to sound a little more tough on inflation. He did not do that. I wonder if that changes given March's reading of inflation was firm. The data continues to point to an accelerating economy. Retail sales is just another point. And by the way, the control group of retail sales was up more than a percent. That's the one that factors into GDP. So and that's, that was the best since January of last year. Yeah. yeah. So that bodes well for for the GDP and the overall economy on top of the strong jobs reports and inflation that is still above target. I should point out the 10 year is above 4.6 for the first time since November of last year as well. Offering an opportunity when it comes to getting a return, you might add, for investors. Yeah, and then Mike Wilson and Morgan Stanley uh, with a note out over the weekend arguing that the pain for equities lies somewhere in the 435 to 44 range, which we're obviously above. And you can sort of see the impact it's having, at least in small caps, is what Mike would argue. Right. So that's the question. Now that we're getting into these higher yields and a stronger dollar, does it actually increase the chances of a harder landing or recession? Because we are talking about levels that constrain economic growth, not to mention oil prices, which I know they're giving some back today, but they're elevated. They've risen 16 percent this year. There are worries about Iran and escalation in the region, which could push oil prices higher. We're going to continue to talk about that theme. Um, by the way, we also are going to hear from ECB President Christine Lagarde tomorrow on this show right here for an exclusive, because the fascinating thing right now is that rates are moving in different directions. You know, the market likes it when it's coordinated, coordinated action by central. Everyone's on the same page and we're all we're all hiking together and we're all cutting together. They're going at different speeds, which is always can be a little tricky and destabilizing. What's the precedent for ECB leading a cutting cycle? It hasn't happened I was in a while. Say, right? I, don't, I don't know. I can't remember oh. last time ECB. They, they lead hiking cycles, right. remember? Yes. But here's the gap, okay? The U.S. is all the way on top and it's ticking higher, wow. including as we speak, you know uh, Japan is all the way on bottom there, yeah. and these European rates actually fell last week while U.S. rates rose. And let me give you that chance that I know you want to talk about the dollar very quickly. Well, that, that is That why. chart is leading to a very strong dollar and a very weak yen. It is time, as you say, to go shopping in Tokyo. I, I think we should just be packing our bags right now. <laughs> you were literally just shopping. Well, in I Tokyo. did. I did have a layover, and I got sushi and and souvenirs. And it was and they very were cheap. What a bargain! They were cheap, but now it's at 154. I should have waited a week. It's crazy to. So when you have a yield gap like that, money chases yield, and so all the money flows into the U.S. dollar. So for all the talk about how we're losing safe haven, forget it. The money's coming here because our yields are higher. Nowhere better to shop than Tokyo. I know, it's great. It's beautiful. I agree. We are in full agreement there. Glad you concur. <laughs> Meantime, we do want to keep our eye on the Middle East and get the latest on the fallout from Iran's drone attacks on Israel. NBC's Richard Engel once again with us from Jerusalem. Morning again, Richard. Good morning. So still no indications here that any Israeli response is imminent in the works. There was just a briefing from a senior Israeli military official, uh, but it was retrospective. Uh, he was fielding questions about what kinds of munitions were used, which countries were involved. Uh, not a lot of details, uh, but the big takeaway is uh, it was a retrospective uh, kind of uh, look back. Uh, uh, the Israelis are counting this as a success. They, uh, they, they're talking about 99 gains of now the up 300 plus uh, rockets, uh, missiles, drones, uh, I should say, uh, that Iran fired at, at this country over the weekend being intercepted by uh, Israeli defense systems, uh, but also with the help of the United States, Jordan, uh, 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 the, uh, France, and the United Kingdom, and other unnamed nations. So uh, for now, it seems like th this country is uh, abiding by all of the international advice, including coming from uh, the White House, that they should uh, try and de-escalate, not respond, and as President Biden said, take the win. Take the fact that uh, uh, that Iran launched this attack, that it caused 
minimal uh, damage, almost no significant damage, uh, no fatalities. US three to 30 year yields rise at least 10 basis points on the day. Seems to be holding. Richard, what is the thinking about how this weekend attack impacts Israel's war on Hamas in Gaza, which is still very much going on and is really just a proxy war with Iran? Read that they walked away from another ceasefire deal. Um, to return hostages over the weekend. Good morning. How's everybody doing out there? I'm trying to check in with you really quick. Yeah, I don't think exactly it is a proxy war with with Tech one two an oversimplification. Uh, Hamas uh, operates. Sorry, I'm still having some audio issues today. Hamas has a population center. There, uh, there are about 2.3 million people in Gaza. Gaza is closed off. This is to be expected. The first check one two. I got some weirdness going on. Check check one two check. Check one two. Services in the I got some weirdness going on. That Hamas still, have, still having some audio issues. By Iran to carry out the October 7th attack. Uh, so just down here, as you come into the daily trigger, your automatic reaction is going to be normally is going to be a rejection. From Iran, you want to see if they can close this uh, gap down below from this morning. Syria and Iraq. We've got. I think that's it for right now. Let me see if we take a peek back here. Is an independent. I think that's it. So hopefully we can get down here and buy a dip down below. There's some, another location down below at 506 that I'm interested in that still hasn't been filled. Let me take a look at that really quick. Israeli troops have wow, my my uh, my my audio is all fucked up today. Uh, Passover starts uh, the Jewish holiday of Passover starts in one week and goes until the 30th, and the expectation there, there's no nothing that has been written down and obviously Israel isn't uh, telegraphing its plans but the expectation here is that Israel will go ahead with the Rafah campaign that it is going to go into uh, southern Gaza but that if that campaign does take place which is something that the US is urging as it is down on moving the S&P 500 caution, uh, extending that, here still up to spot 3% uh, but just quickly moving Passover down as we get no news catalyst for this move to the downside here there's a catalyst we hit the daily trigger again S&P 500 now in the up zero spot 3% after pairing check one two before going in and carrying out a major operation against Rafah where about 1.5 million Palestinians are taking shelter check one two Hiding among them. Check one two. Check one two. On a morning like this. Ugh. Of NBC News in Jerusalem. Thanks. Meantime, markets trying to shrug off some of the risks in the Middle East and readjust. To check this one here. Cuts. Our next guest. Call Monitor only. No, no, that might be. Nope. Check one two. Check one two. Check one two. Check one two. Today, although off the morning lows, front street. Having some really crazy audio stuff this morning. Joins us, Tom. You've been good about I'm Lee, baby. things like, say, a job print or CPI, and arguing that it's uh, an opportunity if there is a dip. Is it a harder call when it does involve geopolitics? Uh, it's definitely a harder call because the scope of a uh, of you know the path this you know this escalation can take place is unknown. But at the same time, uh, we can look at sort of past episodes and past war instances or conflicts and understand how markets react and where positioning is and i think that's what's giving us some Dixie's still on a high there's a lot less leverage now and i think the fed's in a very different position where the fed could be supportive and and that's why i think as uncertain as it feels right now i i think this dip will be bought does it create downside risk for your year-end target let's say Let's see if we can get some more stuff up here for you, you know, i think when you move beyond the one month, even three months, or even six month time frames, I, I don't think that these actually affect the trajectory because, you know, the drivers of our year end target are. He's like it off the one minute chart. Profits, you know, the upturn in, in business confidence measured by ISM, the fact that consumer leverage is still quite low, and that monetary policy is actually supportive of the business cycle. So I think these things all That's right. are still at play between now and year end. And, you know, I think our 5,200 target is, is actually is too low, but it I think way it's too low for us to raise our target as well. Yeah, I mean, way, way, way too low over the weekend. I cited it. A lot of it does rest on this idea that the Fed is in a very different mode. And as you referenced, they're sort of in easing mode. But the story, Tom, has been that they are not going to be able to ease so easily or so quickly. And today's retail sales data only adds fire fuel to that fire. So well, let me look at some of this stuff. I do wonder how much of your thesis depends on the Fed cutting this year. Uh, Sarah, I think it's important for the Fed to be dovish this year. 
um, and, and in terms of how many cuts they do, I know there's going to be a lot of debate about, well, is it three cuts or is it two or one? But it's really going to be the reasons why they make fewer cuts. If the economy is resilient and inflation is uh, not accelerating, so they end up doing even as little as zero cuts, that's, that's actually quite bullish because, one, the Fed still has a lot of firepower to, to make future cuts, and it just shows you the economy is handling higher rates pretty well. I mean, I think it would speak really well for equities if, if the Fed made fewer cuts, but for the right reasons. To the extent, sorry, your thesis depends on, obviously, earnings coming through. We're at the beginning of earnings season. What are you looking for both now and through the back half of next year in terms of S&P earnings and growth rate? Well, um, earnings in the, in the fourth quarter that was reported three months ago came in close to 8 percent above expectations. That's already flowed through into what we expect for 2025. Um, first quarters... I'll be right back with you guys. I've got a meeting. Hold on. More than 80 percent are beating. So I, I think our... 2025 earnings, which is officially 260, and that was 8% earnings growth, is probably low. It's looking like it's going to end up being closer to 270, maybe 275. You know, that's a $15 higher earnings for next year just because of the strength of earnings we're seeing now. So I think profits are coming in pretty well. I mean, inflation's cooling, but companies are still finding operating leverage. Hey, finally, Tom, I'd love to get your thoughts on where you think uh, the labor market goes from here. Uh, there is a sense that some leading indicators in the job market have softened uh, the hiring rate. But there's also this idea that equity market is discounting earnings, which should be strong, let's say, which then would lead to even more hiring. Which direction do you think it goes? Uh, I, I think the job market kind of seems to be in a sweet spot because it's at managing to grow. Uh, the Phillips curve doesn't seem to be driving an acceleration of wage inflation. I think it's because you know, companies have actually held on to a lot of folks. They've been allowed to let those people go now because, you know, COVID restrictions, et cetera. And I think what we're seeing is it's easier for businesses to find replacement workers, you know. So that's creating a, a job market that feels a little more two-way. I think that's actually quite constructive because now you can have proper positions filled. I, I don't think the job market is the reason the Fed would be raising rates. So I, I think it's actually in a sweet spot right now. Tom, appreciate it. Obviously, uh, what an eventful uh, couple of weeks we're in the midst of. I'll talk soon. Tom Lee. Thanks. As we had to break, the oil market looking past yeah, so those again, geopolitical uh, fears. The price is heading lower following the drone attacks now, but by Iran on still Israel. Still up to a spot 5 the next on the session. Yes, we're going to no new catalyst to note for this uh, particular move to the downside. We're really keeping our eyes out and scanning the wires uh, just in case though. Also take a closer look at what it could be signaling for the company and the overall EV market. Defense stocks are on the move following Iran's drone attacks over the weekend. What the street is saying about those names from here as Squawk on the Street continues after this break.
So we're looking now to the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, 74 out of 100, which indicates greed. Fear and Greed Index, 46 out of 100, indicating neutral. Welcome back to Squawk on the Street. Look at oil prices. Looking past the rising geopolitical fears this morning following Iran's drone and missile attack on Israel over the weekend, crude and Brent oil both moving lower. Brent goes below $89 a barrel. Let's bring in Halima Croft, RBC Capital Markets, global head of commodity strategy, CNBC contributor, expert on the Middle East. Why is oil lower today? I think market participants have decided that this story, this chapter of this war story is over for now, that essentially Iran did the shock and awe and that the Israelis are going to be patient in terms of their response. But the war cabinet has not made a decision yet on how to respond to the attacks over the weekend. You could still see some significant Israeli retaliation. So I think it is too soon to fade this story. Would Israel make a move with the U.S. telling it that it will not support retaliation? So this is interesting. The United States said it would not support offensive operations. But the expectation obviously would be that the United States would continue to support Israel's defense. And they have a coalition of countries that we saw over the weekend that were very supportive of Israel. And so the question is, is the U.S. caution or the White House caution going to hold back the Israelis? Or do they basically decide it's in their national security interest to proceed with a retaliation? Also, why, did, why is that the U.S.? Why is that President Biden's response? If missiles and drones were sent to this country, do you think that would be the response? I think the Biden administration has tried from the beginning of this war to keep it contained. They have been very concerned about getting dragged into a broader Middle East conflict, and they've been very concerned about this expanding to Iran. They're very concerned about energy prices, very concerned about U.S. troops in the region that are at risk if you have Iranian proxies fire on them. But again, the Israeli government has not made a decision yet in terms of what the retaliation will be. If this does escalate, which uh, it very well may not, right. what would that mean for oil prices in the near term? I mean, certainly we'll be watching what happens in the Straits of Hormuz. And we saw right before the missiles and drones started being fired that the Iranians boarded a vessel in the Straits of Hormuz and commandeered it. They have the capacity. They can't close the Straits of Hormuz, but they can do significant damage to energy infrastructure to vessels in the region. So we have to wait and see what comes out of these discussions. And again, I would remind viewers that we still have cross-border rockets fired between Israel and Hezbollah on a daily basis. And you still have Israeli officials saying Hezbollah has to move back from that border because they need to move Israeli citizens home. So this story is not over, even if the immediate Israel-Iran chapter is parked for now. But again, I would pay close attention to what happens in the war cabinet discussions. Meantime, the journal over the weekend quoted a U.S. official saying so much for the vaunted ballistic missile capability of Iran. Do you think that came as a surprise? I think it's a story of the strength of Iron Dome and the strength of, you know, the U.S., Israeli and regional partnership. So I think the defense technology, you know, did extraordinarily well. What we don't know is what would have happened if Iran chose to use hypersonic missiles. So, again, it is an interesting question about, you know, what would come next in terms of escalation. If Hezbollah became involved in the conflict, they have 170,000 rockets that could be deployed. So, again, it was a very good, you know, weekend in terms of the technology. But the question is, would it still stand if you had a much bigger offensive? We just don't know. Can you just give us a, a refresher on just how critical Iran is in global oil production? Who depends on it and what might change if this does escalate? I mean, it's not just the scale of Iranian oil production, which has been rising over the past year with oil sales going into places like China. And that has been one of the big stories. And you're hearing Republican lawmakers say, we have to tighten up sanctions. It's crazy that you have Iran able to produce this much when there's actually sanctions that could be enforced. So watch what's happening on Capitol Hill. But the biggest story for oil markets would be the critical Straits of Hormuz waterway. You know, you have, you know, 15 million plus barrels going through there on a daily basis. So anything that made passage through the Straits more challenging would send prices higher. And don't forget what happened in 2019 when they didn't just hit vessels, they hit pipelines and they hit Saudi Arabia's Abqaiq facility. So Iran has the capacity 
to cause significant chaos in the oil sector. It's a question of will they choose to do so at this time. How much does Beijing buy of Iranian oil? Oh, they are the, they are the biggest buyer of Beijing, of, of Iranian oil at this point. So the question is, can you put in place a sanctions architecture that could change Beijing's incentives on their Iranian purchases? And, and might they urge caution and calm on the Iranian side? Well, I mean, protect their oil. We shall yeah. see. I mean, I think that's, I think they're urging de-escalation, but they've also provided rhetorical support for Iran as well. All right, Halima, not, not enough time today. Um, Thank there's you so, so much. much. Stay close. Halima Croft of RBC. Still to come this morning, Tesla continues to struggle this year, uh, now announcing some big layoff plans. We'll get details on that. And we'll hit the banks, uh, both Tesla and Goldman, in the bottom and top five of S&P components today on Goldman's Big Beat. Stay with us. All right, here I am. Hold on one second here. Good morning. How are you all doing out there? Check. Hold on a second. I'm having a, I'm having a back uh, echo. Hold on a second here. Just. BC. Tesla shares are down Check. again. As Check. Down some Check. That's better. Ish. Following uh, news, the company is going to be making some sizable job cuts. Phil LeBeau has that news. Global settings. David, these are significant cuts that Tesla is announcing. Check. A memo sent out by Elon Musk to the staff outlining that the company will be cutting more than... Good morning out there. Give me one quick second. Global staff. They ended last year with about 140,000 employees worldwide. How's your weekend? 14,000 workers will be let go. In the memo that was sent out from Elon Musk, he says, There is nothing I hate more, but it must be done. This will enable us to be lean, innovative... Me, uh... How do I... ...phase cycle. As you take a look at their annual Perfect. deliveries, remember... <laughs> I'm like, I got, a, I got some, I still have some issues this morning with my stream. We saw I'm getting updates from Streamlabs and uh, in three years. And Microsoft that are really messing with my jam over here. They will not hit last year's total of 1.8. Get rid of that. Awesome. Delivered. So as you take a look at shares of Tesla over the last six months. Good morning out there. How are y'all doing? Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you had a great weekend. 
on April 23rd. After Damn, the dude, Mike. When the company reports its Q1 results. I'm having some really bad feedback, feedback here. As well as the operating margin, both have come down. It's almost like I have to turn off my, uh, I might have to turn off my, my from Elon Musk is monitor here. Hold on. First of many job check, job check, 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 one, two. Moving as quickly as possible. That's what it's going to have to be. Okay. Dude, seriously. Can you guys hear any, like, uh, on your end, it, does it sound like there's a hum, like, uh, 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 anything like that when I speak? Any kind of reverb or anything? Check. Especially over in China, David. Phil, uh, just take us down uh, the recent past, if you can. I mean, have they ever done layoffs of this size? They, yeah, no, it's not. I don't think um, I remember them ever doing uh, this size. Not that I, I think I might be getting it from my... Uh, through job cuts. Um, I'm pretty clear on your end. Okay, that's all I need to know. I can turn off my monitor. Early on, there were a couple of really bumpy... Check one, two. Had to go through some job cuts, but they were a much... Check one, two. ...at that point. Uh, and that was probably pre-China days. Uh, Where is this coming from? So nothing to this size. Hey, finally, Phil. Uh, um, today about a union vote in uh, Volkswagen. Check one, two. Week, and yep. that it's a first step for Sean Fain to try to eventually try to uni uni uh, unionize Tesla. How likely is that? I think there's a good chance. I think they had something uh, like 70, 71 percent. It sounds all right now. Check. Let's call for a vote. When you get that high, all right, car, hold on here. You have that many who are saying. I gotta turn that off. I can't do it. A strong likelihood that you're gonna get more than the 50%. I, think I can't do it. And remember, as long as you guys can hear me fine, I'm gonna mute this uh, CNBC. I'm having some audio issues on my back end. So Streamlabs. Microsoft's updated twice now, and then Streamlabs updated again, and then they did it again this morning, second update. Uh, so what it does is uh, my global and local settings become all jacked up, my audio and my, vi and my audio and video. Uh, now I'm getting feedback loops, and I do have, like, monitor off. It doesn't really matter. So I got to find out what's going on here. I could have some, like, some ducking issues and stuff like that. Uh, but... I uh, hope you had a great weekend. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope you weren't caught up in the uh, drama with World War Three. Uh, that was pretty wild over the weekend. It was wild on Friday, and then it got out of control as the weekend went forward. Um, the crazy, I think the craziest part to me is um, I don't think I've ever experienced quite the um, Quite the kind of um, um, I don't know if I've ever quite experienced um, the astroturfing of thought that's not original. I don't know how best to describe this. It has a lot to do with um, stuff that you would never expect, like. Uh, and it's been building for a long time. You'll hear things like Iran is the strongest power in the Middle East. You'll hear things like, uh, it's kind of funny, like Iran cannot invade uh, Israel. Uh, they can't. Uh, I was watching something that was showing a guy, some guy on Twitter that's like a, a big, like uh, he's trusted and stuff. And they were like, well, they got so many millions of people that can fighting aged that can attack Iran. And, uh, you know, like an expeditionary force, they're rare. There's only so many countries that can do it. And this, there, a guy was talking about this on um, the Internet. And uh, then it gets regurgitated and regurgitated like this, these are facts. Yesterday on Twitter, I couldn't believe the number of press releases that were coming out that were not cited. Uncited press releases by many news sources. So there's a, there's, my point here is that there's a, so much misinformation and also um, misinformation just being an American, where you're like, hey, I'm an American, and uh, what's, go, what's actually going on over there, stuff like that, uh, that it's taken as a uh, fact, which, of course, it's not. Um, and even Jamie Dimon is uh, regurgitating some of this stuff. So this stuff is, uh, this stuff is insidious, and it's... it's um, it's leaking into um, not just like the not just like a conversation between two people. It's leaking into the new into news media. It's leaking all over over the place, and it's having material impact in our stock market, uh, which is quite bothersome and scary. It's absolutely scary, one hundred percent scary. Uh, it's dangerous uh, to have that going on as well.
No, you saw that we did not have World War Three this weekend, right? And then you saw um, cruise missiles and intercontinental ballistic missiles be taken out of the sky, which is a major development, right? Um, over the weekend, we did not have World War Three. There was mass hysteria this weekend. Uh, that's been building and building and building, culminating into this past weekend. All very weird things. Um, I don't, as an adult, I'm an older guy, so uh, I've never quite seen this, uh, ever. I, I've seen parts of it or leaking of it uh, into the media, but I've never seen it at quite this level, quite this orchestrated. And I, just so you know, I'm a Democrat, so um, and I, I'm not picking any sides with the Middle East and stuff like that, but just the general disinformation. And then also the um, talking points for people with an opinion. Like that's how insidious it is. You have people with opinions on this, and even their own opinions are, is misinformation. There's misinformation at every single turn. Uh, and so it's, it's bizarre, uh, at least to me. And uh, seeing that hysteria of the weekend was, was wild to me. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, this is known by uh, the government to some extent. Take your trade from uh, at any rate, so we went through that this weekend. Uh, you had uh, the panic. I'm assuming that a bunch of you were short over the weekend, too. Um, I would have been if I had consumed all that um, stuff, right? It even impacted uh, Wall or was it Weekend Wall Street. The Weekend Dow uh, was impacted where it was down uh, 300 and so many points over the weekend. That's just from a general paranoia perspective across the world. Uh, versus what the reality of uh, things are. Uh, the reality of what things are. And it was shocking uh, why, why, the, why the U.S. in particular. You hear about, like, George, you guys already know that there was a peace deal. There's a peace deal being brokered, uh, which Saudi Arabia and Jordan is involved in with, with uh, Israel. And Iran does not want that to take place in any way, shape, or form. Um, but there are other actors. There are actors like Russia and China uh, that want to um, cause mayhem um, everywhere in our country. It's not just Iran. Uh, what was fascinating to me, at least this weekend, was uh, you have, like, well, Great Britain helped out and uh, Jordan helped out. Saudi Arabia, Arabia helped out with um, stopping all of these cruise missiles, the drones. The, you have people arguing about... You have people arguing about, like, the timing of it. That does follow Geneva Convention. I don't know if you know that. You have to give notice uh, in advance. Uh, th like, the story changed as the weekend progressed. Well, we're going to go to World War III. Nope, we're not doing World War III. Well, they telegraphed it, um, that kind of stuff. And so, like, the arguments change as the weekend changed. The one thing that was consistent, though, that you know is that uh, they were able to stop all of these um, – uh, drones and missiles that were sent. You gotta understand the difficulty, the technical difficulty uh, to knock any ICBM out of the sky, even if you were the one to launch it in a test. You have to understand the dit or. And here's another thing: had those ICBMs gotten through, or cruise missiles had gotten through, um, there would have been the articles out there in the news media would have been, well, the U.S. is threatened now, right? The U.S. cannot stop an ICBM if it was launched up to our, towards our country. That I'm sure there were articles written uh, for that. I'm sure there were articles written in case that had happened. Uh, and then, of course, our response was not aggressive either. So that must have infuriated um, people as well, right? Uh, hold on one second here. Let me see if I can bring this over there and show you guys this. Hope you guys took calls off in the open. Um, this morning, we I did discuss with somebody taking the calls off this morning on Twitter. If you were watching that that interaction on Twitter this morning, uh, so and there should be more of that. The scary, so I guess the, the point here would be that um, there's a material or there or not material. There is a concerted effort by foreign uh, agencies that are trying to change the narrative from United States citizens within our own stock market. They're um, impacting uh, major figureheads, bank figureheads. Um, it's hard today to see what is real, what is not real. But then at the same time, the U.S. Uh, showed its cards. They likely use some kind of um, 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 
I don't want to uh, like F thirty fives have these. Um, it's like it's not ultrasonic, but uh, ways to defeat um, tracking systems for ICBMs, cruise missiles, stuff like that. And no one wants to talk about that, nor does the U.S. government want to talk about that. But I assure you that countries like North Korea, Russia, China were uh, watching very closely to see those missiles get defeated. Uh, and you don't see a response from the United States either, or even um, uh, condoning a response uh, from uh, Israel to Iran. Israel not only doesn't have an expeditionary force, but they had expended uh, about 10% of their arms um, that reach out and touch people. Um, so uh, there are really no risk, except for maybe some asymmetrical warfare. There may be some risk um, from asymmetrical warfare with, uh, with, with Israel. Asymmetrical or symmetrical warfare. That's why on Friday I posted on Twitter, uh, bring it on Iran, because a symmetrical warfare, no one really compares to us. <coughs> and you'll even see on, on Twitter people argue that there, we do have pairs. And we do not have pairs. We don't have pairs with uh, China. Uh, their stealth programs, their fifth generation and sixth generation warfare is way, 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 way behind the, the United States. Uh, the, the collapse of the Soviet Union uh, sent them behind us 20, 30 years. And I don't know if you can uh, actually come back from that. Uh, or at least right now you can't. And you can actually see it unfold. I don't think that if you sent 200 warheads to uh, Russia or China, they could stop them. Um, in any way, shape, or form, it, it's it's a chasm of of um, um, parity. Maybe that's a man. I'm making that word up, but we don't have a near pair. Is my point, um, and there isn't risk to the United States uh, or World War Three breaking out in the Middle East like one would expect. Um, there really isn't. Uh, there could be from some kind of asymmetric uh, warfare. That would be something like you um, you kind of like use a dirty bomb or something like that. Um, where it's not, uh, hey, we're going to fight you, and now we've concluded our fight with you and all that kind of goofy shit. And that's what I was talking about on Friday was uh, if a nation were to say that to the, to the United States, it's at this point you can't really imagine their response to that until you saw that response this weekend uh, where uh, 200 uh, warheads fell from the sky. Uh, that's a moment that you should look at. And uh, not I don't know if it's be scared, but... At the same time, the mutually assured destruction of nations was called into question uh, this weekend, where, where we, there is no balance of power with that. Now, you might bring up hypersonic weapons and stuff like that, uh, but in truth, uh, even those weapons are at risk. And uh, there are reports about Russia even um, trying to institute um, uh, many, many, many countermeasures right at the exits of their ICBM um, tubes. And the reason for that is for, because of stuff that you saw this past weekend. If, if anything, I've never seen anything like that. I don't think that you have either. I don't think the world's ever seen um, ICBMs just fall out of the sky. And that's not showing the complete uh, defensive packages that the United States have. I know they'd be like, hey, yeah, England helped, and it was all Israeli, but it wasn't. Uh, that, was, that was U.S. And uh, it was also U.S. Uh, forces stationed in the deserts tracking stuff coming out of Iran as well from other nations. Uh, I, sometimes I ta tell you guys things about my service in the military, and um, I'll ta retell this story. I can't tell a lot about it, but I can say this, that uh, there was an AWAC or something. I've told the story before. There was an AWAC that was um, uh, nudged or something or in China or in disputed international Chinese airspace. It was forced to land in China. And I remember being in a, in a, a DFAC watching... Um, uh, Armed Forces Network, right? And CNN, Fox News, and uh, was were talking about how the U.S. had stopped surveillance of China. And I was watching, this DFAC was located right outside of a, a, a runway, and I was watching some special planes take off north in, uh, heading towards, uh, from, a, from, a, from an airbase that uh, surveilled China. And they never stopped. Uh, surveilling China even after that. Um, so there are a few moments like that in my uh, in my service in our country where um, I realize that everything that you think you know and that we discuss as civilians is um, most likely unknown, uh, most likely we're discussing something that's not real. Uh, we're arguing points and facts that are that we that are based in uh, information that governments want to only in, only information that governments want us to know and to discuss.
correct. Um, so my point behind that, or where I'm getting to with that, would be uh, that I would find it very um, a very low risk uh, a very low risk event of World War Three, or even if there was uh, the beginnings of a World War Three, that it would ever symmetrically get there. Um, you would lo- you would likely see uh, a one sided win, a winnable one sided win, and just like when we had. Um, uh, developed their first atom bomb. Um, the U.S. didn't go and uh, drop atom bombs uh, on Russia when they began their development of, a, of an atom bomb. We didn't uh, go and bomb China or anyone else uh, during that time period in the early, late or late 1940s, early to mid 1950s. Um, we didn't do any of that stuff. And seeing that this weekend reminded me of that. Uh, reminded me of, of that time period. Uh, where, where the U.S. won't do those things. Uh, anyways, now, we're not talking about the bad things the U.S. does. Um, I remember when I was in the Army, uh, OIL was an acronym for Oil, Israel, and Logistics uh, to have a footprint in the Middle East. Um, but anyways, the, the point being is when you're considering if we're going to have a World War III or that it could be a mutually dis- uh, assured destruction or everyone will get dragged into it, I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to believe that's actually the case. Uh, or is a real reality um, for you? The percentage chance of that happening is very low. Uh, And and my last point to that would be this, Uh, would be even if you did uh, have something terrible happen, like um, some kind of uh, dirty bomb or something like that in Israel, um, I had, I don't forget who said it first, but (laughs) it's like a a famous saying in the stock market. If we're going to have World War III, you buy the dip before it happens, just before World War III starts, because if it were to start, you wouldn't be worrying about getting paid for your puts or for your shorts. Um, your only po- the only positive outcome would be that the market would go up uh, or the market would no longer exist. Does that make sense to you? Uh, so when you're like, if you're out there and you're like, we're going to have World War III on Friday and by Monday we're going to be in World War III, uh, if that was true, you, you would, there would be no stock, stock market. Stock market would uh, be be a paused at a minimum uh, while that took place. Uh, we've had those instances of the stock market being shut down uh, when things of lesser uh, uh, gravitude um, have taken place. So, uh, would your puts and shorts be safe? Probably not. Um, would you get paid? Probably not. Uh, so, it's horrible to say this, but. Whenever you hear things like we're going to on a Friday, we're going to have World War three on Monday or Saturday, Sunday, and you're going to wake up on like you're going to actually think you're going to wake up on a Monday morning and uh, nukes are flying between all these countries and the stock market's going to be open and down uh, 30, 50 percent. And you're just going to walk up to your broker and be like, "Okay, pay me. That shit's not happening. Um, I apologize, but that isn't happening. Never was, never will. (laughs) So uh, try to have some. Try to have the ability to um, cut through the bullshit, I guess, is the best thing to say. And if, if it was ever to happen, you're probably never getting paid. You're going to be gone <laughs> if that was true. Okay, so uh, this morning we got a bunch of stuff to go over. Um, yeah, we have a... Yeah, uh, so there's a lot of uh, misinformation from the U.S. too. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation from the United States trying to uh, assign um, responsibility to other nations or get, giving credit to other nations as uh, thwarting this attack. The truth is that it is the United States. Uh, <laughs> and it's wild uh, that it is the United States uh, because the United States do, do, does not want everything known about its capabilities. I mean, think about this this morning. If you were Kim Jong-un, right, um, there's been a th- – and no one's discussing this in the news. You don't see this anywhere being discussed in the news. I'm sure there'll be discussions later on, but think about this from a logical point of view. Kim Jong-un basically has uh, ICBMs. It was proven yesterday that there is no nuclear threat from uh, Korea, it's from North Korea. There is none. Uh, their ICBMs come from technology from Iran. Uh, But there is none. If I was Kim Jong-un this morning, I'd be shitting my pants going, well, fuck, uh, what am I going to launch an ICBM at who, where, what, when? Uh, You always hear about the United States monitoring their missile tests out of North Korea. 
uh, they're not monitoring. Uh, they have people, uh, humans, that are tracking uh, these launches, and um, we use satellites, satellites, uh, jets from far off, um, and then uh, we use uh, destroyers. I think we had two destroyers there. Uh, even the Eisenhower wasn't quite there, and they can wage war from uh, thousands of miles away, believe it or not. Thousands, right over the horizon, even on uh, the edge of space, uh, can, can wage war. Nobody else has that peer ability to the United States of America. Um, and from that perspective, in symmetrical warfare, we're not quite that evil nation. Um, and it's okay for you as an American to know, it's okay for you as an American to be like, hey, I don't like my country, or my country fucks up all the time, or we don't live up to what we're supposed to be. But it's also okay for you uh, as an American to pat yourself on the back and be like, hey, it's okay to know that um, we aren't an oppressive regime. Uh, we don't throw people off the top of buildings for being gay or for being the wrong color or the wrong religion. Uh, we don't send people to gulags. Uh, that, that, those are realities in life. Um, we don't have uh, people that are, are completely uneducated um, except for religious references and stuff like that. The United States is a, a very... <clears throat> we're not the best. I mean, like, Nordic countries are better than... In my view, I'm like, oh, I would love to live in Norway or Amsterdam or uh, one of those countries. It's great, great living, right? They do things right. Uh, but they can't project power like the United States can. They don't have the size, the, the, uh, the oceans, and that kind of stuff. Do you really want uh, a China or a Russia uh, r ruling the seas and the sky? It's just bizarre. So of, the ma of what you think are major powers in the world, we're probably the, you know, yeah, we'd rather have, like, Amsterdam doing this, but th you know that Amsterdam can't do that. So we're probably the best last choice to do that as a country. And it's okay to demand that out of the United States if you're not from the U.S. Um, and we didn't get aggressive, did we? Uh, there was an open door this weekend for Israel to um, respond in kind. Uh, do you think that... Um, and not that they probably could, because they're not an expedition. They're not an expeditionary nation either, um, from a logistical point of view. But the U.S. could have as well. The U.S. could have responded in kind um, and wrecked Iran. Could have ended Iran with a snap of a finger this weekend, and they didn't. Uh, so look at this weekend without um, the misinformation that spread around the internet, um, and what the reality of life in the world is. I guess that's what I would say to you out there. Okay, so moving on from that stuff, right, uh, from, uh, from Iran and Israel. Is there any more geop geopolitical risk to our stock market from something actually happening? <coughs> I would say that there is. It's heightened, but it's not, it's not like what CNBC is talking about. And it is most definitely not what's from the news um, and the regurgitation of misinformation that's going on in social media and, in, believe it or not, in our news uh, cycles. Uh, so I would tell you that uh, that geopolitical risk is low still. You mean maybe uh, 15%, uh, which is heightened. 15% uh, is heightened. Uh, but I don't think that that's the truthfully what's going on. I think Israel would have responded uh, this weekend. Uh, the, the, the response would have been immediate. You even saw fake news coming out or misinformation coming out that Israel is like, they're going to respond. Now they're not going to respond. They're going to respond. Now they're not going to respond. Uh, so I would, I would say it's about a 15% chance. Um, and I would be cautious, of course, uh, that something does happen because it is possible. Uh, it is always possible that something can happen. And one last thing I want to talk to you about was um, I noticed uh, when the uh, 200 missiles or whatever uh, were gone, front page of Reddit was uh, pushing a narrative about um about muslims in um dearborn michigan that were uh, calling for death to america and i find it ironic because i grew up in uh, boston massachusetts my family is from south boston and so i grew up uh, in southie and i'm not proud of that a lot uh southie is known for some really bad things um but I did grow up there, and I went to um, um, St. Patrick's Day parades in South Boston. Any of you out there that are watching right now that know anything about Boston, Massachusetts, and South Boston, especially up until the 1980s, uh, maybe the early 90s, um, but I grew up in an Irish Catholic family, and 
our family uh, did not like uh, England, um, Protestants um, at all, right? Uh, when I lived there, um, on St. Patrick's Day, there would be dinners or lunches, uh, corned beef dinners at the local Irish American club. And uh, these clubs would sponsor uh, terrorists from Ireland uh, to move to the United States as political refugees once they were released from prison. And they would have these guys up on stage. These were actual terrorists. And uh, they would support these guys, pass hat, hat around. And then when you would go to the parade, uh, kids, teenagers, kids, uh, thought it was kind of cool, right? Cool to be a terrorist, cool to be an, uh, IRA or associate with them. You'd see kids and young men uh, singing IRA ch uh, songs in the streets. You would see them spray paint on the uh, built on buildings uh, these these black outlines of a terrorist with a gun uh, and a black hood on, and uh, you would see um, a general idea of uh, death to uh, England and stuff like that. These are Americans, by the way. These are not Irish. Uh, these are not uh, young Irish children immigrants. These are Americans. Um, you also see that from the um, you also see that from the um, the uh, who are these fucking clowns that do the Confederate flag and that kind of shit? These are Americans that do that, too. And my point here is it's not all Americans. It's a very small group of people. And uh, so when you see, like, the Dearborn thing come up, I live here. Uh, uh, you go to Dearborn, a uh, lot parts of Dearborn are nicer than probably the communities a lot of you live in. Um, and not only that, uh, yesterday I was uh, riding my bike around Eastern Market, and there's this whole wholesale food market down there. Um, that is owned and operated by the Muslim community here in Detroit. And when you think about things like one person screaming death to America or something like that, that doesn't account for the tens of thousands uh, of uh, Muslim Americans that have moved to this country and have been given uh, a chance at work, great education, safety, uh, and how they live their lives here uh, and conduct themselves and they're becoming Americans, right? Um, and part of America, the American experience is coming from places uh, where they don't have the, people don't have those opportunities, whether it's Ireland, Italy, wherever they're coming from uh, into this country. And so it may take two, three generations, four generations uh, for, um, for that assimilation to take place to be an American. And my experience here with Muslims in Detroit has been nothing less than spectacular. Um, as a matter of fact, there's uh, Christians uh, from... Um, Middle Eastern countries. We have Chaldeans here in Michigan. They're, they're Christians um, from Middle Eastern nations, all productive members of society, all with great families. Um, neighborhoods are clean. Um, no, no crime that I've seen like anywhere else that you would see in the U.S. Um, and these people are living great lives. Uh, they make the food that you eat in restaurants. Um, so when you hear like one person screaming something or you hear that pushed, is it the masses? No, not in the United States, it is not. Uh, it may be somewhere else, but in the U.S., it isn't. And you're not accounting for the tens of thousands of immigrants that come to this country breaking their balls uh, all day long, leaving their homelands to uh, settle in our nation. They're here for a reason. Uh, they're here to have a better life. Um, I go to Hamtramck, and I go to uh, soccer games in Hamtramck. Uh, there's a, a Detroit FC is in Hamtramck, right? This is a... Um, with a football club that's LGBTQ, right? A supported football club. Uh, they pop off smoke, LGBTQ uh, color smokes. This is in a, a tightly knit recent immigrant um, Muslim community. I've never seen any crime like that or, or hate crimes and of that nature um, that take place. Uh, so I'm a little beside myself when it's like one person becomes this voice for an entire group of people. Um, it kind of bothers me to see that stuff out there, right? You're like, oh, well, when this person was yelling that. I'm like, ah, Americans have been doing that shit for a long fucking time. And um, you're pigeonholing an entire group of people by one or two people that are, they, hey, we recorded that one person saying something. And you see that across every political spectrum, right? You see those bad actors, um, uh, no matter what uh, political background you have, no matter what um, uh, religion you come from or um, cultural background that you come from, and it's used to divide you uh, as Americans. Uh, it's very dangerous um, for you to be consuming that. It's not dangerous to consume that stuff, but
but when you consume it to not have the perspective of um, that's that's that that's just a drop in the bucket. That's not everybody. It's not even thirty percent or ten percent or five percent. It's like point zero 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 one uh, of people. Um, and, w- and we're not known as for that as a country, right? Remember, we're not that country. Um, our nation is not based on that stuff. Anyways, um, yeah, that, that's true, man. Like, I grew up in Boston, um, and it was okay. It's okay. These, these, these kids now are 50, 60, 70 years old. They remember this stuff. Uh, they're adults, Americans in this country that were doing that same shit. And I'm sure that that shit was even worse before I was alive, uh, turn of the century in New York, right? When every, um, every uh, culture would uh, immigrate one way or another to our country, to our nation. Okay, so leave that, leave that bit done. Um, so just be careful out there with misinformation. Uh, some of it is material to the stock market, but right now it's amplified out of control and it's not material to our stock market. And that is critical to know the difference. And that, and that has become a larger gray area than it ever has. Um, okay, so uh, we'll leave that there. Now, on to a bunch of other shit we have to get through today. We've got so much stuff to get on. I'm not going to address that again, too. Uh, those geopolitical risks that we have here, we're going to leave that where it is unless something materially uh, comes in front of our face, okay? And I meant that, I meant that this weekend. I'm not going to – on Friday, I said to you I would do a show over the weekend if something materially happened. And something did not materially happen, so I did not do a live stream. I'm not going to go out there and fucking sell you bullshit World War Three stuff, any of that kind of shit, unless it actually happens. So don't expect me to, like, come on here and do a show saying uh, World War Three started and uh, get in your basements. Um, and I don't think that you should either. Uh, if World War Three actually began, you're going to be dead. You're not going to be able to, you're not, well, you could be in your basement and all that kind of shit, but um, I wouldn't be worried about it is my point. Uh, I wouldn't let it affect your life like it has been. So we're going to leave that beside to the side. We're not going to address uh, uh, geopolitical risks unless something material happens. All right? Um, something material. That means like, boom, a bomb goes off. Uh, boom, an airplane goes down or something like that. Outside of that, uh, it's, not a, it's not really a part of our market. Okay, so uh, we have a ton of stuff to go over. We've had, we're kind of coming to the end of the OPEX cycle or COP, uh, COPEX cycle. We got like two weeks before the end of the quarter. Then we've got about two weeks at the beginning of the quarter uh, where that stuff takes place. And if any of you have been in this market the past two weeks, you know that it's been a challenge, right? You've been hit with all kinds of news left and right. Everybody's going at you. Um, you've got people saying rate cuts are good. People saying rate cuts are bad. You've got people saying uh, bond market's great. Bond market's the worst. Uh, everybody's hoarding gold uh, for this reason and that. When we're actually in this like, se- or we're not seasonal, but uh, gold, it's good for gold to go up with the market going up. You know that, right? And now people saying, no, the gold's going up and the market's going to go down. Uh, everything's going up all at the same time. Uh, you've got a lot of um, noise, not just geopolitics, but Noise with everything else in front of you, right? Notice how it's all at the same time, uh, you know, right? You always notice it's like all at the same time right now. Um, it, th- what, what a unique uh, circumstance that it's all at the same time. So we're going to start to discuss that stuff. Uh, sent out a market brief uh, last night for futures. But I sent out a market brief last night for futures, but I'm like, dude, I'm not writing a market brief tonight. I'm like, too much, too much bat shit craziness over the weekend i was way dehydrated i was uh, sunstroked as well i was out riding a bike around all day long yesterday with the wife and the kids i think i got out of the house yesterday morning at six or seven and then i had to do some bike mechanic stuff on a bunch of bikes for my kids and my wife pump up the tires grease this adjust that my youngest daughter is right in between bikes so I haven't gotten her a new bike yet, so I like raised her handlebars up, then raised the seat up, had her ride it around, make sure she was going to be okay with it. Uh, you know what's funniest, too? I took care of everyone else's bike but my own, and I wound up needing to adjust my brakes, and my brakes were uh, riding on my rim and my wheel all day long yesterday. You, know, you take care of everybody else, and you don't take care of yourself. <laughs> It's like everybody else had the best day, and I'm riding around with like a 
resistance on my bike all day. I'm like, oh, shit, now I'm going to have to get new brakes, blah, blah, blah. Um, so anyways, that's how my day went yesterday. Uh, and then I went out to, uh, I was going to make dinner last night, but I was feeling really worn out. So I was like, let's go out to dinner. So I went out to this like burger joint with a patio and um, I couldn't eat. I ate like half the burger. And by the time I got home to write that brief, I'm like, I'm like, I'm about to, get, I'm about to pass out here. Like I was really run down and it was from the sun and the dehydration and uh, drinking the light bears all day long probably didn't help. Uh, PBRs are, I call them Utah water. But at any rate, I'm trying to recover right now. It's probably going to take me a day or two, a pound of water uh, to get rehydrated. <laughs> Sun, that's right. Sun beer, bikes, auto nap, dude. And I made it until like 9 or 10. And I'm, dude, I started at like 6 or 7 in the morning by like 9 or 10 at night. I'm like, that's it. I'm done. I am fucking done right now. I have no business even being, I don't have any business. I'm like, I'm going to do something to get us through till mo tomorrow morning. Plus, like, where the market was, you can figure um, weekend Wall Street being down 336 or 365 points, and then we're opening green. Like, what am I going to write that's going to matter uh, tonight? Nothing. Uh, nothing Nothing that I could write is going to matter on uh, Monday morning. So we'll revisit it on Monday morning. Plus, I need new gamma data, all that kind of stuff. I want to see what the CTAs are. Um, uh, anyways, so I am expecting, let's go over one quick thing. I don't think that we're quite done going down. Um, I don't think we are. So let's take a look here. And, uh, and I didn't think we were this morning, but with the squeeze up overnight, they're probably coming back for it. Um, so we're going to look at SPY really quick. And I think we have one more down move before the move higher. Uh, I think that move is down here to this 508, 506 zone. Um, but I do think we are heading higher. So wherever that is, I think that is the last down move. Uh, so whatever doom and gloom you might think be is here. And I want to preface this with something. There were a lot of people short on Friday. Uh, and they tried everything under the sun. Everything under the sun. Uh, to get us down here today. Uh, and this is revert, we're coming, circling back to the Friday close and today, right? Uh, there were a lot of people that were short into that close on Friday. And there, were, uh, there was money that wanted us to wake up this morning as down as they could get the market. They don't care where, just whatever it takes, whatever doom and gloom you can uh, get out there, um, that they would get us down here. Why, though, is the big question. Why is the question they want to get us down here? Is it because they want to sell this market or they want to, um, the, the, um, the bond vigilantes want to crash your, your stock market and stuff like that? Likely not. And even if they were going to exit this market, which they are going to to some extent down the road, they can't do it all at once. They, they can't. It doesn't happen all at once. Uh, it never does. Even COVID, we came right back up uh, multiple times. Uh, and even the crash was uh, short-lived. Uh, and, and, and uh, short-lived in, in a term of time. So uh, I do want you to be aware that more than likely there's a high probability that you're going to see a major swing high up here, uh, some kind of major swing to the upside. Uh, there's a very high probability of it. So in the brief this morning, or last, I think it was this morning, I, said, yeah, I wrote a brief at like four or five this morning. So um, it's a pick your poison kind of a thing at this point. Um, Let's pick your poison. So you pick your poison, what you want to put on, how long you want to put it out. We're likely going to be long this market uh, for at least the next two weeks. Uh, we have a sell in May kind of a thing coming up at the end of May. We'll talk about that with seasonality and that kind of stuff. So pick your poison for longing the market for earnings season. Pick your poison for uh, that sell in May go away narrative that comes up. As we enter May, um, and get get yourself off of a one-minute chart right now. So on Friday, if they wanted us to be down so they could get a dip buy for themselves, where is that dip buy? More than likely, it's at, at the worst-case scenario, is going to be at about 5,000. You already know that every time they come into any kind of flat number, 500, 5,000, any, anything like that, right? If you were trying to buy the market here, um, it's at the worst-case scenario, you're looking at something down here. Uh, to go up. Now, I do want you to be aware that where we are right now, I think it's here. 
personally. And uh, not only do I think that personally, I think we're going to be trading about uh, five, that 525, 535, maybe 540, but um, we're likely to still, this is, this is still valid. In, 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 uh, this trade is still valid and it has not been invalidated yet uh, to trade that trade above. Uh, and then to come back down and swing back up as long as we defend uh, this 5,000 to 520, right? That 5,000, as long as we defend this zone right here, this trade is still alive. And an even higher trade to 550, 560 is still alive before we actually roll down below 5,000 for that election volatility. There are some things uh, that, that are a problem to this, or not a problem, but um, that can fuck this trade up. I should, for lack of a better word, there are some things that are materially dangerous to this trade. But I do want to discuss something about this trade with you. Um, when I tell you that, right, you may be saying to me, I'm scared, Cap, we're going to crash, right? Um, can you imagine the opposite side of that argument? The opposite side of that argument would be that you're buying these tops, right? Um, that because you see us marching higher, uh, that that is uh, that you buying this stuff. If anything, you're buying all of these lows down here. I know we are in a, uh, in a corrective move down below, uh, this way right here. Uh, we still have not lost. We still have not lost the... Um, uh, delete all this stuff. Uh, the consolidation, and I want to show you this consolidation. Uh, so uh, previously, previous examples of this consol or consolidation like this, and I want to show you um, some previous consolidation zones that we've had in the past. Uh, there's one right there, uh, and this one right here is the doozy, right? Let's look at this one right here. Um, so we have this consolidation zone here, right? Come down here. Right, a consolidation zone, but then we break below that consolidation zone, and then it even, it, then it even, then it even uh, broadcasts to us that we're gonna have one more down move, right? One more down move, and uh, above here, uh, we didn't get that, did we? We were down here, we're bouncing around, ping, pong, pump, and then we're to the upside. We didn't have that dip, and then that rejection to the downside, and uh, so we continued higher. And when we're looking at this one right here. Now looking at this one right here, I've, I'm concerned, don't get me wrong, but when you look at it, something like this right here, right? We were in prices that you have never seen before earlier this morning, right? We we're at prices you haven't seen before earlier this morning, not prices not seen since here, here, <laughs> here, 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 right? Just just a few moments ago, uh, 9.30 this morning, 10.30 this morning, uh, prices not seen since uh, earlier the past couple weeks. So what you'd really want to be seeing here is some kind of rejection uh and then the head heading down like that we haven't quite seen that yet um so if you're a bull uh if you're a bull right uh for any kind of dip buy if you're a bull for any kind of a dip buy for continuation to the upside right so if you're going to continue to the upside right the safest trade for you if you're like hey i want to put some uh i want to put some risk on captain jim james uh that's relatively low risk for this risky thing that we do. Uh, I'm gonna show you what you are looking for, okay? So how does the trade become valid for you? Um, and I wanna show you what that is, what that looks like, okay? So you should be looking for price um, to break above the hourly trigger, right? And the hourly trigger to be above the daily trigger. So the, is the daily trigger above the hourly trigger right now? No. Uh, but you want to see price hourly daily, right? Price hourly daily. That's your first sign of everything's okay. Continuation to the upside. Uh, your second thing that you're looking for is a successful back test of the hourly trigger above the daily trigger and uh, a new high. So what would that look like here if this were to happen? So you'd be looking for the hourly trigger to cross above the daily trigger, right? You would be looking for price to go higher, right? Back check that hourly trigger above the daily trigger. Above here, right? 
So price gets over here. Let's say price starts bouncing here, right? And then a successful new high. That's it. That's all you're looking for. The moment you come back down, you would, it would now um, place a, a pretty confident trade right there uh, for continuation to the upside. We have not seen this happen yet for bulls. And that's the safest thing for you. Not zero dates, but I mean like, hey, I'm going to buy some call spreads or I'm going to go slam some money down on the S&P 500 or I don't know, whatever, whatever stock you love and stuff like that. Um, whatever your, in, your favorite index is, that kind of stuff. So we haven't seen that yet. Um, we had a nice little squeeze today. Didn't come back and back check. Didn't make any highs above the daily trigger. The hourly trigger did not come above the daily trigger. So what does that mean to, to you? It means that we're still looking for some lows uh, to buy down below. Um, right? You can see it right here, right? Still looking for some lows to get uh, a low to buy from. Uh, whoever wants to buy that low is not ready yet. Now, if that low does not get bought, the CTAs start following. Uh, we start getting some trend followers to go lower in the market and have an actual correction, and it's right now. Um, and then we'll follow that trade uh, to the downside. So uh, right here, you've got a few places to be watching. Let's start with our most, let's start with the closest places for a dip to be bought uh, and the, or the, the intraday weekly uh, bottom to be buying. That's right here. This is last known support right here right see it bam right we're gonna make this one green and we're also gonna look at this gap that was left behind down below and we're also gonna look right in here okay right in here we're gonna look at so we're gonna take a peek right about right where we are right there currently you see that little that little half hour bar is being bought right and we're also gonna snap one more down in here that's right down in here right there and we got look we have a pretty good idea that some buyers here we think there's buyers here at least right we're gonna check now a one hour basis and we're gonna look first at the velocity let's check velocity and see if it's improving at all or not and we're gonna take a look at a bunch of other stuff too today coming down into the zero line right now in the daily trigger that's not good uh, we don't want to go negative uh, uh, velocity on the daily trigger that could be spell some doom and gloom that could spell huge correction uh, on a daily, ba a one-hour basis, let's check those candles and just see where we are in here. Buyers here, 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 and over here. So this is the start of some kind of support. Let's check the four-hour candles and see uh, where the buyers are on the four-hour basis. See where these guys are. Uh, they were buyers where? Here, 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 right? They were buyers here, here. Uh, they tried to doom and gloomy on a Friday, and they stepped right in again and became buyers again. We do, though, have lower highs or lower lows, right? Uh, lower low, lower low, lower low. Being We're being walked down right now, right? Let's take a look at some daily candles and see what that's saying. Let's just take a peek here. Let's see what we can see over here. Um, we see these buyers here, don't we? There's a group of buyers right down below here. See them? They're right there, right? Uh, they bought all of this stuff up here. This is this, this consolidation zone we talked about earlier, right? Um, they bought this right here. So they bought this on Friday. And we're wondering if they're going to step in this morning and find out if they're going to be buyers again, right? Let's get a daily candle here. Let's just take a peek. You see that green box, this green box, and this green box? Uh, let's just see where this, this green box matches up right at the bottom of this candle. Uh, and let's look at this last place over here, too. We've got this last little bit down below here. Let's pull that one right there. At f that's 508.53. And we're not even down here yet below 500, are we? We can close all this shit. Uh, we still haven't lost the market. So um, we're going to pay closer attention to this. Let's go to a one-minute basis. And these are last known buyers over here, right? Last known buyers as of last week. Are they still here? We're going to find out. Okay, uh, let's move on to a bunch of other stuff we have to get to. Uh, we're going to look at something else that's important. Let me see if I can bring this up over here. I put this in the market brief last night.
I put this in the market brief last night and I wanted to show you guys this. Now these are just cycles. And on Friday we had some data, but not all the data. Uh, we did not have all the data last night or on Friday we did not have all the data. Uh, but we did have more data as of this morning. Um, so I was trying to show you guys these consolidation uh, zones. And we're still, we still haven't broken this consolidation zone at the moment. Um, we want to look at some stuff, though, in here. We've got, let me get rid of this here. Uh, so these are PPOs right here, price percent oscillators. And you can see, we, you can see there's something important here that I want to show you. Um, we have these violent moves down, down in PPOs, and price is not following. Uh, price is not following these PPO, like PPO is coming down, but we're not seeing major price. So like price is not already down here, is it? Make sense? So, so price, so price is currently is at 511.13. For this much roll in PPO, we didn't see like major, major downside move. Uh, like we're not already bloodbathing it down at 490 for a pullback for the PPOs to roll down even lower to get us down to 480 or 475 anything like that so no price velocity inside of the velocity of ppos at the moment also ppos are coming to the zero line right now um, so let's take a look at that this little dotted line right here is the zero line uh, so you're going to expect some kind of a we're expecting some kind of a turn down here right some kind of a turn down here with ppos as well uh, the other thing here too to think about would be not only ppos but hold on here how do I get these things higher? The other thing to be paying attention to is PMOs, right? And let's take a look at this one right here too. This uh, zero line on this one is right here. Uh, so we do see times where we whoop, go right back up, whoop, we just go right back up, right? Nope, even when we drip down right there, we go right back up again. And we're coming into the, we're coming into the zone of interest right now, right? Coming into the zone of, of uh, PMOs, uh, about to turn around, right, or bounce. We're not quite there yet, but we're almost there. And this is the last point that put, well, this is the last thing I want to show you guys. This is the important one, <coughs> right? This is the one that matters. Uh, this is uh, market breadth. And we're gonna, I don't know if you can see this on your screen at home here. I don't know if I can make this larger. Um, utilities. Uh, so we're, the total right now is 14.7 or 185.2. That's 16.8% out of 1,100. Okay, and what does that mean to you? Um, this is a daily basis, by the way. Uh, when we're up here in the red, we're selling, right? When we're down here in the green, we're buying. Make sense? So when I say to you, pick your poison, I'm telling you that we are at a point where we get an oversold bounce no matter what. Now, there could be... Uh, if we get too low, if we get down around 11, we're at 14 right now. If we get down around 11 or sub 10 uh, on this, this total above here, we can have a capitulation move. This is where they liquidate uh, any risk on sectors. You'll see other sectors get more of a bid like utilities, uh, but then we'll, the, we'll, we will then rotate back into those risk on sectors. Dan Niles is famous for this. You'll have a capitulation move in the market, which we have not seen any acceleration of price to the downside uh, leading into this. So I wouldn't expect it to be that doom and gloomy. And then also, Dan Niles will come on CNBC and say, I'm the biggest bear ever. Uh, market's going to go to zero, but we bought the dip today. Matter of fact, he'll do it the day after. You'll see him go on CNBC uh, when we do these liquidation events. And he goes around CNBC and he's like, I'm the, I'm, he's like, I'm the biggest bear out there. But we bought the dip. He's famous uh, for buying uh, oversold dips, oversold dips. And so we're right down there right now. We're right in this little green area. Uh, and I can show you some, you check some of these out, like techs at 16.9, real estate's at 9.7. Uh, MAT, I believe, is materials, but I could be wrong. That's at 7.4. Uh, HLT, I believe, is healthcare, but I could be wrong. Uh, financial, 1.2. 4 percent uh, 1.4 so we'll take a look at some of these banks and see if there's a dip buy already there these ones are primed and ready to go 
for our rotation. Um, consumer, um, consumer, um, I forget what it's called. Consumer staples is at 5.3%. They are coming into seasonality in the next two weeks. So those are almost primed up, ready to go. Uh, communication, which is tech as well, uh, is at 18.2. So it might have a little bit more to, to go down in commun communication sector. Um, CNO is 11.3. These are all risk on, uh, risk on sectors of the stock market. So we're not quite there, uh, but we're almost there is my point. Right, we're almost there. So because we're almost there, uh, when you scale out a little bit on a daily basis, you are looking for some kind of a, a machination of a move higher, wherever that might be. I don't know if it's there. I don't know if it's here. I don't know if it's right here. Uh, but if you look out about a month from now, a month and a half, or price, uh, you're going to look back on this moment and say, why the fuck didn't I buy the dip here? Whether that's a uh, trade that's a month out, three months out, something like that. Um, we are getting into that place where it's time to uh, buy a major dip. Not zero dates, not I'm bullish, not I'm bearish. We're talking about you buy the market uh, and you look back and you make bank, um, that kind of stuff. We're right there right now. And uh, you can do, do this one of two ways. There's two ways for you to take this trade. You can either wait for price to get above the hourly trigger uh, on uh, a liquidation down to zeros on market breadth. You can wait for the daily, or the hourly trigger to get above the daily trigger with price, uh, or you look for that capitulation moment where the market just slams down violently hard and heavy. You see that V-shaped recovery, and you rock and roll, um, and you can jump in on that trade as well at that time. Now, let's talk about if we are buyers of the dip or if we are sellers of the rip currently, and uh, we're going to talk about that because there was something confirmed on Friday, and that was that we were uh, by our sellers of the rip at this point until uh, the conditions improve, right? We're underneath the, the daily trigger, right? Couldn't get a confirmation there, but we did this morning, didn't we? So we came down. Remember the Friday close? When on live stream, the Friday close, what did I say to you? I said, ah, uh, I said, I guess you could buy some 495 P's. I think they were 10 cents or something, but you should wait until Monday to see what happens. And what did I say to you on Friday? I said, more than likely, we're going to come back up here on a Monday, right? We're going to squeeze up on a Monday, which we did, right? And we rejected this morning at this point, didn't we? That does not look good for bulls, does it? Um, this looks like we are now moving into a sell the rip type environment uh, for the bears, not a buy the dip environment. So until conditions, Im until conditions improve, uh, I would not be a buyer of the dip here uh, what, with any kind of risk or skin in the game in the marketplace. Personally, I wouldn't be. And I'm going to expect here, look closely, I'm going to expect here for sellers to try to sell uh, this up here. They're going to try to sell this right now, and they're going to want to get a new low down below here. This is what they're going to be going for right here, right down here. Oh, sorry. Whoa, whoa. It looks like dog crack crappers. So right now, I'd be looking for a rejection of the 30-minute trigger and a new low down below right about there. So let's see how this plays itself out. Now, as we watch this trade right now, as we watch this trade, and by the way, we haven't seen the hourly trigger and the half-hour trigger start going violently down, have we? Let's look at the one-minute basis here. And we, we're not seeing that currently, are we? Are we? We're not seeing the the. So yeah, actually, the half-hour trigger is heading higher, and the hourly trigger is heading higher while price is going lower. So um, we'll see how this plays itself out. But until conditions improve, <clears throat> you should be selling the half-hour and hourly trigger. We had a firm rejection on the daily trigger. The daily, daily trigger also headed uh, came down today. I want to show you this. Or Friday it did right there. It went down. Uh, so you want to be selling the rips at this point until conditions improve. Or we find a, a bottom that uh, the market wants to buy. Now, blah, blah. Wait a minute. Hold on here. Blah, 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 blah. All that stuff out of the way. Let's watch this right now. And price is already going higher right now. And while that's happening, while that's happening, I'm going to show you some other charts that are coming out just this morning once, the, once Gamma came out today. Uh, so we're going to take a peek at some other stuff that I was looking and waiting for. You guys got a brief from me this morning, I think, that said I want to wait for some CTA data. Um, 
I don't, before I get that stuff to you and some, uh, some gamma stuff. So let's take a peek at that and see what we got going on. All right. Do, do, do. And I'll share my screen with you here in just a moment. And let's take a look together. We'll do this together, I guess. Uh, you guys have enough. You guys know what you, you guys got a picture of what that looks like right there. Um, let me see if I can take a snip of this. Let's see if I can take a snip of this. And I like this because I can put a, um, a ruler on this. All right. So watch the screen down below. And one of the things we're looking for is trend followers. Uh, whenever trend followers step in to the market, if you are a bull, this is bull or bear. If trend followers stop into the market, step it, sorry, stop. If trend followers step into the market like this and you are a seller, you get out of the way. You have to. You're going to get run over. Uh, once they park themselves here, you still are out of the way as a seller. You can, you can like sell uh, new all-time highs uh, for hit and runs, but you cannot become a net seller. Listen to me closely here. You cannot become a net seller because you need trend on your side. I always talk to you guys about being where the money is. If the money is selling or buying, uh, you're with them. If the money's not doing anything, the market can kind of do what it wants to do, right? There's less like, there's less real money selling. There's rest. There's less velocity up or down um, in the marketplace. So uh, right here, you would, didn't want to do this. This was back in, uh, this began back on uh, October 3rd and 6th. We started buying, buying, buying. And then by November 9th, CTAs jumped in. We started heading higher. Now this lasted into December. Uh, but price continued to go up, right? So CTAs were not were not sellers, right? Um, so we want to check now to see. We want to check now to see if CTAs are sellers. Are they sellers? And this is my one of my. I love this thing. It's a. Um, it's a, a ruler. And we're gonna take a look right here. I'm going to bring this slightly lower for you so you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, can I leave this ruler on here when I save this? Oh, let me see. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can even see this thing. Protect your trade from macro headline risk with Financial Juice Pro. Now only Hold on right here. Year for our real time service. Let me see if I can see this thing. Nope, it doesn't show the ruler. So I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw a line on this ruler here for you, and I want. You, I'm gonna save this and uh, post it in the Discord for you, okay? And I'm gonna. Just, you guys can see this down below. Yep. Nope. Hold on here. I'm gonna post this in the Discord for you. And I want to show you what you don't want to see here. So let me get rid of this thing. Ruler. Okay. I'm going to show you what you don't want to see. <laughs> the, the real danger here. Uh, hold on. Not quite yet there. Let me get rid of some of this stuff because I want to be able to see it. I guess you can see, I guess you can figure this out for yourself. You really don't need me. So I'll just save it like this and you can figure out for yourself. When does velocity begin to impact the market? When do CTAs begin to help out? Um, when do CTAs begin to, I'm going to post this right now. Hold on. I'll post this in the general chat of the Discord. Do 
when CTAs help sellers help sellers for um, velocity to the downside to the downside. I'm gonna post this for you. It's just so you that so that you have it. And I monitor this um, frequently. So, uh, matter of fact, Vol Signals was out there this morning, and uh, on Twitter, and he mentioned the exact same thing. That's right, Burr. <laughs> uh, he mentioned the same thing this morning, uh, wanting that new data on CTAs because uh, when that starts to happen, uh, you get the fuck out of the way. Oh, what's what's going on right there? We're going up right now. It's a nice little squeeze, isn't it? <laughs> nice little squeeze right there, huh? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna send that. I'm gonna send that to you this morning here. And uh, if we break below that yellow line or just above that yellow line, uh, you want to be scared. If you're a bull. If you're a bull and you see that green line break that yellow line and, and your friends out there are telling you, oh, dude, buy the dip, that's the bottom, or, or that's a bottom, that's a bottom, uh-uh. They sell like crazy. They amplify. Notice how I told you earlier we've had velocity and a downside. Velocity and downside price. You want to see velocity and downside price? You break that yellow line and you're going to see it. <laughs> Sir when doom <laughs> i don't know I'm... it doesn't look like doom it, it looks like to me it looks like horse trade it looks like uh find your poison for a dip to buy um, and truthfully if we break that yellow line if you break that yellow line right you got more problems on your hands than uh buying a dip if you're a bull um once that triggers or if that triggers at any point <laughs> If that triggers, uh, get the fuck out of the way. There's no other way to describe it. Uh, you, you get out of the way. Until that line bottoms out again, uh, and even then you'll be afforded time. You don't need to call that bottom either. You can watch, you'll can. you actually watch that line bottom, and it'll take two weeks uh, for that line to settle down for you to be like, hey, I'm confident again to buy a dip. More than likely at that point, uh, the daily trigger and the hourly trigger will be underneath price. Now that hasn't happened yet, has it? So um, when CTAs help sellers for velocity to the downside, <laughs> Dude, that's a gnarly chart, isn't it? Like when I look at that chart, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> you break that shit, uh, it's going to get nasty. Not bad, right? Pretty good, right? Nice little bounce. Um, so we'll find out here. If you are a seller, uh, these are for you to sell here. If you want to be a seller still, if you're like, hey, Cap just said conditions aren't good, uh, there's your uh, place to sell. Your stops are above that red box. Gorgeous, dude. Nice little squeeze. Notice something else, too. Uh, what else can you take from this? Notice how this was straight up. That's a squeeze, isn't it? That's not buyers. Uh, that's squeezing. All right. This is endemic of a, um, a volatile environment, isn't it? These aren't buyers. These are just, this is just a squeeze. That's it. So we'll pay closer attention to it and see where we are right here. Uh, next target on a reversal to the downside is going to be 510 ish, 551006. Let me uh, ask you guys what you think. I do a lot of talking around here. Let me ask your opinion. Uh, please do not respond with your emotions. Um, it does nothing to help each other out. Um, it really doesn't. I'm asking you a serious uh, question uh, about the markets. Do you, um, are you, um, do you think we're going to have a major corrective move? Do you think that this is an opportunity to, opportunity to buy the dip um what are your thoughts on the market right now if you, if you can put it in a few sentences or less um 
minor corrective move. That's what I think it is, too. Uh, we're out of a pullback. I know that for sure. Uh, but I think I'm with you on the minor corrective move. Um, I think I'm with you on that one for sure. Who said that? Quigley Impact. Good job. Nice best first response I've seen. Uh, if the war narrative disappears, then this is just a buy the dip. Okay, so let me ask you, green man, do you feel or do any of you buy the dip, treasury up, bull up? Okay, yep, that's true. Uh, need some red days to open better bull spreads. I agree with that. Point two, good job, moist mat uh, matches. Do any of you think that the do any of you think that the misinformation is um, at an all time high uh, from foreign powers or no? Uh, David Ames saying go away. So David, do you think that uh, go away in May is real or do you think it's go away in April? Uh, get more 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 elated for a major corrective move. Yeah, I could see that. Um, feels too soon to buy. I think it's too soon to buy. I think it's too soon outside of like day trading for the people that want to invest. I don't think it's their time yet either. Uh, moon, Tesla, moon. Here, let's look at Tesla really quick. What, what did I tell you? Who said that? Was that Tesla Jess out there? Stop with the moon, Tesla, moon. Oh, you're saying buy in May. Okay. Yeah, that does align, right? Two weeks of consolidative movements and then you buy May. Misinformation comes from our own government. I think it comes from all over the world. Um, buy in May and go away. And then uh, burn the pirate. I say we are waiting for earnings until then we chop. So um, uh, David AMS saying buy May and go away. And just like sit back and let it ride up. Waiting for earnings until then we chop. I think that Tesla, Tesla just... Just said, just like went against everything I asked them to do. Um, don't you think that they would sell Tesla into their earnings? Doesn't that, isn't that like, isn't that like how Tesla operates? They either run it up into their earnings or they run it down into their earnings. Isn't that like the norm? People don't realize the power of propaganda. That's what I think. That's what I think. I would love that. So who said that? It's Juan Donez. I would love a move to 495. Like my greedy bull, I would fucking love to buy 495. I don't know that they give that to me. Uh, I always feel like when I'm like, yeah, can you give me this price? That's always like five points higher. I'm always like, dude, I would buy the fuck out of that. But I don't, they always seem to like turn up before I even get to that point where I really want it. Hey, stay humbled. Thanks for coming a member. I appreciate it. Oh, was that Young Trader that did that with the moon? Was that you, Young Trader? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what you guys are saying out there, what your thoughts are. So we're, I think we're all on the same page. I think everybody's kind of on the same page, right? I think everybody's kind of on Is anybody out there market crash? Um, or market crash or major correction, I guess I should say. Like a major correction would be, would be below 495. Like we start heading down to the weekly trigger, we start heading down to the monthly trigger, that kind of stuff. Tesla feels really lost. Price cuts, layoffs, wonky tech. Uh, what is a cyber track? Probably takes a while to bottom, in your humble opinion. We have a target. If 140 is lost, um, it becomes an invalidation point. You would see it trade 80 bucks. We've got 80 tagged. Uh, if that if they lose eighty, we see if one forty as a dip buy. Yeah, you would you would you would correct you would correct if CTA is begin that aggressiveness. Market crash during earnings. We had those before, but not normally until the end of earnings. It's more common if we are in a corrective move or a um, crash that it um, if we're if we're crashing during an earnings they crash it. Uh, but if it's like a correction or a bear market we're entering. Normally, they'll wait for earnings to report, and then uh, they'll they'll begin the roll as we head through earnings. We are still in an uptrend in the big picture. They won't stop supporting the economy before the election unless to push them supported low income programs. I also, remember it's OPEX week. Yes, it is. You can't be short going into Netflix. 
Uh, I like Netflix right now. I wanted to take a look at um, some of the bank reports from Friday. No crash unless we have a, a black swan event. Yeah, John, the one thing that I see, John, is the range expansion, like trading the extremes, right? Like buy the lows, sell the highs. It's not just the like up and 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 all that stuff. Oh. 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 Well, I got to roll my neck. Uh, the lower highs and higher lows, um, not for me. I'd need to see a break of um, the range. I need to see a break of that 5,000, like, uh, like, like a fundamental break of um, that level. Good morning, short seller. ST, how are you, brother? Good to see you, my man. Hey, uh... Yeah, like I liked the sell off on um was it was it Morgan Stanley that sold off? And well, let's see if we let's see if we can bring them up. Um let me see pick a pick here. Was it Morgan Stanley that did the sell off? I can't remember. Yeah, like this bullshit right here. So look at this right here. Uh I mean, it walks and acts like a duck, right? So this is Morgan Stanley. And this is their prior earnings on January 12th, right? This is a January 12th ER for um, Morgan Stanley. And look what they did. They straight up, <laughs> they straight up, you know, sold, hold on here. <laughs> they straight up sold earnings. And then it was like an immediate dip buy. Well, of course, we're like a little speck right there, right? We're like a little speck going, oh, no, it's going to do, it's going to crash. And they were just loading it up for the next earnings, right? Right, party time down the road. And what did they do? They, they sold before earnings even came out in Morgan Stanley. And so I'm like, well, what? So I drew this arrow right here. I drew that arrow right there. And I'm like, they're going to buy this shit down here. I, was, I asked if we could get 75 bucks. I'm like, this is this is 495 on SPY. I'm like, can I buy 75? And they're like, no, you can't. <laughs> you can't buy $75. <laughs> you cannot. We're going to buy $85. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do into uh, Q3 or to Q3 is or the rest of Q2? You're going to don't tell me. I'll take a wild ass guess. You're gonna run this up. And by the way, remember looking at market breadth earlier, which sector, which sector is almost at zero? Finance, banks. And <laughs> they're buying it right now, right? So we come into the end of uh, Q2 or Q2 and what are they gonna do? Same bullshit again, right? It's like clockwork. Uh, what's the other company that I really like right now? Um, Oh, let me take a peek and I forget what they're called again. State Street. S was it STT? So let's look at State Street. Uh, they, they just reported. This is State Street, right? And they're the most bullish of all the banks to me. Uh, you might be asking why. Uh, because they're... Because they they had like they're trying they're slamming down into their monthly and weekly trigger down here right they squeeze up they come back down and retest their daily and their weekly and they go right back up again and I'm like oh these I'm like these fucking guys th like this is all V shaped recovery on on State Street like just another party time uh, for the rest of uh, of of Q2. So I'd be paying attention to the bank reports that came out last week. Uh, 
we already know that that sector has been liquidated. They've already liquidated uh, banks and banking in general. Uh, and it looks like they're, bought, they're rotating into financials. If we were risk off right now, uh, would they be doing that? Let me ask you that question. Do you think that they would be buying financials, which it shows that they are? They're buying financials. So I thought if we were risk off, uh, we would not be buying financials, but we are, aren't we? Oh, DPST. Yeah, we can look at DPST. Let's take a look. Regionals. Let's take a peek at regionals right now. So on the bottom right-hand side, we're going to look at regionals. And I'm on a 30-minute basis right now. Let's take a look and see what's happening. Uh, this looks consolidative, but not quite a breakout yet. Uh, let me check it on a daily basis. Looks like another consolidation phase currently, but it looks like it'll be turning up here shortly. Um, ooh, and I'll show you this too. On a, on a daily basis, uh, it's looking for a major upside move. Series of higher lows. You got one right here. Low, higher low, higher low. Uh, doesn't mean we can't come back down a little bit, but what's really nice for regionals is your quarterly and your um, your monthly and your quarterly is about to start uh, bottoming here on um, on DPST. Now on a uh, thirty minute basis, I still expect more downside for you, uh, but uh, you can see it on the daily uh, velocity as well. Uh, but even saying that, let me take a peek. I'd be interested in taking that trade right down here. Uh, just under 50 bucks, maybe. Um, you might get a you might get a capitulation move briefly to the downside. Uh, something like this right here. Uh, I'd be trying to buy 40 bucks. There, let's change this. Set an alert at home for uh, 45, $45. You might catch that one last one right there. Like a brief moment or something like that. What's going on with Spooz right now? Let's take a peek down here. You got the daily trigger rolling down. Just like that, you get a little capitulation price, come right back up over the daily trigger, right? Weekly starts to come down. Uh, before you know it, you're back up again, and you're off up and to the right. Try to, if you can, see if you can catch four, between $50 and $45 on DPSD. Otherwise, um, you might have an intraday trade if you're above the daily trigger at $63 to $70. You might have some kind of trade in here. Or until conditions improve, that would mean price would need to be above $75 on DPST. No trade as of yet on that ticker. Still looking for Tesla to come on down. Uh, trade 140 bucks so you can get a dip by there. Did I get that right? DPST, that, that's what I did, right? That's what you're thinking too, Sam. Right on. You remember your little yellow boxes up here? Let's see if the bears can hold on or not. If the bears give up the hourly trigger, we will squeeze. So just right here. If we give up, if bears give up, uh, 513.35, uh, you will see the market squeeze on a major way to the upside. So we'll see if the bears are still here, if the sellers still own this market or not. Let's take a look at book map really quick. Oh yeah, baby. It kind of matches up to our little hourly trigger and our half hour trigger, doesn't it? And uh, what happens if uh, the big bulls get above this? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> Slap it in. 
ass, motherfucker. Slap that ass. We're gonna we're gonna take out some bears, aren't we? There ain't shit up there, are, is there? So let's keep our eyes on this right here. See if these sellers still own this shit. If you're a bear, I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't be selling this. Put your money where your mouth is. I see Captain Jim James come in here and sell or buy dips all the time. Um, although I fucking hate selling the rip. Um, <laughs> if there's a place for you to hedge the market, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Check one, two. Oh, dude, my it's getting worse. My uh, my feedback and my headphones is terrible. Check one, two. My feedback is terrible. If you're a bear, just uh, let us know if you're short when we come up in here to the uh, half hour trigger or the hourly trigger. Just let us know in the chat. That's good that it sounds good on your side. I got, I got a lot. Oh, guess what I did? I finally broke down. I finally broke down. I'm paying for music now. Um, supposedly, I'm not going to get, uh, supposedly, I'm not going to get a copyright strike. They're not going to ban my videos, which they've been doing. They're like, they won't even show my videos. Like, they're like, nope, sorry, buddy. You did a live stream. Uh, now, supposedly, uh, what, why can't I go? Oh, yeah, here we go. Supposedly, I got some uh, music. I signed up for Pretzel Pro. Uh, Pretzel Pro. Um, I don't know what that means. I started creating, I started creating a playlist. So some of the playlists, uh, hold on. Where's my playlist at? Um, I want to ask you guys a question. Uh, is anyone out there interested in two things? Is anyone out there interested? You had to be good with music. I don't want to hear anything from you if you suck at music. Like, I mean, like, I love this music, but nobody else likes my music. Or people go, that's great, but they turn the song on you the first chance they get. Do you understand the difference? Protect your trade from I like everything. Uh, let me show you my playlist that I created. $9 a year for our uh, if I can, I'll show you. Let me, let me see if I can. My reason I'm asking you is because if anyone is interested in crafting playlists for us and downloading some of this music to a... Um, to a cloud, oop, a cloud um, folder for me to play the music uh, locally. Anyone out there that's interested in this? I started going down the rabbit hole, and I'm like, man, this is a lot of work. I'm like, this is like, I'm like, this is. Let me show you what I did so far. Let me see. Let me show. I did this work on <coughs> Saturday morning, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, <coughs> sorry, I don't sleep a lot. I got kids, man, and a, I got kids and a wife. I got so much crap I got to do out there. Like, I'm up at like four, five, six in the morning. I'm like, do, 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 work, 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 work. Saturday, work, 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 work. Wake the kids up. Let's go out. We're doing some stuff. Then I'm like, okay, we're going to do this all day long. Like, doing this, doing that. It's hard to be good at that. It's not an easy thing to, uh, to have an air for. Like, that is something that everyone can jam to, right? Everyone likes that music. Everyone likes, um, Baby's got back, right? I mean, you can be an old woman, you'd be like, "Baby's got back," right? Um, like anthems. I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it's like anthem music, but I can, I, I, I get, I get why that song's catchy, right? Um, you know, you know, you know how you know if you're good at that is um, a lot of people, people be like, "I don't like metal," or "I don't like country," or "I don't like the blues," or "I don't like jazz." then they'll hear certain music and they're like, I didn't know that was country or I didn't know that was jazz or I didn't know that was um, EDM or heavy metal or punk. Like, I don't like, I don't like Green Day. I don't, personally, I don't like Green Day. Like, I'm not a fan of Green Day. You put some Sex Pistols on though, right? Everybody's going to jam out to that, right? Everybody. Um, so hold on one second here. 
Let me see what I got here. Where's my playlist at? No, I don't want to add to my playlist. Play Let me see what I, I'm going to show you what I got so far. Where's my playlist? I have no fucking idea where my playlists are. Well, my playlists, curated labels, stations. No, my music. You guys want to see what I got so far? <laughs> Let me show you real quick. All right. I should say this is your music. You guys are paying for this, so. <laughs> this is your music. <laughs> it ain't mine. All right, so some of the playlists that I've made. I made a waiting room. So if we're waiting for an ER report, I did uh, Dance Bitches. <laughs> this is for you guys to, uh, when you guys want to be like, oons, oons, oons. I did a End of Long Day or Week, Chill End of the Day, Bulls Moving Up, Happy End of the Day. I did Metal. Uh, that's for the Bears. I did Metal. This is for the Bears. Uh, Bulls Coming Back and Bear Doom. But I haven't done like... Um, uh, like top yet? Have, do you guys have any for for playlists? What am I missing for playlists? Like what kind of a um? I got Bear Doom for what? Yeah, that's I've got the turnaround for Bulls. All right, Bulls moving up. I got um, uh, Bulls coming back. I'm Bulls coming back. Be like the market's turning up. Uh, then the bulls are moving up, and then we have, of course, dance bitches. That's when we're partying. Indecision. Yeah, themes. We need themes. Exactly, Winky. Do we need, like, uh, we got Bear Doom, right? Do we need, like, um... Oh, here, here we go. How about bull? Capitulation. Ooh. That's like dance bitches for bulls, for bears. Bull, compi bull capitulation is a good one. Uh, indecision, I like that one. What, in, is, yeah, indecision or what? Well, how about we name this one? Um, uh, finger trap. <laughs> That's like the diddle in the middle. Create the playlist. Uh, bulls losing it maybe would be a good one. That'd be like the that'd be like bulls coming back. So maybe bulls losing it. Be another one. Music for blowing your account. <laughs> Fed music. Is that, um, uh, I've got one called, um, waiting room. This is for when we're just waiting for shit. Uh, you guys want to, how about this? I'll play it. Guess what I got for you? I got you guys something really cool. So I got you, um, I got the metal. I got the metal one. This is for when the bears are really cranking. Uh, so hold on, we'll play that one. So let's go to the main screen. So I've got like the the, the metal music. I don't know how many of you guys like heavy metal. Um, let, me, let me play a few tracks and tell me if this shit sucks. Even if, especially if you're if you don't like heavy metal, uh, say yeah, I can hear it. Listen to this. And guess what I got? I got a bunch of shit for you guys. So. Hold on, let me show you something. Hold on a second. I got this thing right here. So I got um I got drumsticks. So I got drumsticks, okay? Right here. They're like 16 inches. My uh my daughters are artists. So I asked if they would paint these things black. And adorn them with uh, Michael Burry, <laughs> like Michael Burry's signature or something on the back of them. And I'm gonna send them to you. I'm gonna send them to you via. I'm gonna send them to you via via email if you're a bear. And my thought was like, now he's playing the drums, right? He's like, ah, in the movie. <laughs> Sixteen inches of wood, black wood, by the way. We're gonna paint them black. And. Uh, I gotta get some. I got some some cooler air in here. So, uh, I'll I'll have the girls like paint them up for you, and you can like mount them. 
and it'll say like it'll say like Mike Barry or something like Mike on one stick, Barry on the other, and we'll do a print of his face, like a like a like a like a white print all the way down the stick or something like that, and I'll mail them to you. Uh, yeah, I'll pack them up, send them in the mail to you, and uh, you can mount them in your office or something like that, or uh, put them on your desk or something like that. I think I got a I think I got like a dozen, uh, maybe more. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. So uh, we can, like, if the market's, like, the market's crashing or something, we can all play drums at home. Like, right? So uh, let me play some of this heavy metal for you. Well, let's check to see if this is really bad or really good. Let's see if the bears can turn it around right now. We got a, I've got some, I got a bunch of tracks on Bear Doom. We'll play that next. <laughs> Let's cycle through some of the Bear Doom. You guys give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if this is good bear music, okay? Because we're here, we're where sellers are. Sellers are supposed to be selling right now. Uh, so we'll play some Bear Doom music. If you like, this song sucks, I'll get rid of it. I got like thousands of songs I can pick for bear music. So you just say yes or no, yes or no. All right. Right now, I got 23 I picked. 23 songs so far I've got for bears. What up, porch, baby? Now, I spent hours looking for this music for the bears, by the way. True. Hours. Welcome back to the stock market show, by the way. Sunrise music. <laughs> Just an intro for the bears. Just an intro. Okay, you said pause, pause, pause. All right, well, we'll let's go to the next song. We'll go to the next song. Oh, we'll go to the next song. We'll go to the next song. This is Bear Doom music. That's really bad. I don't know what I was thinking with that last one. Bears need to defend five twelve seventy eight five thirteen twenty eight. That's terrible, too. No, it's terrible. From macro headline risk with Financial Duke Pro. Now only $99 a year for our real-time service. God, so evil. Well, that's a good song. Hold on. This is a good bear song right here.
What up, Jack? This one's really good. This is Paradise Shadows from a Philion. That's not bad, right? Let's try the next one. are like that's our song don't give it to the bears bulls are like that's ours bring it over here <laughs> a little upbeat for a bear like yeah i like it yeah i don't know about that one. Oh, that one's bad Ooh, that's a good that's a bear one I can't. I need help. Yeah, I don't like that one either. Jesus, little soundless music. Come on, bears. More Lincoln Park. <laughs> oh, Black Parade. I like that. Sad emo and great dad stuff. Doom. He's so vicious, bears. Hold on, air. God, so terrible. Whoa, what was that? I think I can. What up, Darth Molly? That wasn't too bad. That song's okay. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, right? It was better. What a 
It sounds like a Tessa Gang song. <laughs> Tesla. One minute across the five minute. Oh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> Come on, bears. My bears. We'll see if the bears can do this here in a moment. Oh, dude, this is totally bear. Jeez, that thing's crazy. That shit's crazy. Oh, you like that, Miss Talking Monkey? <laughs> yes, that's my song. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Jesus, bears. I love Organ Donor by Shadow. I love that track. That's a good song, isn't it? Oh, oh. Dude, that song is gnarly.
The <laughs> fucking bulls get their music all the time. All the bulls are like, that's it, I ain't watching that show anymore. <laughs> Ooh. It's a pretty good track. That one's not too bad. Let's see if this is any good. Yeah, it's too, like, yep, that back on. All right, all right, you want to hear some good music? Let's see what the, let's see what I got for dance bitches. We'll give this to the bears for today. Hold on here. Uh, where's the bear? Or where's the bulls coming back? What do I got here? I thought I had a, I had a bull something in here. Dance bit. I only have four tracks for for dance bitches. Not easy. We'll do. This, we'll give this to the bulls bears right now. Let's see if this is any good or not. Bears dropping bombs right now. What's he saying about, uh, CTAs right now. Expect a bounce right here and then a rejection. Too bad. That's pretty good. Pretty good song. Oh yeah, this is definitely not bear music. Bears taking it downtown, baby. Lots of sky there. Whole lot of sky, baby. Yeah, that's not bull. That's not bear music, man. We can't have that like do 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 stuff. They ain't gonna fly, man. Oh, blood in the marketplace right now. Blood in the marketplace right now.
Ming, I'm a, Ming, I don't know how much more you need. Wham! Touch it. Ooh. Oh. oh. Almost perfection. Look at that bad boy down there. Oh. Coast, coast. There ain't shit. Oh, there it is right there. Up oh, a little bit down there. Right there. Watch out for a quick bounce at some point on that green box. And then another rip to the downside. Oh, hell yeah. Look at that, just bombs. Bears just dropping bombs. Right down here, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Slam it, tap it. Easy bears, easy bears. What other bear music do I have in here? Any more bear music? What do I have here for bears? I got a bear doom. I did all that. Bulls coming back. I don't know if the bear bulls are actually coming back right now. All right, we'll turn that shit off. It's too much. So if any of you out there want to work on music for the bulls and bears, let me know um, in the Discord, maybe. And I'll get you access to the pretzel account, and I'll get you access to a um, a um, I'll get you access to a, a, the pretzel account, and I'll get you access to uh, a cloud folder so we can download some of this stuff and create a, a playlist that sounds right. Uh, you guys like the classic bear bear you guys like the classic bear songs? It's really good music, isn't it? Uh, I'm trying to think of which song you guys are talking about. I think it's this one. You guys want the old school jams? You guys want the old school doom jams? You mean this one? Oh, it's not playing. Fuck. I have to go into like my audio settings. So frustrating. Yeah, it's not playing. I have to like go to every input source and like change it back. Yeah, it's a good song too. Right now I can't play any music from my desktop. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, what's great about it is they're using um, music that, or they're, or they're, they're opening up, or they've opened up to artists to create music that's licensed directly through Pretzel. Um, so you're not at any risk of uh, triggering copyright. They assign your email address to it that's associated with your social media accounts, like uh, Twitch and YouTube. And they give you a, a DRM or a copyright, uh, copyright paid for music for YouTube and Twitch. But I need some help with it. 
Blood in the marketplace right now, trading down to 510. We have a target down below of 508.50. 508.50. Oh, yeah. This is what I want to buy down here. If you want to know where I want to buy, I want to buy this right here. Uh, caps cheap call lot. So you, just so you know where I want to be buying stuff. Right down here. Uh, that's where I want to be a buyer. Now, that does not mean that we don't ricochet up higher. So uh, just be, just be. So we got, had our price target here, but I just want you to be aware, okay? That you're likely going to get, you know, nothing goes straight up and down. You'll have like a ricochet up, and then we'll go back down and trade that down below. Uh, there could be some bloodbathing going on. We just get out here and start taking out all these stops, but I don't think that it's going to be the case. That's a great fucking trade, right? Great squeeze, great roll over down. Dude, if you're a bear out there, you must be stoked, right? You're like, oh, he's turning bearish for me. He's finally making me some money. <laughs> They're trying to push it right now. If they get down here right now, I'm gonna buy the fuck out of that. So, <laughs> yeah, we need some we need some curated stuff for the show, um, so we can just like hit like if we're in like selling mode or if we're rolling over, or if we're buying a dip or if we're riding up or if we're topping out. Because you guys already know when I play certain music, you're like, oh wait a minute, you're like we're about to squeeze. He's playing the jams already. <laughs> then when you see me play certain tracks, you're like, oh, fuck, we're about to start selling. <laughs> it's like a cue for you guys. I'm losing my voice already on a Monday. Ugh. Woof. Oh, you're, you're, um, you're bull bear sexual? I'm the same way. I'm the same way. I don't say that to people, though, anymore. I use Bull Bear to, as a honeypot to pull them in. Ugh. You're changing into your bear uniform? <laughs> uh, yeah, I try to pull them in with the... Like, like, the Bull Bear thing is like, we know it's not. there's no such thing as a Bull Bear. We know it's supply and demand. Um, but you use it as like a, um, you use it as a vehicle for, um, uh, like a heel. Oh, you did the buckle up? <laughs> I saw the buckle up this morning. We're not quite there yet right now. Uh, we're almost there, but not quite. And if we are there, you're going to have plenty of time. Weeks and weeks of doom. So we're not quite there to call it at the moment. Yeah, dude, a wrestling heel. Exactly. Um, like, who's the bad guys? Who's the good guys right now? <laughs> All right. So here we go, right? We've made our uh, next target is complete. So we're going to get rid of this one now. This one goes away. Bye-bye. <laughs> and we're going to be looking for a rejection to the upside. So we had our nice little target right there. We're going to put that target right on your one-minute trigger. And look for another low down below here at 509.15. Uh, let's take a look at uh, our let's take a look at our uh, our um, what we've tested so far. So we rolled down on the daily trigger, right? We got underneath the hourly trigger. I told you earlier that you're a seller of the rip up here. That we can that we told you that on Friday that we wanted to come back up, right? Which we did. Uh, what well, we did up here, and now they're getting us underneath, and they're looking to sell. Uh, the half hour trigger, right? So that's what they did, right? We sold the half an hour trigger. We got a nice little blast to the downside. What you're looking for now is, I'm going to clean this up so you can see. Uh, we sold initially off the half hour trigger, right? That's aggressive. I want you to know that that's aggressive. We're not selling off the hourly trigger. They're selling right off the half an hour trigger. Uh, and so we're going to check now to see what we're retesting. Like, what are we retesting to go lower? Right, so our first retest should be a five, our one minute trigger. So we'll see if they get that. We'll watch this closely and we'll see if we can squeeze up a little bit and then slam straight back down into our next target. That's five oh. Let's go find out exactly what it is, or if we're going to go straight there, maybe I don't know. But uh, five oh, the target is five oh nine oh eight and five oh nine fifty five. So let's see if we can get down there either now or any kind of a check of the one-minute trigger. 
we'll just keep an eye on this. And I want to be a buyer down here personally. If I can buy a dip down below, I'm going to right down here. And uh, I'm just sitting here in my hands waiting to see how, far, how low we can go and uh, where I can buy a dip. Oh, dude. I need a throat lozenge. I need some, uh, I'm not going to make any jokes here. I got like a whole bag of throat lozenges. I got some bear poop to put in my mouth right now. Bear droplets. They're not even waiting, dude. Just going to slam this thing. Ah. Oh. bear droplets and just a note on the downside here uh tesla is retesting its lows not even giving a chance to bulls down below they did this before do you remember we thought up here let's look at this one over here we we're like yeah i could probably take a trade slam into that and they'll drop it down here we got some room here right and what happened? They go, nope, psych, straight down to the depths of hell. And they're doing it again. You see it? So you're like, yeah, we might get another trade up here this weekly trigger and slam the 140. Remember when they were saying, nah, 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 bro, we're not trading 140. And I was like, yeah, the real dip buy is right down here. Um, they're trying to do it right now. They're trying. Testing the lows again on Tesla, 160, here, 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 and they're trying it again. Trying to break support. Probably, probably see some panic selling. Q's. Back again to lows not seen since when? Here. Lows not seen since buyers stepped in here. 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 Here, here, and we're looking to see if they're still there or not. Looks like somebody's accumulating, doesn't it? Some of you out there are going to think, well, that's just bag holders cap for the major correction coming in the market. We're going to see if they step in one more time. Let's look at the cues here. And we're going to snap a line where we know that they are or think that they are. We think they're right there. If they're not right there, watch the hell out, right? So we got chaptains, or chaptains. <laughs> We've got captain's cheap call lot down here. This has made me a lot of money buying this shit down here. So let's see if we can get some more of that action. This is usually a pretty profitable place to buy. So we're getting close to it, aren't we? Getting pretty close. I mean, if it doesn't work, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's trading down there right now. Let's see if it works again. This is like uh this is like Paris Hilton on South Park with like the ping pong ball. <laughs> Oh, this is like one two date trade, zero dates, hit and run action. All right, so we're on April 15th right now. That's a zero date for you out there. <laughs> Five fourteens are a little calls are a little rich right now. They could be a little bit cheaper. What day is today? Monday? Calls are cheap as oh no. Five eighteens only a dollar for Friday.
519s are 81 cents. Uh, pick up an herbal tea habit. What's your What's the best tea for the throat? All right, I'll buy it. I'll buy it tonight. What's the best tea for your throat? Where's the daily trigger? These teas. <laughs> Lemongrass, ginger. <laughs> what did you say lemongrass throat coat like lemongrass with honey would be nice wouldn't it salt water i like salt water i do that i do the salt water throat coat I eat bananas too unripened. Uh, ginger and honey. Never tried fresh ginger and honey. There's a doctor that's helped me on uh, Twitter. Goliath, what are you saying? Bananas? Are you serious? All right, then. Fuck it. Bananas it is. Uh, Goliath, you're a singer. What do you do? Uh, repeat what you do again. Dude, you should see my throat, bro. It's like my vocal cords are getting fucked up. Oh, I'm not paying attention here. I gotta get back to back on a plan over here. I'm over here. My wife does tea. I do coffee. I shouldn't do coffee. Let me move this out of the way so that you can see the um, price action. Text to speech, yeah. I'm doing just too much talking. It's just, it's just too much, too much time on the mic. Oh, I wanna buy the fuck out of this so bad right now. Let me take a look at a uh, few things here. HYG getting blooded right now. Yeah, so this is where the CTAs are. Just so you know, the CTAs are right here. So this is where the CTAs are. This is how you'll know if, the, if we start selling. CTAs are all right here. Shouldn't say that, but they're like, this is this is them right here. Uh, these buyers right here. This is them. HYG hasn't blooded shit. VIX 9 day is about to trade. Uh, we're going to get a bloodbath here in a moment. You can see VIX 9 day is about to get an explosive move to the upside. VIX uh, 9 day wants to fuck right now, if you don't know. Uh, hold on to your pantalones. Do I have any lower? Nope, that's all I got right down there. That's it. I just want to make sure I got this right. Make sure I got this correct. Yeah, I'm a little high. I should be like right there. This is where I should be. Hold on here. I'm a little off in my, uh, sorry, there's a gap right here that I'm trying to get on. So I'm a little sloppy in my bottom uh, cappy calls thing. Not being completely, uh, uh, being a little sloppy in my, I'm more like right here. 
These buyers right here, that's where they are. Being a little sloppy here. And I'm probably a buyer more exacting, like, right there that's exactly where I'm a buyer like right on that yellow line inside of that green box like right fucking there Trying to think what I buy. So 507.82. I'm watching uh, April 19th. Nothing's interesting me here, though. I'll tell you what. I don't really want to pay the money for the uh, calls on Friday. Um. Like 508. They want me to pay $4 for Friday calls. I'm like, yeah, I get fucked on that. Calls are expensive as fuck right now. I feel like I'm being roped into a lie. I'm going to stick to zero dates. Yeah, everything's priced in right now. I got to wait here. I want to see more capitulation. They're like they're like trying to fuel the downside move right now. And I'm not willing to fuel that downside move, so I'm going to hang out and do nothing. Uh Apple. Yeah, we can do I can throw a few more. Let me throw up a few more. Uh I can throw up another 5 tickers. Uh so how about this? I'll do some more tickers for you. Here's Apple. Uh, 30 minute uh, business. We'll get rid of this so you can see it better. Here's Apple, right? There's some more danger to more downside. There is some positivity in Apple right now. There, the daily trigger is moving up. Uh, you can see the daily trigger turning around to the upside, turning up right now. Uh, we, you know what else we'll do? We'll do Netflix, too, because I like Netflix right now. Uh, Netflix should be complete with their um, correction. Let's take a look at Netflix next. Netflix looks gorgeous. Every time it's on its daily trigger, bam, 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 just keeps going higher and higher and higher and higher. Uh, Netflix near a point to buy. I mean, it's right fucking there, dudes. It's right fucking there. It's ready to rock right now. Like, this is Netflix. Netflix ready for the next dip buy. It's worked once, twice, three times, four times, five times. So right down here. One of these times it might not work, but uh, we're so fucking close right now. The one thing that's irking me about this trade is that um, calls are expensive as fuck right now um, across the board. Like all weekly calls right here, they're, they're already pricing in a move up. I want just one more down move. Just like give me one more. Give me one more fuck you like maybe here. 
Give me just one more down move. Like, just blast it. Just like, whew. I just want fucking red bars. Uh, Tuesday, uh, just a heads up. So for Tuesday, we've got building permits at 8.30 in the morning. Those are material to the marketplace. Um, that's a big one. Uh, what else do we have tomorrow? We've got a 11.30, we've got a bill auction. we got a 42-day and a 52-week bill auction. API crude oil stock change tomorrow at 4.30. Not a bunch of news until we've got auctions and shit. We got no real news until uh, Thursday. No major news. Uh, Rivian. I'll do Rivian next. Let me look at Rivian. Ooh, nice. Dude, Rivian's gotten fucking hammered. Let's take a look at Rivian. That's a good one. Good job picking out Rivian. Daily trigger. Holy shit. I like Rivian. Uh, It's not ready yet, but I like it. Let's take a look at Rivian really quick. Oh, fuck yeah. Let's take a look at Rivian. What's the other... Um, what's the other one that I like right now that I haven't bought yet that I want to buy? What is it called? Um, CTH? CHT? I think it's CTH. There's one that I really like right now. Um, where is it? What is it called again? It's like the uh, it's the cloud computing. Why is it not popping up? GCT, that's what it is, GCT. So I want to look at something with you here. Oh, dude, I want to buy that so fucking bad right now. Ooh, I want to buy that so fucking bad. Let's look at um, GCT. And I want to talk about Rivian with you at the same time, okay? So we're going to go between the both of them, okay? Matter of fact, let's. Um, I'm going to delete everything off of uh, GCT. And we're going to take a look at these two companies. Because they're similar. Um, bottom right hand screen. GCT, it's Giga Cloud. Okay, so GCT. Amazing fucking company, by the way. It's fucking a great company. Uh, opened up, I believe, at $12. It traded on a high $61.88. And uh, on its IPO. And then they shorted the fuck out of it into the ground, right? This is like IPO shit, right? Uh, any any company that's worth its salt, they short, they let it squeeze up, they grab some of the liquidity, and they short this fucker right in the ground. Now, uh, if it's a good company, like this company, GCT, where they've got... If you go to GCT and you look at all of their reports, they're an epic company. They're beautiful. Outstanding company. Um, great year over year sales, great, uh, great, every, great, everything, great reports, great, uh, revs, uh, real money coming in for real product, blah, 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 blah. 
That doesn't matter, does it? What matters is uh, accumulation distribution, right? And IPO, and this is a new company. And it doesn't matter how good of a company they are. They sent it down to the dumpster. Uh, all these people are trapped. They whine and whine and whine. Then you have capitulation down here, a bunch of, bunch of bullshit, right? Everybody's crying about it. But then it becomes a matter of uh, accumulation. Listen closely to this. It becomes a matter of accumulation. And it starts to bottom out. And you think, well, it can't go to four bucks. Yeah, it did. Went right down to four fucking dollars. Uh, but it started being bought up and bought up and bought up. Has a series of highs. You got some great consolidation down here, right? Gorgeous. Uh, and then it squeezes up and blasts up. Dude, trades what? Oof. 18 bucks. Gorgeous. Comes back down to where these buyers are. Oof. Ooh, yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> $43. Oh, man. But you can see the the life of this, right? Squeeze down, come all the way back, got to wait a long time, all that kind of stuff. Let's overlay uh, Rivian and see where they are. Yeah, Rivian, right? Oh, sorry. R I V N. Let's take a look at Rivian. Yeah, not so much, right? Well, hold on here. Can I make this bigger? A little bit of a difference here, right? Let's mute um let's mute the make that smaller for a minute. And let's look at some of the differences in these two companies. Uh can I mute my screen here? And let's mute the webcam frame. Okay. So there's a little bit of a difference here, right? We've got um, a company that was shorted, like it should be, into the dumpster. And this looks consolidative, doesn't it? And instead, there's a divergence, isn't there? There's an expectation that we're going to go higher. Woo! And instead, there was a divergence to the downside. Do you see that? So let's look at Rivian on its own. Why is Rivian not going up versus uh, GCT? I can already tell you why. Because if you were to check the, if you were to check uh, GCT versus Rivian's books, they're completely different. They are completely different. Uh, Rivian, in no way, shape, or form, uh, is a money maker like GCT. If you were to compare the books on both of these companies, they are not the same company. They have nothing near each other. Uh, and what they do or what they bring in for money. So now we're just looking at Rivian, I think. Okay. So I'm not going to go into the fundamentals on Rivian, but I am going to tell you for sure that there was a major divergence here on Rivian right inside of here. And how do we know that? Because this seems like it was consolidative, was doesn't it? Uh, so right in here, let's take a look. So we got we got buyers in here, right? Or what we think are buyers. You buy the dip, 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 right? Oops, buy the dip. Everything is awesome. Buy the dip, buy the dip. But you had a cross up here. You had a daily crossing the weekly, right? And you're thinking, well, we had one back here. Everything should be fine. Come back down here by the dip. What would you? What should you have done there? You should have had a stop, right, at a minimum. And let's say you said, well, fuck that. My stop's going to be at 11.59. So you got stopped out. You can see that stops were triggered down here, right? Stops were triggered. But what's most important here? If GCT is a better company, than Rivian in its revs, in its uh, sales, in its growth, in its profit, all of those things. And we're trading $8.56, and GCT went all the way to $4. $4. $4. I'll say it again. $4. Uh, it's probably easy. 
poor Rivian to trade at least that, right? Five bucks, nice little place to stop. All right, let's uh, get rid of this. So you broke $10. You, bro you had a breakdown below $10, right? And you're getting some capitulation now, right? So there's 10 bucks. You have capitulation now, right? You already know that GCT is a better company. And they went to fucking four. You got five bucks right here. If you at home were going to look at Rivian versus GCT's financials, I guarantee you that GCT is way better off than Rivian. Now, I like Rivian. I actually have, a, actually have some close friends that work for Rivian. <clears throat> I don't discuss that shit with them, but uh, they've always said good things about Rivian, believe it or not, especially um, uh, their self-driving shit. So uh, five bucks, I, I think, is reasonable, reasonable, right? Easy to attain. We're going to go to a 30-minute trigger. And let's see what we can see on Rivian on a 30-minute basis. So currently, uh, price is uh, below the hourly trigger, right? Uh, so we have a target down below of seven fifty, and then five dollars. Believe it or not, on Rivian, we're gonna look at velocity, and we can see at least daily velocity from a daily velocity perspective. It's still in a downtrend right now, right? Uh, hourly velocity is a little oversold right now, and I expect it to be bought before we get to five bucks but let's look at where the daily trigger is right up here so this daily trigger even if you get the squeeze even if you bottom out on even if you bottom out on a price down here right let's say we trade it higher you're going to still expect that daily trigger to come right about here and you're going to expect further downside then you're likely going to trade uh, just above it, maybe six bucks. And then you'll end up seeing more capitulation, believe it or not. Something like there. And then a, a target below. Anything below five, five bucks. So I don't see why we can't trade uh, sub five bucks. Now, saying that saying that right and you guys are like there's no way we're trading four bucks cap there's no way we're trading four i just showed you a company with great financials that did trade four dollars so we know fundamentally it can trade four dollars without a blink of an eye without a blink of an eye it can go down there uh without a problem now if you were like well cap that is that this isn't going to happen right well i'll i'll say this to you until price can get above the daily trigger, uh, I'm bearish to four dollars. So I want to see it get above a successful back test, a new high, and then I would be interested in taking a long on it. Now this will be a moving target all the way down, all the way down. And I will say something else to you: if you are long on uh, Rivian and it does go to four dollars. I assure you that you will be in this trade for a long period of time. It's not going to zero, but you would likely see buyers step in here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And you're likely going to spend somewhere around three, six months, nine months, or a year before you ever see it come back. High probability of that. It's more a function of accumulation and distribution. Now, if you're stuck in this trade too, what can you do? You can likely sell calls on Rivian for a period of time uh, before you're at any risk. So you can make a bunch of money just selling calls on your underlying. Uh, if you're stuck in a trade down here, you can also wait until it gets to 4 or $5 and add to your position. And once we get to $4, you can also begin to sell puts against the position uh, as we consolidate and make our way higher. So Rivian, right now currently bearish on it. Uh, price would need to get above $11 today. Uh, if we were to squeeze today on Rivian, price would need to get above $11. $10, sorry, you got a big wall up here 
uh, telling you to go fuck yourself on Rivian. But there's ways for you to make money. Uh, and you're likely coming into the end of, of a uh, correction uh, on Rivian. Uh, and I'm, I'm not bared up here. Like, it's not all doom and gloomish. This isn't a ton of room for it to go down. We're starting to turn around right now on SPY. Uh, price target, Rivian, $4 currently. Pretty bared up on this ticker right now, uh, which kind of sucks. But there's ways for you to make money. I mean, I'd buy Rivian at 4 bucks all day long, and I'd sell puts against it all day long. Netflix getting a dip buy right now. Uh, Spooze right now. Spooze right now catching a dip buy. Uh, we're bouncing around right now. The one-minute trigger is turning to the upside. But we also know what they did earlier, right? They did it just like they did it right here. Whoop. And they're going to try to do it again to you. Whoop, right there. And they're going to try to sell you down again. Uh, on They're going to try to sell you down again. And this time, I expect uh, they try to do it on the five minute, not even the half an hour. I think they take you right down here. It's now one o'clock in the afternoon. If you are a bull, and you don't like the show or you're watching the show for the first time, I want you to know that I am a bull, uh, but I do try to trade the market in front of me. Um, and not only am I here with you when we're going up, but if trying to save you from destroying your account at the same time, I hope if you are a new bull or a new trader, a new investor, that you tune in more when we are correcting than you do when we are going straight up because uh, wealth preservation means way more uh, to you than um, uh, us going to the moon, right? I want you to be able to learn how to identify when and when not to buy a dip, and this is a critical time for you uh, to know when to buy dips and not buy dips. Thanks, Let's Get Weird. I'm being serious with you guys out there. Um, price action and, um, you know, means so much more and i really really want you to have wealth preservation don't be like ah oh, fuck that guy i want to go get i want to tune into somebody that's always bulled up um this is whether we're going up or down it's a learning environment for you let's go weird <laughs> i gotta keep it real man i got to um you have to do it because not everybody does that Uh, what are you saying? Market seems skeptical about his really striking back news. I would not. Be, we earlier this morning we said uh, geopolitical risk. Do not make that. Do not take that trade unless something uh, material happens. No threats. No unqualified uh, sources. No. Uh, no. I love Walter and Bloomberg, but no like dropping news without a source, without a link. At this point, right now, there's so much misinformation out there that's being used by every government um, and it's infiltrating our market so much more so than ever in history uh, that I would not trust any fucking news coming out right now. As a matter of fact, when we closed on Friday, you should have bought calls. We knew that. We sold down this morning. Uh, we've been able to track this entire trade and we haven't relied upon any fucking news. Stay away from the news put your blinders on right now you will get murdered in this market if you start drinking bull kool-aid bear kool-aid any of that shit put your blinders on and uh, start trading the price action that's in front of you uh, we've been discussing that over the course of a few weeks with market briefs uh, to not be paying attention to outsized news it will cloud uh, you making money right now It's very dangerous right now listening to the news uh, for a trader. We'll find out if we turn to the upside or not. Sellers are in control of the market. They are teeing off on the half-hour trigger currently. We are in a sell the rip. Uh, whoop. Down here. Now we are in a sell the rip environment, not the buy the dip environment. Uh, not necessarily uh, cut the market loose or anything like that, but we are in sell the rip. It was confirmed earlier this morning, and we were waiting for that com confirmation on Friday in the close when we when we reopened the mar market this morning. Uh, how bad that would be. Now, personally, 
I think that's it right there. I'm hoping I can get that 508. I think I'm going to be looking to put some risk on uh, call spreads or something. So hopefully I can get that. Uh, Mara or Cisco would have to uh, take a look at them, but yes, I will look. Hold, let me write that down. You mean to look at Mara and Sisk? I will post something in the Discord on both of those. Hold on a second here. Uh, make sure there's no. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm reading like CNBC right now. They can't keep up. CNBC is like uh, red graphics, <laughs> green graphics, red graphics, green graphics, red graphics. <laughs> you know what sucks? You know what? They, you know what pisses me off? Um, Winky Face has a Winky Face has a company that he really likes. I forget what it's called right now. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Winky has a company that he really, really likes. It's crazy because it's it gives really good insight in how it doesn't matter how good a company is. They are a bank that processes fees for crypto transactions. So, like, whenever we're, there's a lot of volatility, they should be making bank. And uh, so, whenever so whenever there's volatility in the in in the uh, crypto markets, this company should be like. And they do, oh, it's called, uh, not Hedgeye. Hedgeye is a, what do you call it? Uh, what the fuck is the name of this company? Um, they do banking and they do order flow for crypto. And um, anyways, this company is um, like always comes out with kick-ass earnings. Like, hell yeah, we had a lot of volatility in crypto and we made bank. And um, they, they short this fucking thing into the ground regardless. They don't give a fuck. They're like, crypto's falling, short that shit in the ground. Eagle Eye, what are they called? Uh, there is an, an Israeli company. Israeli crypto company. I don't know why I can't think of their name right now. Uh, how much of it has to do with Trump trial? Uh, I was talking to a close friend. I was clo talking to a close friend. Is it VRT? Winky, who's the um, company that you love? What's the company that does um, crypto order flow and they they do banking and shit like that? Winky's here. You were riding them for uh not is it no no Hedge is like a um uh this is a ticker that he, Winky was trading it last year. Is it Vert? You were trading them last year. Nah, dude, it was order flow for crypto, man. Hold on, I'll look him up. Maybe they were bought by somebody else? I think they were bought by somebody. A U.S. company bought them or some shit? Vert, hold on. I thought they were bought by another company. Nah, this isn't them. Mm. Oh, fuck, what's the name of that company? Order flow. Wow. Hmm. 
I don't see them. I'm gonna have to check who this company is. It's something I not not Eagle Eye. And they were bought by a US company. Yeah, they're a market maker. Uh Ruffles said, Captain, are you in a position? Uh no, I keep trading, I keep buying these bottoms, dude. Uh, I buy these bottoms and I sell them. MBLY. That's it right there. Mobile eye. Mobile eye. It's fucking mobile eye. Dude, Winky's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, fucking mobile eye. I am Doug Fuller. Good job, brother. Right on, Doug Fuller. Doug Fuller knows who it is. Curlo, you got it too. Mobile eye, dude. <laughs> Winky's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I never heard of that company. Oh, they make driving systems? <laughs> Is it maybe it's not MBLY? Hold on, maybe I got the company wrong. Hold on, maybe I got the company wrong. Was it Vert? Were you trading Vert? Hold on here. Did I get the wrong company? Am I mixing up companies? Mobile Eye Global. Was it Mobile? Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just mixing it. Were you trading Vert, uh, Winky, or no? Take your trade from macro. Yeah, mobilize. I realize that mobilize is not crypto. I realize that. I, I'm 100%. I, under, I understand. <laughs> I know that mobilize is not crypto. I realize that. You did trade Vert last year. So maybe I'm just mixing up the companies. The ticker symbol or something. Maybe I'm just associating mobilize with, uh, with Vert. I thought you showed me that company and you were like, uh, they should be going up right now and not down. Yeah, during a period of high volatility. Uh, so someone was asking my positioning. Uh, so hold on, we're gonna go look at uh queues really quick. Cloud infrastructure. There was a company that was doing order flow, and I don't remember the name of it. It wasn't like blockchain or any of those uh, Coinbase, Coin, I mean, or uh, any of that kind of shit. Uh, so cues down here. Let's take a look at cues really quick. We'll come right back to your questions. Hold on. Someone asked. Uh, someone asked, "Am I in a position?" Um, bottom right hand. So, am I in a position? You saw where I wrote uh, captains used car lot, call lot, right? Call lot, car lot. So this yellow line that I have right here is a point of interest for me why uh because i've been fucking making bank down here like serious bank <laughs> like the gorgeous buy right there and a gorgeous buy right there and a gorgeous buy right there and uh there's another one right here another gorgeous buy right there and you buy that and you buy this and where are we at right now so we're coming down to that same place right look at it doom and gloom right look at it oh yeah we're so close touch it so where am i at right now uh main street and we called this whole trade, right? We haven't missed a single part of this trade, have we? I don't think we've missed a single part of this. Uh, we called uh, we called this trade right here. Uh, right up here. Uh, we called that trade. We called this trade down. Uh, we called the rejection down here. And now we're calling this move down here. So we haven't missed a single part of this trade, I don't think. Uh, so right now... I guess this would be, um, what am I right now? One, or what am I? One, or uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Six for six. So let's see if we can be seven. Let's see if we can be seven for seven right now. <laughs> and we're looking for a place to buy a dip down here. And so I've got Captain's Cheap Call Lot down here. In the exact place I'm looking to buy a dip is on this yellow line down here. Uh, right there, you see it? Do you see it? This shit's getting too easy.
There's a company that does the order flow. I'll, I'll look them up. The reason I bring it up is because Winky and I were talking about this company that uh, wasn't trading to uh, the money they were making from volatility in crypto. They were like bloodbath this fucking company. And I maybe it was Vert. Maybe it was Vert. I'm just mixing it up with Mobileye. Well, I was looking for weeklies. They were too expensive. Um, then I was looking at um, I was looking at weeklies. Then I was looking at one dates. They were too expensive. But we're gonna see. Well, look at they're touching it right now on cues. They're touching it down here. So we're gonna be looking to buy the dip here in just a moment. They're, they're touching the PP down below on cues. Let's look at uh, around the see what's going on down here. Dixie not doing too much. Uh, HYG bloodbathing. Uh, watch this down below here, this one minute chart on HYG. There's probably more blood to come. Uh, keep your eye on this weekly trigger on HYG. HYG trading 7602. And you've got the weekly trigger at 7532. So we might break right through this captain's cheap call lot. So I'm not going to buy exactly right here. I'm just going to keep my eyes on it. See if we blast through and V-shape right up here. So right down here, I'm taking a peek. Almost there. <laughs> and I really got my eyes on HYG down here. Keep your eyes on HYG. And also, VIX 9-day is still looking like it wants to pump to the upside. <laughs> so almost there. Almost ready to buy a dip. SPX down below, getting all doomed up. Apple holding itself up nicely. Netflix testing its daily trigger right now on doom and gloom. And I'm looking to go long the market. Good job, up, Borky. You're welcome, Bork. <laughs> You're welcome, Borky Bork. <laughs> They want a dollar seventy nine for five ten C right now. Complete fucking garbage for tomorrow. They want a dollar seventy fucking nine here. They want two goddamn dollars to go up fucking. They want two dollars to go from here to here for tomorrow calls. Like that's just fucked up. Two dollars. Not quite two, but been expensive all day long. I'm like, I ain't buying this shit. I ain't buying it. Fuck no. No cheap call lot. <laughs> There's no cheap calls here right now. How about just some zero dates? Oh, fuck no, dude. I'm looking at zero dates right now, and I'm like, you got to be shitting me. All right, I got some 511Cs set up right now uh, for today, zero dates for today. I'm not willing to pay the fucking premium for fucking calls for tomorrow. How's that little uh, arrow doing right there? Is that working for you? Does that give you guys enough? Uh, does that work for you? Uh, 
I got a starter position for 20 contracts. Uh, haven't executed yet. I've got them lined up though, and I'm looking to buy them if I can get a tap right down where my right down where it says cap. Right that look at that yellow line right there. You see that? Watch that yellow line right there. See this one right here? Let's see if we can get that. I got an order and let's see if we can fill it. I want 20 cents, by the way. Is, is that a good pin strike or no? Is that a good pin strike? No fill for me right now. Still no fill. I don't know if they're going to fill me. Price bouncing around right now. I'm, for, I'm pretty fucking cheap right now. Uh, don't forget, 1.30 in the afternoon, we get Vol Control Gang coming in usually. It's now 1.27. A little bit more. Come on. Take out their stops, baby. Still no fill here. I'm being kind of miserly right now. Had a good morning, dude. Made some fucking bank this morning on the open. I ain't giving away my money. <laughs> Are, did you get in? I ain't giving my money away on a Monday. I'm still not in. Baby, one more time. I am long. I am long. Let's see what happens here. Woo! Gorgeous day here for the Bears. One twenty-eight in the afternoon. Uh, I've got some zero dates here. They're not like they're twenty cents. So we'll see if there's any payout on this or not. Um, I've only got uh, twenty contracts sitting here, so. We'll see if I can get a little payday here. I'm not like max long or anything. VIX moving to the upside. Yeah, we've got a uh, VIX nine day here. Ready to rip some faces off. Uh, the target is right here. Target for the VIX nine day is right about here. And uh, what else we got here? HYG has more blood. Let me go down here. and sh We could get a bloodbath here because look at this. I might have to reset myself, but on the bottom right hand, in the bottom right screen, just so you can see, this is the HYG one minute chart. And it's got more down to go. I mean, look at, look at HYG right here. We could easily bloodbath spoos. Trade straight down to 505, maybe even 500. So just so you can see that there, um, HYG is in a bloodbath right now, trying to trade 7532. Just be aware of HYG still being quite bloody right now. And as a matter of fact, SPY is now trading 50637. Just be really careful out there. You could see a major capitulation trade here in SPOOs. Look at it right here. And also, let's put up the, uh, you got 50522. So I can bring that over for you. Why is it so far over? Uh, what am I 
looking at here. 25. Bring that closer. What 10. Also buying uh, five 10 Cs, 25 contracts. Now I've got five 11s and five 10. And be wary of this HYG down below for a capitulation move down. Trading 506.13 right now. Starting to accumulate calls. I didn't want to buy one dates or weeklies because they were so expensive. They were like two bucks, dollar eighty, uh, two dollars, and I'm just not willing to spend that much money on um, calls. Looks like it's going to be feed and puts. Uh, so zero date bounces. Is all I'm willing to buy down here. I got 510 C's, 511 C's. Looking to take the trade back up to, looking to take the trade back up to uh, 509.50, 509 flat. Watch HYG down below. I've got this chart open for you so that you can see it. Some real blood down here in HYG. Trading 75.91. If you are looking for a capitulation spooze trade, it's all the way down here. 501.61, but I don't think we get down there. I could be wrong, though. Yeah, I like these all-day runs. The past couple weeks have been some kick-ass trading. It's been um, trade the extremes and just make money. We got to see one side break, though, at some point. At some point, someone's going to get fucking ate up. At some point, somebody's going to sell a rip or buy the dip, and it's going to be terrible. <laughs> someone's going to do it with size. Well, someone's going to do it like... Someone's either going to do it with some fucking size, like, yeah, I'll buy $15 calls right here, or I'll buy $15 puts right here, and they're going to get taken to the fucking cleaners. Oh, fuck yeah, man. This is probably the safest I've felt. Probably shouldn't feel that safe down here, but I do. I wanted to buy calls down here for Friday, and I'm like, they're like, you want, they're like $5. I'm like, fuck you. You ain't getting five bucks from me. <laughs> this is spy. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> 
They know, I know they know. <laughs> I'm like, eat my dick, dude. I'll just do zero dates every day for the next two, three days. <laughs> it'll cost me it'll cost me like ninety cents. <laughs> you can keep your fucking five dollars, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> how about you keep how about i'm not giving you three dollars and i'll just buy 90 cents worth in, in zero dates your dog has the most wretched gas right now my office is right next to the intake vent for my hvac so the smell is instantly pumped around the entire house <laughs> Bork's happy. He just got paid with a bunch of puts. It was a pretty good trading day today. I can't complain. <laughs> Let's see how often we have we had slam into this. Uh, yeah, that's this is what I'm afraid of right here. This is back in September down here. Like they start fucking around down here start blasting through weekly triggers and shit on hyg and that's when you get scared look at this kiss down here they kissed it right down here and now we're right back down to that weekly trigger again the good news is we haven't seen velocity and price uh on spy so i'm happy with that I, we're not done going down here by the way uh you might think we're done going down but we're not uh these fucking bears can easily send us these bears can easily send us straight down to the dumpster right there. Seller's still in control. We're doing some exploratory buying down here right now to see if this is the bottom. Uh, we're close, though. You might get one more leg. It's possible. Here, let me um, let me make it this way for you. So if we go, if we do roll all the way down here, I will get aggressive. I'll actually start buying 100 packs of calls. So if we don't, though, I'm going to stay loose up here. Um, I'll get, I won't get too crazy. But if we do bounce all the way down here, I will be buying the dip with some size. make some money here today keep that right there for you oh. we already closed the gap oh no the the gap at 502 uh, it's possible today. I figured we'd save it. I think if we were to go down here, I would just be buying the dip. I think this might be my, uh, my, my size dip buy down here. So you got like zero dates here. I probably should set up a trade for down here. Stay up to date with the latest. Protect your trade from macro headline risk with Financial Juice Pro. Something farther out. Let me look out farther out in time. Hold on. Yeah, the options market sucks right now. I'm looking at like um I'm looking at um 
Like all the calls are too expensive. Like weekly calls are too expensive. Tesla testing its lows right now. Q's look at that blasting through right now. Doom and gloom. Uh, lows not seen since. We got some freedom here. We got freedom to we got freedom to drop here. They're trying. Q's breaking support. Uh, currently right now. Q's are in free fall right now. Woof. Let's put a uh, halfway mark there. Bam. Did they tag that one yet? Oh, they're trying. They are blooding it right now. Q is breaking support. Next support on Q is 429.22. And then below that, your next support is 423.85. Thank God we knew we were in risk off this morning. I want to read what you guys are saying. Now I sold out everything that I had today on the open. I went flat on the open today, and then we looked to see what happened afterwards, and we started selling the daily trigger. And uh, if you remember on Friday, so on Friday we didn't confirm the uh, corrective. We're in a correction right now. If you're here this morning, we flipped from buy the dip to sell the rip. Uh, the moment we lost the daily trigger earlier, we went through and looked at it. We are in sell the rip right now. We are not in dive by the uh, by the dip. We are in sell the rip. We are in sell the rip this morning. We turned to sell the rip. Uh, I want to say like 10 a.m. by noontime, it was confirmed. By 12, by 10 a.m. and then 12 p.m., we confirmed that uh, we were no longer buyers or dips, we're sellers of rips. Yeah, we're uh, this is either an intraday bottom or this is the bottom down here. This is either the bottom or this is the intraday bottom. I, I don't, sometimes they do it. I just don't know if they will or not. I don't know if they're done going, we're done going down. I think we have one more leg down this week, like a weekly low of some kind. And this is it. I don't know if it's today or tomorrow. One forty-four in the afternoon. Looks like Vol Control Gang is in the house. They started at one thirty. Uh, we'll see if this holds or not, or if they blast us straight down to the depths of hell here. Yeah, I can't tell. It's either this is the bottom or this is the bottom down here for the week. One or the other. I don't know which one it is. Well, not the week. If we bottom here. We're going to go down one more time this week. If we don't bottom here, uh, this is the weekly bottom right here. Uh, Q is being bought on the half hour right now. Haven't lost the, this half hour. We'll find out what happens here. It's 145. These next 15 minutes will tell you if we're going to roll to the downside or not. 
sellers trying to pin the market here for the next half hour bar so they can get a capitulation move to the downside. We'll see if they are successful or not. IWM correcting all the way down to its weekly trigger. Trading 194.54 down to its weekly trigger. Uh, Dixie right now. just not Dixie's not doing shit right now. HYG just blooding it, looking to trade 75.32. VIX 9-day coming into some resistance right now, so watch VIX 9-day down here. Look at your VIX 9... Okay, I got to show you guys something because you guys don't listen. <laughs> you guys don't listen. <laughs> do you see that yellow line right there? Why do I have that yellow line right there? Why do I have that yellow line right there? Let's find out why I have the yellow line right there. Why do I have the yellow line right there? Take a look at why. Right there, that's why. One, two, see how we're already up there right now? So you may get a little bit of a, you may get a little bit of a rip. You're either gonna get a capitulation move right now, woo! And then a swift turnaround. Or this is the bottom, and we're going to roll straight down, okay? Make sense? So you, so you guys understand that? You may or may not. <laughs> Just keep your eyes on that VIX 9-day. You can see right now they're trying to sell it down. You see them? Trying to pound this down right now. You see it right there? Trying to pound this back down. So be careful of a swift reversal at some point soon. Maintain your composure if you're a bear. We just walked this market down together. Uh, let's look at uh, HYG. Bears, the bear case here is HYG. Doing a little bit more blooding to the downside, so that would that would answer the question of a V-shaped recovery and more downside to come. Your downside target in SPX would be 501.28. Uh, but I would warn you here too, if you are a bear, if you wanted to leave a few runners on, you could. Uh, if you wanted to switch to some zero date puts that are outside the money. Uh, rather than being short. And the reason that I say that is because you're either going to see selling of puts and buying of calls, so we go up, or you're going to see something that's violent, like boom and straight up, and you might have called it right, but you'll be caught in it regardless. You'll be in puts, right? You'll be like, yahoo, everything's awesome. And they'll be bleeding them out before you ever get to sell them. So I would say if you wanted to do zero to eight puts here, I would say, let's say you bought a put for 10 cents or 20 cents, that you put a set price, uh, 40 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents, and you take the money and run. So just be watching for a V-shaped recovery. Trading 505.42, 505.40 right now. Keep your, I'm going to keep this HYG chart up for you down below so you can pay attention to it. It's on a 30-minute basis. I'm going to switch it to a... Uh, one minute basis so we can keep our eyes on it. There it is right there. I've got a little bit of risk on here, but not too much. All cheap shit, 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, that kind of stuff. Don't care if they die. I'll buy this one down here with actual size. So I'm either going either gonna to catch the rip higher or I'm going to catch it from down here. I don't care either way. Also, your uh, R4 and Five is uh, if you think that it's going to be a just disgusting bloodbath, 
is right here just so you can see that we'll leave that down below maybe they sell the clothes or something like that they can get us down to 501 and some change and then they go doom and gloom into the bell and that's the actual dip buy for turnaround tuesday this is scaring me right here i don't like this I uh, see how they've got a sell wall here now. This becomes red. Closing the doors on bulls. And then this right here becomes uh, closing the doors on bulls to the upside. Get that closer for you. I'm going to play some of this Israel stuff. Now you're actually betting that they are going to have success in things like advertising, uh, in Netflix games, in continuing to build out their international programming. All of those things uh, require capital. Uh, I've got a report here saying Israel's military chief of staff, there will be a response to Iran's attack towards Israel. Uh, what else we got here? Well, I shouldn't say easily. It could hit $1,000 a share. That we could uh, act on this is the white house israeli counterparts about what i said was iran never delivered a message giving us the time and the targets no 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 no, no timing i mean i want to be clear this whole narrative out there that iran passed us a message with what they were going to do is ridiculous thank you that iranian nuclear sites is a legitimate target uh, I, here i'm not going to get into targeting discussions here from the podium yeah, see. Back to Prime Minister, uh, is the White House satisfied with the way that the Iraqi government is reining in the militias in Iraq, considering they are one of the proxies of the Iranian regime? We're gonna we're gonna have an in depth discussion with the Prime Minister and his team about uh, the uh, continued activity. I said that this morning to you, where like um, Iran supposedly, I told you that was bullshit this morning. Uh, People are like, yeah, man, they told they told them where they were firing the rockets and the cruise missiles. I'm like, no, they fucking didn't. It was 10% of their missiles. They're not telegraphing where they're sending their shit. Prime Minister, about uh, the counter-ISIS mission in, in, in Iraq and its, and its potential future. When you said in the spirit of partnership, uh, we disagree with the United States, and he mentioned something like... No, he's saying that they never did that. ...for international law, to respect international law, international humanitarian law, protection of civilians, and diplomatic missions. <laughs> So he's hinting at the Israeli attack in Damascus. He's also hinting about not doing enough to respect international law. Is this a point of disagreement between you and the Iraqi government? You'll have to talk to the prime minister about what he meant by those comments. Uh, Iraq is a, a key partner, one we really value. We wouldn't be having this meeting today. He wouldn't be having meetings this week if it wasn't an important relationship. As I said, the president believe, believes that Iraq is critical to regional stability. Um, you said just now that um, this that Iran's attack was a spectacular and embarrassing failure. Do you, um, does the president believe that um, Israel should now take this as a win and show restraint? Yes. I know where the context of the question is coming in. Uh, during his conversation with the prime minister on Saturday night, uh, first of all, he congratulated the prime minister for the exceptional effort by the Israeli Defense Forces and, of course, commended, as you would expect the commander in chief to do, uh, the participation of U.S. forces in this coalition and the great work that was done. I mean, it's easy. To, uh, you know, I was looking some, looking at some of the video before I came out here that's uh, running on some of your networks, and it, you know, it's easy to look at that like it's some kind of a computer game, right? And it looks so simple, things getting knocked out of the sky. Let me nope. It's not simple. It is not simple. A lot of planning and preparation had to go into that. It is not simple. And the president talked to the prime minister about that. He also noted. No other nation can do what we did. Success, a military success. And that that success alone 
just for itself speaks volumes uh, about Israel standing in the region, that they, they don't stand alone, that a coalition came to help them defend themselves. It also says a lot about Israel's military superiority. Bullshit. That's all U.S. Iran's military inferiority when it came to this particular set of attacks. And the president urged the prime minister to think about what that success says all by itself to the rest of the region. He, he about tells you fucking be scared of the U.S. Thought does. This should not go further. That there's, you know, further all, all, all I'll say is that the president from the you can't hear it? beginning of this conflict in October 7th has been steadfast and consistent. My bad. I'll put it up right now. With Iran. We don't want to see a broader regional conflict. We will do what we have to do to defend Israel. The U.S. Uh, saying they will defend Israel no matter what. That's going to be up to the prime minister and the war cabinet to speak to. Your assessment of the administration. I'm not going to provide intelligence assessments from here. So as far as I know. Oh, please. We'd smote down. We, dude, you guys don't understand. We would fuck up all of these countries at the same time. There would be a clear win winner. You would literally snap your fingers and all three of those nations would be gone. Timeline for a Rafa and Gone. I show you not, dude. You're asking me a question that really should be asked to. <laughs> you don't know. Prime Minister, not not to. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. If you don't think that's true. You're at way out of your league saying that otherwise. <laughs> I, I, yes, way. Of we're talking to the Israelis all the time. Now, obviously, in the last I'm telling you. Hours, uh, particularly, the conversation has been about. You'd blink if you were from that country. It'd be gone. It's sad. Talk to them about. I don't condone it, but it's true. Um, and we expect, hope, uh, in, in coming days to be able to have yet another round of discussions with them about what their intentions are with respect to Rafa. But the focus, rightly, right now, is on what Iran just did. We're going to talk reality versus uh, Whatever the bullshit, right? I didn't know about what's going to happen next in the Middle East. Are there any fresh U.S. military? Not that I condone that. But in any way, shape, or form, but just like those 200 missiles being knocked out of the sky, that's the reality. <laughs> we have to stay in the reality um, in case something yes, did, did ever happen. We, we're always looking at force protection in the region. We're always looking at our force posture. We're always evaluating it based on the threats and the challenges. Uh, you can expect that Secretary Austin and the entire team over there at the Department of Defense is uh, uh, going to stay vigilant to whatever the threat might be. Thanks. Uh, you said a moment ago that um, it's ridiculous, this narrative that Iran provi provided some advance notice about yeah. specifics here. But fucking ridiculous. But hearing that from, you know, specifically <coughs> is U.S. ally, Turkey, U.S. partner, Iraq. That's where that information is coming from. No, we don't what care. Is discrepancy exactly that's happening? Saving face. I can't possibly answer that question, Trevor. All I'm telling you is it's nonsense. I, I mean, think about this for a minute. Can you imagine a, a world in which Iran would pick up the phone and say, hey, we're about to try to schwack Israel with 300 cruise missiles and drones. We just wanted to let you know it's coming. And oh, by the way, here's what we're going to hit. I'm sorry. It just didn't happen. I can't account for what sources might be telling you all about what they heard. I'm yeah, telling you dude. what we heard. And we're going to piss away 10% of our missile supply and tell you that shit is never happening. Into the details of. He said schwack. <laughs> Here's the targets, here's the time frame, here's the munitions we're going to put on target. And on that subject of communications with Iran generally, you've said without preconditions you're willing to sit down with North Korea. Does the same apply to Iran and to reopening some diplomatic If I was Korea, I'd be scared shitless, 100%. Do you want to elaborate on no. why that is? Okay. Um, so that's scared, I would just realize. To Iran, Iranian oil production is now higher than it was two years ago. Is there... A reason that you aren't taking more steps against Iranian oil exports, and does it have to do with domestic political pressures? No, they don't want to fucking create I mean, chaos, uh, man. You know, we don't preview sanctions, and I'm not going to start doing that today. Uh, yeah, except, dude. Uh, to note what I said in my... Nobody uh, wants to destabilize the Middle East, except for Iran. Iran wants... You guys know why Iran wants to just destabilize the Middle East? Because of a fucking two-state solution. You know that, right? And, uh, and hopefully Saudi Arabia, Jordan... Wants to create a two-state solution, Prices or, or, and Iran does not want that to happen. And whether you want to stop that uh, again, I won't get ahead of economic. All their old yeah. shit. Jesus Christ! You guys make so many excuses. Just knock fucking 200, 300 fucking missiles out of the sky. The U.S. official you can never win. Weekend, the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. <laughs> Lots of yabots always. Uh, notify the U.S. ahead of any potential response <laughs> to the Iran attack. You literally knock an ICBM out of the sky. You know how hard that is? It's so fucking hard. To the U.S. I'll just tell you that we. It's ridiculous. Are very close no, they don't. 
reports. They don't want the two-state solution either, 100%. Close contact with Saudi Arabia, uh, Jordan, they want the two-state solution. We have examples of it, though, like Syria. Um, what's the other nation? There's another nation that uh, they did a two-state solution with. Home unrestricted, and should the IDF pull back so they can do that? First of all, we don't consider it a dead letter. Uh, as far as we're concerned, there's a viable proposal on the table, and Hamas ought to take it. And uh, we're not letting up on the idea of negotiating for a hostage deal so we can get a ceasefire, so we can get more aid in. But that's still very much an active football in our, in our, uh, uh, in our heads. Um, and as for uh, movement north, we, uh, we, what we've talked to the Israelis about is— I mean, I'll be honest, like my own my Main Street hat, I would love to see Palestinians move to the United States. I know you guys don't want to hear that, but— Palestinians in Gaza. They need I mean, they get they catch so much shit from the entire Middle East. Thinking about doing in Rafa or anywhere else. They're like they're like the Irish uh, of the Middle East. They have to provide <laughs> venues for them to do that. They have to provide food, water, medicine, shelter. All that has to be baked in to whatever future military operations happen on the ground in Gaza. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the Irish of the Middle East. Should consider allowing. They really are. No one fucking. I mean, they get shit on by everybody, right? See them. We want to. That's true, right? For the is that not true? Security of the <laughs> yeah. million refugees that are now taking refuge down near Rafa with whatever baked into whatever military plans they might have for operations on the ground. On the ceasefire negotiation, think about it. Most officials said yesterday that the latest proposal included almost everything that Hamas had asked for. And so, how is who, it? That who? Who? What's the Irish's land? The Irish fucking moved to the U.S. and never looked back. <laughs> I don't know of a new proposal. Well, my cousin moved back to Ireland. Proposal on the table. <laughs> he married an Irish girl. Director Bill Burns <laughs> in Cairo a week or so ago. That the Israelis uh, uh, were able to get behind, and now it's time for Hamas to step up and take that deal. It will allow for dozens of the hostages, the most at-risk. Uh, yeah, we have to though. Uh, to get Nobody else can be the world police. We don't want to be. I don't think I would want to be the world police, but who who's going to be the world police? You got a country that's going to do it? That's what Hamas needs to take. You, you pick it. You pick it for me. Tell me who what country is going to be the leader. Did he receive any sort of a commitment from House Speaker Mike Johnson? It's a shitty situation all the way around, isn't it? National Security Supplemental Bill to the House floor this week. The whole thing sucks. You can't really win an argument, can you? Whatever his plans might be. Uh, certainly, we heard from Leader McConnell and from, uh, and from Leader Jeffries about the importance of yeah, come on. Let's be honest, right? And getting it and getting it on on its way. And as I said in my opening statement, we have a lot of Palestinians here in Detroit. They're awesome. You guys are doing good things. Good uh, going to school, working. Israel and Ukraine. There's no craziness. The streets aren't trashed. Fights, to be sure. <laughs> and everything's awesome. And everything's for fine. Even for their safety and security. And uh, USA is not the world police. Who the fuck runs NATO? Who's the commanding general of NATO right now? Do you know? And the best way to Do you know? Get that aid into the hands of the IDF and into the... You ever sail an ocean and see who's out there? Like, fucking U.S. Coast Guard's everywhere. I understand that that's the, your pressure. We are the world police. Okay, all right. Hold on. So we're the bully, right? Separately. Who do you recommend? I want an answer. Who do you recommend become the world police? Give me a country. Any country. We've seen proposed. We would we would oppose us. Yeah, me? No. <laughs> I don't think it's a job that anybody wants, but who should it be? If Israel retaliates against Iran for the U.S. support of Belgium, answer bluntly. I'm not. I would. I would vote Amsterdam or like Netherlands. Don't want to see a wider. Switzerland maybe, but they can't project that power, can they? We will continue to do what we have to do to help Israel defend itself. America, fuck yeah! I know. As far as I know, a decision that the War Cabinet hasn't even made. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, like, who would it be? Hypothetical, Gabe, that I'm just not going to entertain. You got to Russia? <laughs> John, has President Biden considered maybe beefing up the public <laughs> Iran posture to be more than just one word? <laughs> you're, you're referring to... We're talking John. circle arguments. Yeah. So let's talk about... <laughs> and they did it anyway. And let's talk so about what we did, Peter. Let's talk about don't and did. Let's talk about Saturday night. It should be all countries. It is right now, right? To some extent, we always have coalitions. And it is to some extent. He added military resources to the region right after. Yeah, that's the problem, right? It's likely the best scenario in a shit scenario. It's like a shit, it's a shitty scenario, but the best of the shittiest scenarios. 
missiles, fighter, uh, fighter squad, and I was able to shoot down drones. And that's what I know we suck at a lot of things. I mean, we do. We suck at a lot of fucking want. things. Let's talk about what did happen. And what did happen was Iraq. We do bad shit, too. Uh, we all do, right? Most countries do bad shit. It's kind of like, we're, who's the worst bad guy out there? Or the best bad, the best worst guy out there? To make sure that you can't. And they didn't. They <laughs> you know what I mean? An unprecedented amount of munitions. <laughs> it's like, I, you, you're like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Very little infrastructure. It was an embarrassing failure for... The bear's looking for the V-shaped recovery. Now that we know... They're looking for that one last push down here. We'll see if they can get it or not. Or if we reverse to the upside. About unfreezing billions. If we do reverse to the upside, there's still a chance for more down to come. During the president's administration. What unfreezing are you talking about? He unfroze billions of dollars. For there Iranian was a... leaders? Yeah. Really? I don't think so. Okay, so you first of all, say it's for humanitarian purposes, but doesn't that? But you don't um, believe me. Well, doesn't that free up money for them to spend on other stuff? Where do you get the money for an unprecedented number of munitions to to fire at Israel? So first of all, I'm betting if they're sitting in Tehran, they're taking it seriously when President Biden says he's going to defend Israel. We put skin in the game, a whole heck of a lot of it. Yeah, that's a pretty big Not statement there. We have to at least admit that, right? So I'm betting they're taking it pretty seriously. There was a report earlier at CBC saying that Israel would uh, respond without the U.S.'s help, and now the U.S. is saying uh, we won't help them with that response, but we will defend Israel no matter what, which is material to the market. Watching that account very, very closely to make sure that that's what happens. And you guys often defend all the trips to Delaware by saying the president is not on vacation. He's working. He can be the president from anywhere. So why Here, I'll get back on Saturday? Well, we Let me get you guys a link to the presser right now. Shortly after arriving, we got uh, better, firmer intelligence and information about the, the specific timing of what we expected to be uh, this Iranian attack. And the president didn't bat an eye before getting back on that helicopter. And if you want to watch this at home, you can. Here. All Saturday night in the Situation Room from mid-afternoon. There's a link right there. Getting real-time updates from General Carrillo and from his defense team all throughout the night, including calling Prime Minister Netanyahu right from the Situation Room. And as Kareem mentioned on Sunday, he was right back at it again, working the G7, calling King Abdullah. I don't know what else to tell you. He had a very busy full weekend. I want to warn you, too, we are still in sell the rip, so no matter what we do, even if we go up right now, uh, it's just another chance for sellers to sell off the half hour and hour trigger. We confirmed it earlier this morning on stream. Gaza, you'd said yeah. last week that you had 300 trucks on Wednesday. With the, with the weekends of yeah. this. Forgive disrupt. me, I don't know if uh, Kareem might have already briefed this out to you guys, but you know, over the last week or so, more than 2,000 trucks have gotten in. Um, and even throughout the course of the weekend, as Israel was dealing with a, uh, a quite daunting attack by Iran, they were still able to get some trucks into Gaza. Um, so in these early days after the previous phone call with Prime Minister Netanyahu, where the president talked about the need to... This downside move here is still valid, is by the way, so steak, saltia, or I don't know, frosty or whatever out there. We also said it's still not enough. The, the need is dire. And what we're going to be doing is watching for sustained commitment to doing that over time. But but thus far, there has been an increase in humanitarian assistance. Right. Just on the, on the timing of, the, of any type of warning. So are you look at Tesla? Yeah, sure. A U.S. partner, um, Switzerland, Oman, any of them, Turkey. Uh, Tesla. When do I expect uh, 140? Uh, it's either going to be time. Uh, either going to be time-based uh, or capitulation this week, maybe. From anybody else, as I said in my opening statement, that uh, that the, uh, that offered a specific time frame. It looks like they're trying. They're not even giving the chance of a squeeze higher to the weekly trigger. So just concretely, um, why would U.S. Weekly's now right there. Lie about passing along the Iranian messages about any forthcoming attack. Uh, look, I'm not. I'm not calling anybody a liar here. I'm telling you, from our perspective, what we knew and what we didn't know, and we were able uh, to help with uh, Israel's defenses because we I can guarantee. I can guarantee you guys. I know for a fucking fact that we have troops, small small groups of troops, our own efforts uh, surrounding Iran right now, while I'm monitoring everything that comes out of that country. The, the, the not monitoring, tracking to shoot down. It's it's it kind of boggles my mind that anybody would believe that's personal knowledge that i know that from from uh the united states who who
who they know. No, I'm not going to say anything else. Who, who they know is been very, very directly involved with helping Israel defend itself and very public about doing that right and there. detail the times and the targets. Look, this to me seems like a lot of, uh, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking kind of stuff. What it could have, should have. And, and maybe they want to make it appear like, you know, this was some sort of uh, small pinprick of an attack that they never meant to succeed. You can't throw that much metal in the air, which they did, uh, uh, in the time frame in which they did it, and convince anybody realistic that they, you weren't trying to cause casualties and you weren't calling, trying to cause damage. They oh, have. fuck no, they were. Just one more. Um, is the meeting with this Robbie? You're already fucking mine if you don't think that. Still, is that happening this week? Uh, I don't have a date for you. We're still trying to get uh, that nailed down, as I said earlier. We'd like to continue this. Starting to break support on S2, uh, retesting the low. House Majority Leader Scalise. Keep an eye right here. That uh, Speaker Johnson was negotiating. There's the low. With the White House modifications to the uh, Ukraine aid package. Are you, what is being negotiated? And uh, you just categorically said that the White House opposes standalone Israel uh, bill. That's right. Supplement. Are you also opposed to changes uh, to the... Watch out for a major downside move coming up here shortly. ...aid uh, uh, to a loan. I know it would make your jobs a lot easier if I negotiated this thing up here in public. No, I'm just... But I'm not going to do that. You're right. The president did have an opportunity to speak with Speaker Johnson and other congressional leaders, including... Uh, including uh, uh, McConnell and Jeffries, and I'm going to set some stops up here. That the best and the fastest way to stand by our allies and partners is for the House of Representatives to take up the bipartisan bill that the Senate passed. But are you also opposed to the modifications? And no stops for me. They just stay on. You oppose the standalone? I've answered the question. John, first of all, thank you for your dedication this weekend and keeping us all informed. I think we all saw more of you than our own families, which was real cool. Um, you certainly saw more of me than my family did. <laughs> and I'm adding more right now. I'm actually, I, I'm actually up to 100 calls in total. On Sunday that they but it's because they're so cheap. China and Iraq. Can you just detail, um, you know, some, give us some of the details on that? And does that represent a move forward in U.S.-China relations that you were able to cooperate on in forwarding this? Yeah, as I said earlier, I think I'll let uh, other countries speak to the, their participation and cooperation and the degree that, the, that they're comfortable doing that. Um, I can only speak for the United States and what we did. HYG still, still trailing to the downside. Says is. Uh, without getting into the specific contributions of other countries, as I said in my opening statement, it shows that Israel's not standing alone. That, I mean, that unlike Iran, which is increasingly isolated on the world stage, Israel has friends. Israel has uh, uh, great skill, great professionalism, great military capability, and that's not by accident. All of that comes from the support that they get, particularly from the United States, but other countries as well. And then, if the U.S., can, and, and allies can help shoot down Iranian drones over Israel. Why can't they do the same over Ukraine? Yeah, I knew this question was coming too. Look, different conflicts. Different conflicts, different airspace, different threat picture. Um, and uh, the president has been clear since the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine. The United States is not going to be involved in that, uh, that conflict uh, in a combat role, and uh, we haven't. We have been providing... Ukraine the tools that they need to help defend their airspace um, and unfortunately we can't do that right now because we don't have that national security supplemental funding that uh, that they so desperately need uh, the Syrian Christians are the indigenous people of Iraq um, and before liberation at about two and a half million and they're down to nearly 200,000 and just last month the uh, Iraqi Supreme Court uh, removed all of their uh, we had five seats in the Kurdish parliament for many decades, and those were renewed, were removed. Have you, has that come up in any of the discussions? Uh, 2.15 in the afternoon. Thank you, Corinne, and thank you, John, for all you did over the weekend. I have two questions. First, you mentioned the shipping of aid to Gaza from Israel. Do we have a U.S. consular official at the border who is confirming that the aid actually gets there? I'm not aware of a consular presence at the border, but uh, we're in, as I said, constant touch with our Israeli uh, counterparts. You know, we also have 
David Satterfield, who is the president's special envoy, for that exact purpose. And, uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's like Waldo. I mean, he's all over the place, constantly up and down, I mean, mm -hmm. making sure that that stuff is getting in and keeping the president and the whole team fully informed. And my other question is that given the recent developments with Iran, is the U.S. going to step up its contacts with the opposition to the current regime. Uh, Sellers got a new low over here, uh, implying that we, we are going down. So be very careful. I'm going to remove that so you can see it. The Azeri, the Kurds, and the Sunni who are in opposition. To be very careful of a big bloodbath coming up to the downside. The attacks. Price target 501.28. John, why is the U.S. not going to participate in a counteroffensive? Again, I think I've answered this question. Uh, the president had a good chat with the prime minister. We talked about the uh, incredible success that uh, that we and they achieved on Saturday night and, and the message that that success sends not only to the region but also to Iran as well. And as I've also said, as the president is... Uh, We're going to get a bloodbath here in just a few moments. We're not looking for a war with Iran. We're not looking to broaden and deepen this conflict in the region. How exactly is he trying to de-escalate this situation? Everything the president's been doing since the 7th of October has been designed... Uh, to try to de-escalate and to try to keep the conflict from widening and deepening. And that includes the moves that he made in the last 10, 12 days to add resources to the region so that we could help Israel better defend itself. And my goodness, it all paid off. I mean, instead of having 100 ballistic missiles land inside of Israel and cause untold damage to infrastructure and to human lives, none of that occurred. And the reason none of it occurred was because the president was ahead of the problem set. Right. Thanks. Uh, John, just a couple of follow-ups. Uh, the coalition that put together limiting uh, Iran's development of nuclear weapons, is that still solid in face of what's going on? As the President has said, we'd love nothing better than to be able to uh, solve uh, Iranian... Uh, I guess the big question that I have here is if they're, t if they're saying that they're going to... ...an option right now. Because if they're, if they're saying that they're going to, well if they're saying that they're going to, none of the diplomatic efforts were were defend. paying off, and so they're not going to help Israel in a, an offensive, but they're going to defend Israel. What does that mean? The president has also said that while he would prefer to deal with this threat diplomatically, he also will make sure that he's got options and choices available to him to ensure right there. that Iran never achieves a nuclear weapon. If you're gonna, if you're going to. If you're going to defend Israel no matter what, but not support them in an offensive, I mean, talking about a process that's just moribund right now, Brian. I mean, like, what are the implications of that? The other follow-up: the container ship. Was there? There have been rumors. Is there any? The container ship that was seized by Iran. Was there anything of a no? Uh, I want you to know that. Yeah, I'd refer you to the Pentagon on that. Uh, hold on here. So, I, finally, I. Well, Israel's defenses are not capable enough to take out ICBMs and cruise missiles uh, like that from Iran. This is all American. This is all American tech. Advanced knowledge because the president. They're going to lie to you about it though and claim it's Israeli. I never said uh, didn't have an to protect. What I, what I said was we didn't get that sense from the Iranians sending us a telegram. Right, but this is all F-35s. Just so you know, I don't know if you know that. We were These are F-35s that are shooting ICBMs out of the sky. I don't know if you know that or not. Oh, uh, that's all U.S. tech. No. I, 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 it's not about being told. I think you all understand. I am, I'm interested in the ramifications of vehicles through intelligence. I'm trying to think right now what does that mean. And to, glean in, to glean a picture uh, of what an adversary may or may not do. Now, sometimes it's right. Sometimes. Like Israel, Israel's, you guys understand that yeah. Israel is not an expeditionary force, too, right? So, like, Israel cannot, that level doesn't have the ability on our own and working with to invade another nation. Do you guys understand that? That Iran sent us an email. Have you guys ever seen an MRE from ID, an IDF MRE? Any of you guys? Didn't happen. I don't know. How many guys are in the army out there? How many? I bet, I bet most of the show is not ex-military. <laughs> um, like, Israel cannot invade another country. They don't have the ability to. They have the logistics for it. Um, their fucking MREs are fucking, <laughs> aren't, even, aren't even made for expeditionary. Like, they got a chow hall, like, right next to them. Like, 
uh, go further with an offensive response. I have, that I have, so I would I would assume that that would mean that if Israel's going to strike Iran, it would have to be with missiles, right? Uh, and it's the only thing I can think of. Response uh, to, to the uh, they couldn't hold Iran. Given I don't know if you know that or not, but they couldn't. Situation they're not. Their military is not built for it. Prime Minister Netanyahu. That's a fact. <laughs> uh, That's another fact. Uh, is a bit that you'd only know if you trained with IDF. <laughs> and his own situation. Does the president have faith that the prime so minister? I'm kind of scratching my head here. I'm assuming that Iran or, or Israel would need to respond in their abilities. And even then, do they have any offensive capabilities to get to Iran with missiles? I don't think that they have that much, do they? Get into Prime Minister Netanyahu's psychology or his political calculations. Do any of you know if they have? Um, if they have any projection reach, Israel? Prime Minister speak frequently, certainly as appropriate, and the president has been consistent publicly and privately that he doesn't want. I don't think they have that force protect uh, projection, do they? Any more than it than it already has, and he doesn't want to see a broader regional conflict, and he's certainly not. Yeah, they don't. Iran, and I am confident that the prime minister is aware of the president's concerns. Yeah, but new, uh, Iran's nukes are all on ICBMs, right? You said that. So I'm not really concerned about doing the things the president asked them to do, uh, but we really they're everything you can think of. Yeah, but it's not their tech, though. And you want to know how long is that time? I just talked to my brother, man. I already know what's going on. I can't talk that about would, some of this shit. That would imply that. <laughs> Look, some of this shit I can't say on stream. But the. Uh, the conditions that the president laid out. Iran does not have uh, nukes yet. That I don't know if I would think I wouldn't be surprised if they did, though. Conditions on the ground for humanitarian workers and uh, <coughs> getting into. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did change or the only thing that I don't think they would have is I doubt that they would have um, anything better than a layout cruise missile or an ICBM. The president is concerned. Yeah, so yeah, the conversation is going so fast. Uh, you know, that set of circumstances and Israel's defense uh, against uh, future attacks from uh, nation states such as Iran to be to be separate things that 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 when you see we need to see it sustained over time that that yeah that, the shit that they're doing is our tech 100 percent changes is still their iron the dome research is really good i'll give them that from um, the president's uh, as he calls it ironclad commitment to israeli security I've said many times that both things are and can be true. You can be a staunch defender of Israel's defense, and we are. You know, like as of Friday, I remember like as of Friday, we were. I remember as of like before Friday. Have some tough, candid Hold on here. With the way in which they are fighting. We'll turn this down a little bit. I remember pre-Friday, I was uh, I jumped on Reddit, and I was like, okay, let's go see what they're doing on World News, and people were like. Uh, or this has been going on for like six months or so. Are true, both things People are like, you don't want to mess with Iran. And you got to be, you gotta be careful. Iran's going to go out there and like send some fucking ICBMs over and fuck Israel up. Can do what we did Saturday. Be careful of these guys. Be careful of those guys. And I'm like, man. And then, of course, this goes, this happens. And everyone changes their tune. Like, whoa, wait a minute. It was because they told people or told the U.S. where they're going to launch their, their ICBMs. Well, wait a minute. It's like renegotiate the conversation. The fact is that can you imagine? Like this is the first time in history uh, a bunch of cruise missiles and ICBMs were sent somewhere and they were all knocked the fuck out of the sky. That's like bringing a fucking. Uh, that's like bringing a bow and arrow to a gunfight. And uh, it's it's a marked it's a marked difference. Is the, is the going we even to have to testing that's done. People are like, oh, you know what? They look at the facts. Um, he has two bilats. Uh, you know, that kind of tech is, that fifth that fifth generation tech is, warfare tech is, the fact that they were so accurate, uh, that high of a kill rate, priorities and shit's changed out there. That we have uh, with these two leaders, obviously two separate meetings, and continuing to, um, you know, continue to deliver for the American people. You guys shouldn't be broke at all. Uh, we've called every move, update literally, since like right now, Friday. <laughs> he has every up-down move. Um, and setting aside the fact that the former president is the is the current president's general election candidate or challenger for this year, um, what is the pre what is President Biden in the White House? I mean, you got to figure here too, right? Like, I dude, 
I ran can't move troops across <laughs> like going on. like what it takes logistically to like move troops like I, I do want to be super mindful even me commenting on that and it is an ongoing uh, case I just want to be super super mindful and not comment on an ongoing case even if it's asking an opinion about the, the you know the historic nature of what's happening all right Kareen is now on so I do want to be mindful and she's not the best speaker in my view candidate, uh, presidential candidate for 2020 I should say that mindful the president's going to continue to focus on uh on is this still live or no he's going to be traveling as you all know to yep still live he has two uh, important bilats today and it's always about the american people for this president and that's going to be his focus again mayor you just mentioned the president's heading to pennsylvania again this week he's making multiple visits to the yeah. state i think ussr had a, the ussr had a opportunity when the, when we had the ussr they had an opportunity to compete with us but they've got two lost decades coming days it's a three day uh they've, they haven't kept up with us they haven't uh china fakes it until they make it and they don't have china doesn't have a military history obviously uh, they need to they need to fight and lose a bunch of like battles to become battle hardened which they haven't if i was taiwan after seeing that shit this week i would be like Woo, we're fine very strong focus i would guarantee if i if i was a chinese war planner i'd be like all right let's get back to the drawing board Sit. Even with hypersonic missiles, I'd be like, no, 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 no. Swing. Uh, he'll travel to Philadelphia. What's happening right now? Are we, are we turning around right now? The campaign uh, will provide any details on that particular day. So it's Tuesday uh, and Thursday over the campaign. Prior. Well, no, on Friday, we told you on Friday, we said you have no trade with a baby account, didn't we? Uh, we said that on Friday. We said you've got no trade. So first, <laughs> We said that to you. <laughs> um, lawmakers in that country are set to vote on a bill that includes a death penalty or life in prison. For I don't know who I can bring on. Um, it's hard. Would like uh, such a bill harm U.S. ties? I mean, it's hard to bring on anyone that I know that's uh, they can't talk about anything. Like they can like infer shit. I got a friend right now, <laughs> like that's going on here and there and all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, just across you can't really talk about this shit. Has been so you can't. Very, it's very, you can't talk about it. I think very vocal. Like OPSEC, like just can't talk about that shit in public. Well, for supporting the LGBTQ uh, plus community and has spoken out about any type of humanitarian uh, or human rights, I should say, uh, any you know any human rights violations that we see. Oh, uh, you know, like is there a question if hypersonic missiles can overcome our tech? I think I I would be more afraid. Has again those. I would be more afraid of the demonstration you saw this weekend. I would be, or how, how do I say this? Before this weekend, I had that same question about hypersonic missiles. That demonstration this weekend, I'd be like, I'm like, eh, no, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to lean towards we have something. Uh, look, the president always raises human rights issues. If it warrants uh, with, a, a, with a leader, I'm going to be really mindful. We'll have a readout. Uh, obviously, of these two bilats, I'm, I can't say for sure that that's going to come up. But the it's less of a question than it was before this Friday. But I'll say that. Honest uh, conversation and where he stands, and we know where he stands uh, with that community, with LGBTQ plus community. Well, uh, so the idea behind hypersonic missiles, the problem with do you know what the problem with hypersonic missiles is? Uh, they still, they don't go like just like ICBMs, they have to go up. And the idea is they come down really fast. So if you're killing a missile here, um, I don't care if it's hypersonic or not. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Look, <laughs> still acts like an ICBM. Comes to EV, we've seen we've seen EV sales obviously rise, a record highs, uh, and EVs are more affordable than ever. Uh, that's a funny thing that you bring up. Like a uh, uh, proxies, right, are different than like Iran saying. Um, we're going to do this in three days because they're following the rules of the UN by announcing uh, we're going to attack you. We're giving you 72 hours. Uh, that's why I was, on Friday I was like, a year ago, I wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> Iran's best bet is to fight uh, asymmetrically, not symmetrically. With with these EV sales, obviously, and also uh, fighting symmetrically is um, a no no winner uh, against the U.S. 
jobs that are needed. You can't win uh, symmetrically with, against the U.S. in my view. Create jobs. Uh, I can't speak to Tesla's decision. They are a private, uh, obviously private company. But and I'm even, I'm even less, uh, I'm even less. Um, years, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's dealing with the climate crisis by. Um, I'm even less. Uh, I'm really. What you know? My big fear coming out. You know what's fucked up? I got something for you. Some. I'm gonna meet this. That's what's going to be the presence. Do you know what's really fucked up? The thing that scared me this weekend that I didn't see anyone talk about. Uh, the real fear that I had this week. If I came away with one fear this weekend, you know what it was? It was that the balance of power is offset right now, as of this prior weekend, where everyone, everyone thought that um, there would be a short mutual assured destruction that was most certainly cast in a doubt this weekend um if you were to look around the world um there was an idea that uh there would be a mutually assured destruction and this weekend put doubt cast doubt on that in my view that there could be a winner now i'm not war monitoring i'm not uh, for that but if you were to if you're to honestly look at this weekend there was a card, not all the cards, but flipping of a card saying, uh, no, uh, that's not, uh, that's not true. Um, and so when you see shit like that, that can lead to, um, an imbalance of power that is very dangerous, uh, an un, like an unintended consequence. Um, you, most, most, nucle most nuclear, um, strategy involves some form of, um, mutually assured uh, uh, destruction, right? You have to have that so that nobody ever launches a nuclear uh, weapon. Uh, you don't want countries have you want you don't want countries uh, having the ability to uh, cancel that stuff out, do you? I don't. Um, so I was a little scared of that this weekend. I didn't discuss that part of it on Twitter, but if I was left with one thing this weekend that no one, I, I haven't seen anyone say that. Um, yeah, I bought some zero dates for like uh, 20 cents, and then I bought some other ones for uh, 15 cents, and then I bought some more for six and five cents. So I'm just zero, I'm just like hammering the buy button for a squeeze higher. I'm just DCA in this whole thing. Uh, I'm not long the market in any um, way that's um, uh, like, hey, this is the bottom. I would really like to buy it lower, uh, but I just keep hammering the buy button on calls. I'm just slamming the buy button. They're all cheap, so. And I'm not unwilling to buy weeklies because they're expensive as fuck. I'm unwilling to buy uh, one dates because they're expensive as fuck. I'm unwilling to buy. I've look, I just looked, and I'm like, I'm not buying two, $2 calls right now for tomorrow. Sorry. Uh, 30 Delta fucking calls for two bucks. Lick my balls. <clears throat> I think that's the only way you win, right? The only way you win against the United States is um, not fighting with traditional warfare. It's the only way that you actually win. And I'm, I don't condone it. I don't think they should do it uh, because the response is not equal. Think about that. When you fight some, when you fight like, hey, I'm warning you, I'm going to war with you, the U.S. will fight you uh, toe to toe. And if anything, you may even get the U.S. not responding in kind, which we saw this weekend, right? You saw Iran say we're going to send over. Matter of fact, they just admitted it was 300, right? It wasn't even two. He just said 300. So if you were to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the United States and there was no loss of life, the United States will not retaliate. That's good. Now, when you fight against the United States um, uh, uh, asymmetrically, right, we know what happens there, right? And I, and that's no fun, right? Um, how many how many lives were lost during 9/11? Uh, I don't know the number. Was it 15 to 200, right? Somewhere in there, 1500 to 2000 people, I think. I could be wrong on that number, but off the top of my head, without looking it up, uh, somewhere in there. How many people died because of that? Was it 3,000? Okay, so how many people died in relationship to the loss of 3,000 lives? If you ballparked it. Now, what's, what's, the, what's the inverse of that? So when, once we lost that, that 3,000 lives, how many? Tens of thousands? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Million? Between Afghanistan and Iraq? 
million people. Easy million people. Between civilians and combatants, probably killed a million people or close to it. Low end, uh, six to 800,000. High end, probably a million people. So 3,000 uh, response million, or let's call it, let's, we'll, let's go low end. Let's call it uh, 600,000. It doesn't matter, does it? So you see the difference in um, responses to uh, that warfare. It could be, I, would, I think it's, if you were to start Kamel saying millions, I would bet that indirectly it's closer to a million. Um, closer to a million indirectly. Where are we going, boys and girls? What's that big red bar up there? Oh, yeah, I'm making money. <laughs> I don't want to look at it yet. <laughs> All right, what do we got to look at to the upside? Let's see what happens. Let's, let's take a look and see what we got. Uh, get rid of that because that's the that's the young Jim Bros down there. And let's uh, reevaluate where we are. We got a little tick right here for buyers try to get past. We got another one right here in the five minute trigger. Um. And you don't want to, I don't want to see that. Like, I don't want to see, um, I'm saying their best bet is to do that um, because they could do some real damage. But ultimately, what happens? Okay, here's where the real sellers are. We know where they are. They're up here, right? They're teeing off on the, on the half hour trigger and the hourly trigger. We know where they are. Uh, you've got a yellow box right here. Bing. And we're going to, I'm going to say to you, best expectation for bulls here is probably something like this. And maybe a nice squeeze right there. By the time we get there, you will likely see the half hour trigger. Boom. What's that? Well, we'll do it together. Ready? Time is right now. 237. You ready? Three o'clock. 3.30. 4 p.m. So best case scenario for for bulls, get up here to the close. Right around there. Best case scenario for bulls today. And I do think that we're not done going down. I just don't know if it's gonna get finished today. That's best <coughs> best case scenario for bulls. Yeah, the gym bros. The gym bros are right here. <laughs> the big old gym bros are up in this piece, right up in this thing right here. And they're coming down to meet you. They'll be down there to say hello in just a little bit. Uh, we played music earlier. Um, now I don't, I don't condone if Iran was to do something like that at all, but because you know what the response to that is, right? The response to that is nothing. You ever, you know, too young to, or <laughs> too young to go to the desert, too old, to, too old to go to the desert, just right to go to the desert. And we don't want to see that, right? You don't want to see us like in a quagmire in the Middle East, do you? I don't think you do. It's, it's really, truly no fun. You get all patriotic. Um, you do. That's what happens. You get super patriotic. You go over there. You, you, you go over there wanting to, like, get some, like, get some, get some payback and all that shit. And then, like, five years passes, you know, and then it becomes bullshit for oil. Uh, it's all, then it becomes oil and logistics, securing wells and all that other stupid shit. Making inroads, see so a future contracts. Then it becomes a quagmire. We were never actually there to rebuild shit. Then they tell you that they were there to rebuild shit and they actually weren't. Um, yeah. War is bullshit. 
Uh, it really, truly is. Uh, my own daughters, uh, my oldest daughter thought about joining the military, and I've begged her not to. Uh, I can't stop her if she does, uh, but I have begged her not to. Bulls have to defend right here. Uh, I would not want my daughters in the military. I guess if they were going to join the I'd prefer my daughters to uh, join Peace Corps or Teach America. Um, I'd prefer them to volunteer, uh, maybe for like the park system or some kind of like volunteer. I want them to serve, but I don't want them to serve uh, in the military. Uh, mostly because of uh, you never recover from it. Uh, you never really truly do. Um, some people's um after some some people never come that they, they like their their life is fucked. Some people can lock that shit up and move on in life, but you still you're still locking it up. Uh, out of the box, in the box, right? You guys know about that if you're if you're a veteran, you know about being put in the box for the civilians, or sometimes you come out of the box and you're not supposed to. But you never truly, and I don't want my daughters to go through that. So I'd rather they just, uh, but I do believe in selfless service. I believe in uh, everything I was taught in the Army. And um, I'm hoping that they have, their, have the ability to, to learn that stuff without uh, fighting in war. And I think there's avenues for you to learn that stuff without joining the military. No, they can serve our country. There's a whole bunch of ways they can serve our country. I think I think it's okay to serve your country and your people. It's okay to serve other people, all that kind of stuff. I like there's this like thing for me personally where like if you um like selfless service to your every person or your every man or every woman is an important lesson in life to be able to give of yourself with no expectation of anything in return. Um, to be a part of like uh cleaning up trash on the side of the road, believe it or not, or um there's an ownership part of that, like, um, that's important, I think, in life. Caring about your fellow man, caring about the place that you live, caring about um, people from other places. Um, you can't always identify with people, but you can have compassion through experience with that. I find that in Detroit a lot, you know. Um, as a matter of, yeah, I think I find that in Detroit a lot. My kids have that experience here in Detroit, and I think that's important. Um, they've made lifelong friends with people that they wouldn't normally. You know, if my kids, my kids grew up in uh, mountain towns, um, and had they spent their entire life in a bubble, they would have no, um, uh, no, no um, exposure to real life for a lot of people. Uh, and experiences and things and stuff like that. That's a fucking Luli. Uh, spread positivity. Not only that, lifelong friendships, uh, like lifelong relationships with people that they otherwise wouldn't have had. It's very important. Um, yeah, it can be a lot of things. The pick, yeah, it's, uh, working in an old folks home. Um, all those things are important in life. Um, they really are. They really do shape you as a human. They really do shape you. Uh, there are some positive ways to to have that happen. There's not other things you can do too, like uh, if you like hike a long trail or something. Um, if you were to go sailing, I don't know, across the Great Lakes or down the coast or up the coast, you learn what uh, pain is, uh, perseverance. You learn about uh, what the human can, the human can actually accomplish in life. Um, like what can I do and what can't I do? A lot of kids, you remember when you're a ch child and you don't, you're like, oh man, um, I suck at I sucked at baseball. I sucked at uh, volleyball. I sucked at um, this, that, and the other thing. And there are ways for you though to. There are things that you can do that the human experience 
um, anybody can do. But if you do it, like if you do it, like with commitment, um, you'll realize that uh, you can you can with enough work, hard work, and, and perseverance uh, accomplish things that uh, might not be soccer, right? Your uh, your wife, are you? Will you be in Troy too, or no, James? Yeah, dude. Um, you gotta go to Detroit, man. Have her go to Detroit, dude. Have her uh, have have her eat at um. Hold on here. Um, new favorite place right now. Well, there's a couple things. Uh, if she's in Troy, dude. You got to get to Detroit. Uh, Troy's food scene's kind of meh, but Detroit's food food scene is really good and it's accessible. Uh, it's it's way more it's way more way more accessible than like Oakland or New York. Uh, Chicago's pretty accessible too, but uh, what I like about Detroit is that it's like cheap and you can get a reservation. Like you can get a reservation inside of a um, uh, James Beard restaurant here any night of the week. Uh, Sister Pie is the first thing I'd recommend. Sister Pie. They make unbelievable um, pastries, desserts, cookies, pies and stuff. Well, they're Sister Pie. Um, another one that I would recommend right now. Uh, what's the other one? It's not Umi. Is it called Umi? Um, I always forget the name of this place. Ima. Ima Izakaya. Ima Izakaya. Um, I'm I M A, I Z, A K A Y, banging. Um, and then for breakfast, uh, I showed you the pictures of Dime Store. Um, yeah, we're in the finger trap right now. Yeah, that place is banging. <laughs> I would also recommend if she's with friends or family to seek out a um, any of the um, legendary blues and uh, jazz bars in the city. They're just like they were 50, 60 years ago. Uh, what else would I, would I seek out? Uh, I'll be, I mean, like Michigan's a great state. But in my view, the reason you come to Michigan is because of Detroit. Like you come to Michigan for Detroit. It's Detroit. It's the like the, it's like it's the home of all kinds of stuff. Like um, it's the home of a uh, of a uh, techno man. It's like the home of um, Motown. Traverse City is awesome in the summertime. If she comes ever in the summertime, go out to uh, Torch Lake. Yeah, dude, disco. Do they had, like live TV shows? People come dance on TV. Um, back in the seventies and shit like that. I went to um, I went to one place recently that was on. I, it was really good. I went to Selden Standard, but it was boring. It was great, but it was boring. I've had that food elsewhere in the country. I have had that food elsewhere in the country twenty years ago. Um, so some of the restaurants here can can be boring sometimes, and a lot of American cuisine is like that right now. Uh, what else? Oh, oh, hold on. There's a um. Here's another recommendation. This is a good one. Uh, Louis Pizza. Check out Louis Pizza. That place is making probably the best Detroit style pizza right now, period. Uh, Louis Pizza in, in Detroit. There's another one. Don't miss that one. Dude, the thing. Dude, what do we call this right here? What is this? What are they doing? What is this? Killing Callville? Oh. Oh. oh, I got to do this with you guys till 4 p.m. Oh. This is going to be the thing where we squeeze up at uh, four, three, four, what are you going to do? Squeeze at 354? Oh. My eyes are going to bleed now. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're going to do.
We're going to pin the market until 350. You're going to take the hedge off. We're going to buy the cash market, right? We're dealers now. We're going to buy it. We're going to burn all the calls, right? <laughs> We're going to squeeze it up the last five minutes. Yeah, they'll bring it up. It's just not going to be till later. It's going to suck. Oh. Me too. Like, just blast that shit down. I'm with you on that. Like, just how about give me 495 today? Just make it easy. I'm going to have to sit here all day long now. I kid you. I'm going to say this to you. If we go back up here, right? I'm out. <laughs> I'll leave the stream up. I'm going to go play golf. <laughs> I can't do this all day long. Can't. I can't. I can't do these days with you. When, it, when we start doing this shit, I can't do it. <laughs> Can't do like the, the diddle in the middle. <laughs> no, no, dealers are gonna buy all this shit back. This it's gonna be an eye bleeder. It's uh two fifty one in the afternoon, and then they're gonna bleed it out for like fifty five minutes. Please, please burn into the clothes, or squeeze up to the hourly trigger. I don't care. Do anything. Just don't do the sideways shit. <laughs> yeah, James, those are all good picks, dude. Uh, those are all bangers. Like, every time, baller service, baller food, never a problem. All of them. All, every one of those things are bangers. Never a bad time. That's like service down to um, service down to food, down to wine, whatever she's doing. Can't miss, and they're they're all affordable. All of them are affordable. And if she ever has a chance, this is gonna sound crazy. Uh, you guys are not gonna want to hear this. If you ask anybody from Detroit, get some shawarma uh, down in Dearborn. Uh, get some shawarma. Shawarma's badass too. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You're getting all touchy-feely. I bet you're going to break. Please. I dare you to break. I want you to break. Please. Please, I'm begging. Please break to the downside. I'm actually begging you to break to the downside. Please. I don't believe you. I think you're lying. I think you're a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm begging you, please break to the downside. I don't believe you. I think you're a fucking liar, Price. <laughs> I know, like, please. Please, just blood it. Blood it straight to the depths of hell, please. <laughs> please, 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 please. The more blood, the better. <laughs> I know I gotta try, right? <laughs> I'm, like, straight up begging here. Any direction but here. I don't care if you go up to the moon. I don't care if you go to the zeros. I don't care if you get out of 300 today. Because I don't believe you. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Please, let's make a move. Oh, they're not going to do it, dude. They're going to burn all this shit. Uh, no, we're not that. We're not there yet. Sorry. You're wrong. We're not there. We're not on a abandoned ship yet. <laughs> we're not on a abandoned ship. They're not going to give it to you like that. Sorry, C. Tazo. You're not going straight down. No, Tazo, you're not going down 500 points in three hours. Sorry. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> no. <laughs> you 
Even if you broke below that, you'd have to reject it. It's like another 200 points down, bro. No, <laughs> I'm not allowing you to spread doom. <laughs> or nobody else either. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you guys earlier if you're gonna sell the half hour trigger. I didn't get a, I didn't get a peep in the chat. <laughs> now you're all doomed up and you're all wanting to fucking sell this. This is like when I tell fucking uh, Tesla just to stop on a high Tesla high. I'm like, go away. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in a bunch of cheap ass calls for 4 p.m. We'll see if they run it up into the bell. I got some I got some lottos on for today. God, I hate these fucking days. I hate when we come into like, I hate when we come to the finger trap. We got to sit here for like an hour or two and do nothing. Should I just get a bear out? I'm going to go play golf today, by the way. I suck at golf. I play golf and uh, tennis in the springtime. I don't play golf in the summer or uh, tennis because it gets too fucking hot. Like, right now is, like, the perfect time of year to play golf. Any of you guys watch golf this week? And I didn't get a chance to watch any golf. I don't normally watch it. Sweet. Right on, James. I think you'll like it around here, man. It's easy. I suck. Like, I don't take it seriously. I should, and I don't. And I, I got to tell you guys, I hate. Um, so, like, I, I don't mind, like, golf outings for fun. But I can't stand golf as, like, a uh, business uh, deal. I can't stand golf as a business deal. I refuse to I refuse to play golf for business deals. Always have, always will. Lawn bowling, right on. The uh only if we were so lucky if we were to crash right there. <laughs> I can't do it. I don't I don't play golf enough to um compete in like a business sense. Oh, yeah, a little crash, huh? Oh, yeah, fuck you, Captain. <laughs> You're going to stay to the bitter fucking end. <laughs> Get fucked, Captain Jim James. Well, even, so I got a close friend of mine that was really good. He was on golf team and shit. He was in golf team in college. And he fucking hates it, too. You guys know him. He's one of our people here. And he's like, I fucking hate it, too. I'm like, I do, too. Like, I got to keep up with the fucking clubs and the bag and I don't have the time for it. It's not my thing. When people want to do that shit with me for like, for like, if he cheats, you know he's going to be a bad business partner. I'm like, okay, fuck it. Let's go uh, rock climbing together. Let's go skiing together, bro. You can cheat on the fucking backside of a mountain with me. <laughs> hey, how many days are we with RGF right now until we hit 30 days? How many sessions has it been so far? Can you count? I haven't count. It was like nine sessions last week. We had like nine sessions left or something. Yeah, so the, how I play golf is bear golf. Like I'll, I'll go out and I'll, um, I try to go with people that just want to have fun. I'll drop, if we're like a water hazard or something, I'll drop a couple drop balls, take a couple shots at the water. Uh, try to have fun. Best ball wins. Um, bear golf. Yeah, fuck yeah, bear golf rules. I'm there to have fun, dude. I'm not there to have fucking stress. I'm not there. To, I'm not retired, so I'm not there to have like competition with uh, some other old man. Be like, yeah, fuck you, hundred buck. Oh, I like hundred buck golf. Uh, I like I like gambling with golf. Uh, that's fun. If it's if it's fun with friends and you're not trying to shit on somebody, I'm down with that. Yeah, dude, that's good stuff. <laughs> Thanks, James. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, 
yeah dude love playing sand traps dude love playing like i like all that like i have fun playing golf uh same thing with so i play tennis right i'm actually a pretty good tennis player even today and um but i don't so we, we play golf or, or we play tennis and we do push-ups if if the volley ends even whether you won or lost you do put you're the one that does push-ups <laughs> i kid you not we do push-ups we play go uh, tennis <laughs> well our rule is like we i, I love volleying and golf and uh tennis right like i love the i love the back and forth action of tennis and so i'm like well uh if you're gonna fuck around trying to like you know like uh, like i'm there to have fun so i'm not there to like compete i was a competitor all my life i don't need that shit anymore I was a competitor in a competitor in sports too, and I don't need it anymore. Mm. Yeah, we win a shit ton of those lottos around here, though, don't we? Even if these fucking things burn, we do these zero day lottos is insane. <laughs> <laughs> Zero date lotto trades. Woo! 40 fucking points in five minutes. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything that I compete in right now. Uh, I can't think of anything. I try not to. Like, I got kids, man. Like, um, as a matter of fact, dude, I was looking at the um, one of that bike trip with the, with the family the other day. And I was talking to my kids and wife yesterday, and I was like, or I was like this. So there's a there's a trail. For, I'm gonna come see Winky, by the way. Winky, I'm coming to see you. Um, yeah, maybe trading is probably the most competitive thing I do right now. Um, so I want to go do uh, Ragbri in Iowa, and I'm unsure if I want to do it. I'd have to get an electric bike. Or I'd have to build an electric bike. And um, I'm not quite there yet. If I want to or don't. I'm like committed to it, but I want to make sure I want to do it. <coughs> I definitely don't want to ride it without an electric bike. I don't want to kill myself. Um, it wouldn't be enjoyable. I'd rather go from like town to town and have fun and buddy ride and all that shit. So I did that ride yesterday. And I don't know what that was, maybe 15 or 20 miles with nice stops along the way. And that felt good. Uh, that, that felt really good. But I, um, I asked my family yesterday, I was like, would you want to do a trip? There's a trail from uh, Columbus to Cleveland. Or is it Columbus? Cincinnati no I think it's Cincinnati then Columbus then Cleveland Columbus Cincinnati Cl no I, th I think it's Columbus then Cincinnati then Cleveland it's like uh 360 miles but you can do just like the Cincy to Columbus part in a weekend so I'm like oh do you guys want to try that trip it's like credit card bike packing you like you like go from town to town you eat some food Put some miles on, jump in a river or a lake. They're trying it right now, right? They're trying to get us down to the clothes. Watch out for a bleed off into the clothes down here. They're going to try to take us downtown here. If they take us down below, I am going to put some size on down here. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, and I wanted to take that trip and then uh, Memorial Day weekend. So Memorial Day weekend, I spend with... Um, my daughters usually i don't go do the walmart warrior bullshit i usually just disappear and we do, do a hard trip um so this year i think we're gonna go do a bike ride through cincinnati or it's through ohio for that weekend and um what we'll end up doing is uh just making a decision that weekend if we're going to do rag bry this summer because i don't want my ass to hurt i don't want to ride that's like 50 to 100 miles a day for seven straight days that's some fucking shit right there. Even with an electric bike, that shit's going to be a bitch. It ain't going to be easy. 
trying to staircase us down into the close. Uh, my calls are fucking two fucking pennies. Worthless. I might buy some more if they don't. If they can't get this down here. Might buy some more if time matters here. If it's like if it's like three fifty five or something. I might if they haven't done shit at three fifty five. I might try to buy some more zero dates there. Uh, that trail that trail is amazing. I heard it is. I heard it's badass. I heard that trail is like easy riding, generally flat, um, and then the towns in between are badass. And uh, there's like places to swim and. Um, you can uh, you can camp along the trail, and then you can also get Airbnbs and hotels and shit. Like a nice hot tub at nighttime would be nice. You know, if I do it in Memorial Day, or Memorial Day weekend, it's not like muggy like the summer months. Ohio can be a shithole in the summer. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be swinging. I don't think you want to swing calls here unless you get the capitulation at 501. Uh, there's a if you don't, I want to. Oh, all right, we're gonna talk about something here. We're gonna chat here. We gotta talk for the close before I do the, the market brief for tonight. We gotta chat. Should have said something about this. Okay. So <clears throat> I want you to know a few things here. Move this to the side. I want you to know a few things here. So tomorrow is Tuesday, right? Uh, there is a high probability uh, that this is a bottom, right? Uh, this 506 is a major bottom. I realize that there are a lot of people out there calling for a major correction, uh, but there's a high probability that this is actually the bottom. I know that you don't believe that. Uh, there's a good probability of it. So uh, what I'm going to say to you, though, is this. If they were to, if they were to blood this down in the close, there's a great, uh, there's a great dip buy down there, like a good one with size. There's an outstanding dip buy. You're, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not fucking selling 500. You can lick my balls on that one. So you're not waking up tomorrow below 500 at fucking 450 or anything stupid like that. I'm sorry. So there's a great dip buy though at the end of the day down here. Now if they don't do this right. If they don't do this, there's a high probability of some kind of a flat or up with a down move uh, for the actual dip buy on Tuesday. That's turnaround Tuesday, right? So if you were like, well, I'm long here or something like that, I understand it. Like you want to put a little bit of risk on for a squeeze up in the bell. I understand that. Uh, but I wouldn't have a conviction trade here for an upside move right where we are right now. Like, hey, I'm long. Uh, because when you get these capitulation moves, whether they're tomorrow or today, they usually reset options. So just be conscious of that if they do it right now or if they do it at the bell or if they do it tomorrow. Uh, you might have one more leg to contend with. So just be conscious of it uh, into tomorrow. So the expectations here. Um, at worst case scenario, at worst case scenario, you're going to have a kick-ass uh, dip by to the upside like major. Like way up here, major upside dip buy. Um, if you don't get the capitulation moving to the close today, if you don't get the capitulation uh, in the close, I am going to expect uh, some kind of a move up, even if it's only right here, and then a move up in futures, and they'll sell this down to get the capitulation tomorrow uh, to go to the upside. Uh, now, if we, uh, what else do I want to say that, about this? My um, uh, I'm looking for way higher highs here, not lower lows uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm not bared up right now for market crash, market doom, uh, CTAs selling the market down to October, any of that nonsense uh, at all at this point. Uh, we have not lost support in the uh, market yet. Uh, you might, you'll be saying when we're at four, you'll, you'll say at four of 95 that we have too. Down here, you'll say that we do, but we don't. Uh, we have not lost the market yet. So if we do lose the market, though, uh, I'll be with you. We are, though, sell the rip. So we are not buyers of the dip. You should not be buying the dip unless it's on a squeeze play. If you're more comfortable uh, 
buying the dip in a sell the rip environments. I understand that bears do that shit because that bears that don't like uh, sellers that don't like to buy the uh, buy the dip will live uh, and survive in those environments by um, buying or selling pullbacks on highs. And I can respect that and understand it. But I want you to realize, uh, as we said this morning, that we have switched from buy the dip to sell the rip. Until that situation changes, you have no business saying like, oh, this is the bottom. Does that make sense? Don't be timing bottoms until we get a real one. And we are not at bottom likely until we capitulate down below at 500 or 495. Now, how do you know if uh, conditions change where you can go back to uh, a buy the dip scenario? And I'm going to show you right now. You would need to see price improve currently today. You would need to, see, need to see price get above the hourly trigger. You would need to see the hourly trigger go up and above the daily trigger. This is not by the dip yet either. You would actually need to go above, come back down to the hourly trigger, and get a new high. So bulls have a shit ton. Bulls have a shit ton uh, of work they have to do. I have to warn you of that. If you're a bull, you have a bunch, a bunch of work to do. And this was the confirmation this morning right here. The sell today. So we went into Friday, right? Let's go back to Friday and just watch what happened on Friday here. There's Monday right there. And this is a Friday close right here. So if you remember when we're in Friday close, right? So if you remember when we were on Friday close, right? We came in here and we said, matter of fact, we're on this low right here. And I said to you, if you're going to buy puts, at least wait until the close, right? Buy something dirt cheap, right? Like penny puts for Monday in case there is anything material that comes, that comes into place. Otherwise, we should go higher and confirm uh, a corrective uh, move that's going to come, right? Uh, and we did that, didn't we? Woke up this morning, and bam, we were up here. What do we do at 9 a.m.? Take the money and run, right? Take the money and run. We come back down, and you automatically see here by 10 a.m., 12 o'clock, we begin to reject the hour and half hour trigger. And we were here in stream going, you know, this is where you need to be as a seller to confirm the correction. And this was the confirmation right here of a correction, okay, a corrective action. So from this point forward, you are a seller of rips on this hour, hour and half hour trigger. Every time you get a down move, a, a big down move like this, I could flip this chart upside down and you'll then understand. Every time we get a nice big fat move down like this, right, beautiful, gorgeous downside move, you're going to wait for the squeeze back up until we get back to this half hour trigger and this daily trigger, and we're going to sell it down again. Does that make sense? You get me? Boom. One, two, and then three to 495. Does that make sense to you? So if we don't get the, the expectation here is we're going to trade 495. So you can't come back and say, well, cap, this is the bottom. If it is the bottom, you need for price to squeeze above the hourly trigger, break above the daily trigger, and then have improvement with the hourly above here, right? Get a new high. And only then on the back test can you be a bull buying a supportive dip. Does that make sense to you guys out there? I hope that it does. Um, so if we're in a corrective nature right now, if we're in a corrective stance right now, we are selling the half hour and hourly trigger. Any return to this half hour and hourly trigger is where you're a seller. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you guys. Now, if we capitulate down here and this move down to the 500, I am going to expect a giant squeeze up here. If you're a bull and you only want to live in the squeezes in a bull and a bear correction, you have to wait for each one of these things for a capitulation move. Does that make sense to you? I hope that it does. There's a fair chance of this coming down in the overnight if you don't get the capitulation today. And you'll be trying to buy a dip, and they'll come up at 4 a.m. tomorrow, 6 a.m., and they're going to blast your ass down uh, to 500. And that would have been 
your um, dip by in a corrective environment. If you're a bear, if you are a bear, and you, let's say you missed this above, you weren't on the stream with us earlier this morning, you are kind of shit out of luck. You are at the not quite top part. If this chart was flipped over and we do go down here, that would still be, you're, you're kind of like, eh, it's the wrong fucking place. So you're waiting if you're a bear for this, wherever this winds up being, whenever price attracts back to the half hour trigger, uh, and you'll sell that shit back down to the depths of hell once again. Now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with one important thing. <laughs> one important thing. I will see you at the next half hour and hourly trigger, and you need to put some, uh, some risk on there as a seller. That's where you're putting your risk on with stops above it. From this point forward, you are selling uh, this half hour and hourly trigger. Do not drink the Kool-Aid down here. <coughs> Think about this if I flip this upside down, this chart. This is like a bull. This is like a day for the bulls. Woo-hoo, yeah, baby. Moving on up, trend day to the upside, right? And we're going to this close. And the wrong bulls are buying that. And they op we wake up tomorrow morning, right? And we have a pullback immediately to the hourly trigger, right? You know what I'm saying? So be very careful. Think of this in an inverse relationship here. Uh, if you're if you're turning into a seller. So if, so if you were a bear, and we were flipping this chart upside down, and we blooded down to the close, you'd be trying to short that tomorrow, wouldn't you? Right. So that you're surviving as a bear, right? For the next leg down. All right. I think that's enough until you get the brief for tonight. I think that's enough. And let me see if I can pull this up for you. And there it is right there. S3 50128 right here. I got to go pee, man. I've been sitting here since 930 with you guys. Well, 1030, but I was here anyways doing other shit. You already made the Kool-Aid. <laughs> well, you do you. I'm buying the fuck out of this clothes. <laughs> I want your money. <laughs> I want to steal it from you. <laughs> uh, positioning right now. One minute. Five minute. 30 minute. Gnarly trigger. Max bearish right now. setting up a trade tomorrow give me the lows baby yeah I'm, I'm gonna try to buy the clothes if i can if we can get low enough i will if we can like staircase this shit down definitely buying that it's like the creepy crawly up the wally in reverse Let me get a beer real quick. I'll be right back. I have to get a quick piss. I'll, I'll, I want to draw that out for you. One, two, right down there. Give me like five minutes. I'm going to get a beer and take a, take a piss. Uh, Israel just responded. They're going to attack soon. That's not good for, for bulls. I'll be right back. Give me like five minutes. I'm going I'm to play golf today. I can't wait.
I'll put some music on. Hold on, I grabbed the bear, but I didn't. Oh, oh, dude, wait a minute. I'm going to put some uh, bear music on for you but now that we have pretzel. We had this on earlier. Give me just five minutes. Why am I not like, why can't I see pretzel? Pretzel, pretzel's UI kind of sucks. Yeah, it totally sucks. It's a it, UI when you show up really sucks for a company this big. We're going to do, um, we're going to do uh bear doom again. We're going to turn it on low. Can I put it on shuffle? Can I no shuffling? The UI is kind of weird. It's duh, the Good track.
Jesus, that's loud. Bears, baby. Bears going downtown today, baby. Oh, look at that down there. Look at that down there at SPX. Where's Tazo? Yeah, Tazo, there you go, brother, right there. Doom and gloom. Any rejection of 50-50, and we get some real doom. Wait a minute. Are you serious? Are you serious? They're preparing a thousand missiles. <laughs> Is that really what they're doing? <laughs> Did they really say they were doing a thousand missiles this time? <laughs> tell me that's not real. Please tell me that's not real. <laughs> God. I uh, I I gotta say something. If that's real, right? Um, they will make a glass parking lot of Iran, and that's not nice to say. Um, I would I would hope that um any civilian in Iran would uh run. Run. If that was real. That that's sketchy. Oh God! <laughs> like, I don't know what to say to that. Who's they though? I w I would only trust official communications. Uh, Iranians are really cool people. Uh, I like Iranians. Uh, I got I got no beef with Iranians at all. Yeah, I'd be tr I'd really be trusting like I. Just like, like, every, like, try to get any, at this point, I'd be trying to get anything from the mouth of a, an official spokesman. Uh, do I think, oh, uh, you don't want one. If you get a surprise cut, you're going to see the market roll. No, you won't get war, dude. That's not how this goes. Like, this doesn't go like that. Um, you don't get war. They can't, neither country can go to war with each other. Neither have the um, logistics to go to war with each other. Uh, you'd have, you'd, they'd be glass parking lot. It's glass parking lot. I think I would be very careful of who you're listening to out there. Make sure you're getting it from like the mouth of a spokesman about themselves only. Yeah, do, any guys from California know there's like a huge Iranian uh, population in California. They're, Fucking awesome people. Yeah, I would, I, I would, I would, I, they can say whatever they want. Uh, if I was Iran, I would be, uh-uh, let it die. Sit down at a negotiating table or something. Dude, this looks like a buy right here so bad. Like, I want to buy the fuck out of this right now so bad. Yeah, like a remote email war. <laughs> I want to buy this so fucking bad right now. All right, just a small taste, okay? No. I got like 50 contracts lined up for tomorrow, and I'm like, I can't. It's too much money. All right. I got some 507Cs, just a taste. 
It's a little tidy taste. Five hundred seven C's for tomorrow. <laughs> Let's fuck around. <laughs> Just a little taste. Please don't blood me down in the clothes over here. Please don't do this. Like, please don't. Please don't. Please don't whore me out. <laughs> like, don't do this. Don't do that to me. <laughs> that would suck. Oh, we're back to the finger trap. Yay. Fuck you, too. I got a little taste for tomorrow. I got a little bit of risk on for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm doing okay right now. And I still got calls on for today. I haven't sold them. They went down to like six cents, and they went to like four and three. I batted some more. I'm like, ah, fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> it's fucking pennies. Earlier they, were, earlier, they were like, hey, man, you want some 30 Delta calls for tomorrow for $2? I'm like, nope. You want some Friday fucking 60 Delta calls for $5? Nope. No, thank you. All right, I'll leave this up. Um, but, dude, that shit can't be real, dude. There's no fucking way. They're out of their fucking minds. Oh, ice cold beer. Oh. Oh. Ice cold beer. Hold on a second. Let me check something here. I got to see if I'm the only one golfing today or if my buddies are going to come golfing with me. Oh, do I have Discord open? I got Discord blasting in the background. I got to turn that off. What do I have going on here? Oh, we broke. Uh, I gotta tell you something. I gotta show you guys something. This is not good. Um, uh, we have broken support on uh, SPX CTA positioning. No bueno. Hold on one second here. No bueno at all. Uh, hold on. We bring this down here. Just keep your eyes down below. Uh, we have broken support on CTA position or today. Right there. We're going to draw this one in. Uh, things are going to get bloody. Woo! Or good, not guaranteed, but a good chance of things getting bloody. We'll move this one down here. Right about there, maybe. We know there are buyers there. Panic at the disco. Whoop. Hold on here. Right there. Uh, let me get rid of this. And we're going to do something like Something like that will go red. Boom. Trend is with the bears, baby. Me uh save this. Save, yeah. Oh, cancel. I will post this in the Discord for you. Uh it's ooh. Ooh, saucy. Ooh. Let me put this in the Discord for you. Discord. Throw some skull and crossbones on there. Bulls. Woof.
Ooh. That was a good one. Oof. Trend is going to blast. Blast. Oof. When is that? Uh, let me look at that really quick. Oof. Oof. I just sent, uh, I just posted something inside of the Discord for you. Oof. Nasty. How did those all get locked? I'm going to find out what the hell happened there. Oof. 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 I'm in 507s. They're not gaining anything. They're just kind of putting around. There's no, no, no juice on them. Well, let me put the music back on here. 3.39, 20 minutes left. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, play the music again. Uh, give me just five minutes. I got one quick thing I got to do. I sound like a bear. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. One second, I gotta take care of something in the background here.
What's going on? You want to tell you what the song is called? Did you want to, was there a song playing that you wanted to hear or was it the last song or this song? Were you trying to, was they playing a song that you wanted to know where it came from or who made it? Mr. Talking Monkey, do you want me to give you access to a uh, pretzel or no? You want to take a peek at the count? All right, I'll do that, brother. Uh, uh, Mr. Talking Monkey, I'll get you some credentials and shit. I got you covered. Done. Mr. Talking Monkey's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some better music. <laughs> oh, you do that for your job? Oh, hell yeah, man. I got you covered, brother. So we're in the last 10 minutes here. We talked about this earlier. If you close short here, I got calls for today and for tomorrow. We're back in the fucking finger trap of death. Son of a bitch. Dirt bags. Oh. Fuck your puts, baby. <laughs> oh Dude, they're not paying me shit on that squeeze right now. Hold on a second here. Like th that squeeze right there, I'm flat. I'm flat on that squeeze right there. I am flat on uh, calls for tomorrow on that squeeze right there. I shit you not. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally flat right now. They're like, fuck you and your calls. <laughs> they, they give you shit on that whole green bar right there. Nothing, not a penny. Flat right now. Fucking sons of bitches. Let me get rid of these fucking pivots. Too much shit on the paper. Not a dollar. Dude, this whole turnaround, not a do not a penny. That's true. <laughs> I'm fucking flat. <laughs> I'm fucking straight up flat right now. They're like, fuck you and your calls. We ain't paying you shit. You know what sucks, too, is that if we were turning around, they'd be printing me premium right now. It doesn't suck. It means that we're not going up. I'm going to watch this close. I might have to get out. Normally, you'd see a premium kick. That means nobody's buying calls here. Nobody thinks this is the bottom. Not dealers, not participants. Nobody. No vig on an upside move here. I'm the only person with calls for tomorrow. That's what I can see. <laughs> 
No premium here. Zero for tomorrow. Not a goddamn thing. Likelihood of one more downside move into the open tomorrow. Do not get caught with size on the market for that leg down tomorrow. Do not be blowing up your accounts. If you're trading with me right now, buying zero dates on the bottoms, this should be like 0.001% of your account. Not like something where you're making money or your whole thesis stands on this. You've got no legs. You should be selling the one hour and half hour trigger. Rumor has it Tom Lee is buying. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby, print me some calls. Print me some calls. Print it for me. Yeah, I think we're going to get another leg tomorrow morning, Grabber. I think we're going to get one more quick leg down, and that's it. But I could be wrong here. I think we got one more, one more decent leg down tomorrow. Oh. Uh, do I pay attention to it? I used to. I don't care anymore. I used to like it for finding bottoms. I think it's sometimes I'll flip over to a volume. Well, I used to use the hero indicator, uh, but now I've got to put I've got to put buying and put selling and call buying put selling uh, program in the back that I watch. We have it in the Discord, by the way. I don't know if you know that. We've got a hero indicator through Trady Ticks. Uh, and we have one for um, uh, the other one. Do you guys know that? Like, do you guys know that we have a like put selling, call buying, call buying, put sell whatever put buying, whatever the inverse of that is. We have uh, two bots in the Discord that are the pro versions that offer both of those tools. So you don't need to like sign up for the Hero Indicator or anything like that. You can just go in there and click the uh, uh, the bot, and it'll show you. Uh, I will flip volume bars on for a bottom. Uh, if, we, if I think we're at bottom, I'll flip and just check the um, volume candles. But that's all I like volume for. I'm not a fan of um, I don't I'm not a fan of volume as a, an indicator of which direction we're going. If anything, no volume. We usually make larger outsized moves, in my experience. So I don't I don't personally do it. Now you want a short uh, SPXS right now? Yeah, I can get that feeling. I think we get one more leg down by morning. I think I think we're going to grab it, and then eh, pre-market or something like that, it comes to the bounce or something, I think. But we'll find out. We're so close to 500, dude. I'm fucking ready. Let's do this. I'm long, so I'm not long a ton, though. Uh, I'm not, like, size or anything like that. Calls for today dead. Calls flat right now. Uh, price is not changing. Not up, not down, not nothing. Just flat right now. If we got a squeeze in the after hours, I'd close those calls. That would be the last thing I would say to you. If we squeeze from now to 415, I would close them. Uh, that's another note to say to you. If at any chance we squeeze between now and 4.15, I would uh, close my calls here because I do not trust that we're not going to sell. Matter of fact, I'd probably add some puts at 4.14. But I don't think we're going to squeeze here. I think we're going to like go up, get the last leg down, hit 5,000, and bounce like a motherfucker. Yeah, the finger trap sucks, dude. This thing fucking sucks. We wasted our fucking hole. We wasted 
from 2 p.m. till right now in the fucking finger trap. I hate these days where, like, the move is made and then you're stuck just sitting there. Fucking around, like, for two hours, three hours, like, middle of the day all day long. Or you get a nighttime, or you get an overnight move, and then the whole day is spent flat, and then you get the move at the end of the day. It's like, it's, I feel like it's hard work. Uh, any thoughts on Tesla? Nothing's changed. Uh, expectation of 140 and then a move higher. Expectation of 140 and then that would be the dip buy for Tesla. And uh, with your stops below that, if 140 breaks, uh, price target $80. $80. And uh, I would expect some um, material negative news. Uh, Elon's removed. Something that bad. Um, Elon's removed, merger, bankruptcy, not joking. Uh, something material really bad that they've, they have not told, told us. And all the bad shit they've told you right now has nothing to do with the new bad news. One forty on Tesla, easy. Not even easy. That that's where it should hit. One forty. It should trade three hundred. Now, if that one forty is lost, Tesla's in deep shit. There'll be something. I don't know what it's gonna be. Uh, I haven't contacted my family either to ask any questions, and I'm not going to. Um, I talked to them, but I would never ask in that kind of a situation. I don't want to know what it is. Uh, you get that's some like le illegal shit. So. Um, I'm not going to ask any questions about it either. But there'll be something. There'll be something that, uh, there'll be something that's said. If I had to guess what it was, um, a lot of the bad shit's already out right now, right? Um, if I, if the, if it did happen, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if it did happen and we traded 80 bucks on Tesla, um, Try to come up with an idea of what could it be, what it could be. Um, be a tough one. Maybe X goes bankrupt. Uh, maybe X is called back for loans, and it's it, maybe it's that. Um, it could be Starlink, not Starlink. Um, it could be Neuralink too. Is it Norlink? No, Star, uh, Starlink. Could be Starlink and just by association. Could be negative to Tesla. There's been some whispers that Starlink is min mincing words on their financials. I don't know if that's... Oh, I know it's true that it's been minced words in their finan on their public statements on financials, but just by association, um, it could be something like that. But it's still a private company. It's not a public company, so... No, 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 no. Uh, they've had, they said they came into the range. They were saying something about being profitable with Starlink. And now they're saying we're in the range of being profitable. Some, some mixing of words. You don't ever like seeing that shit because it's fraudulent but legal. Um, even if it's legal fraud, you don't like hearing like um, mixing words on financials and stuff like that. Uh, he wants to charge new users. Normally, when you see stuff like when you see moves like that, normally some news comes public. Is my point. So the news might not be known right now, but if you were to trade that, the news would then become public. Insiders already know. Is my point. There'd be something material that you don't know and I don't know. see what we got here well they're really selling hard here doom and gloom down here baby we are in correctionville correction uh today was confirmed at uh nine o'clock or no nine thirty, and then um or no 10 o'clock and 12 p.m uh we are in a corrective environment on s p 500 uh be very careful out there do not be trying to buy dips in any way, shape, or form. You are selling the rip on a half-hour and hourly trigger, and you are also um, 
You are also, until conditions approve, you have no dip to buy with any size. Yeah, it's, it's been a while, right? It's been since um, August or September of last year, hasn't it? Pretty much. Uh, August of September of last year or something like that. Might be a little bit or Yeah, August. I think it was August of last year when we were in a correction. That's what I think it was right around that time, right? August, September of last year was the last time we were in an actual corrective environment. That's a long fucking time. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought begin. No, 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 no. Beginning of October, we were. Uh, was the beginning of no October twelfth? I thought was the dip to buy. I could be wrong in this. I'm fucking winging this shit. Don't hold me to anything. I'm not looking. I could be like, yeah, I'm gonna look and then sound like a rocket scientist. But I thought we were done in October, mid October. I'll have to look. I haven't looked. I think it was mid October they were started. CTA started accumulating. October 9th, and then right around the end of the month is when we started ramping with accumulation. You got to look at when the CTIs, CTA started buying. I don't recall. I'm trying to remember right now. Okay, that's it. All right, I'm going to go play some golf. Uh, you'll have your market brief tonight, or I think early, like 8, 9 o'clock or something like that. Uh, it should be fairly easy to do. Uh, that was the second. I think that was the third leg down, right? That lot. I I'll have to look and see. But um, we are in a correction. Don't let anybody tell you. Don't let anyone tell you we're not. Uh, the only way that we get out of a correction is if we get a if we get price. Ready? Price, hourly trigger, daily trigger. Successful back, uh, back test and, uh, and then a new high. Or uh, we bottom. And bottom right now, right, is likely uh, 5,000 for a local bottom. 495 zero, 4950 but as uh if the daily trigger begins to march its way down to the weekly trigger uh the weekly trigger is weak right now so we would likely see the monthly trigger uh that would be devastating uh, i think that's 450 uh maybe lower 440 450 something like that let's go look at that let's see where it is so the weekly trigger is at 485. That puts it at 490, 495. Uh, but the real danger here would be if the hourly, if the daily trigger makes its way lower. Look at this right here. If, the, if this makes its way lower, right? Uh, we can come down here and then get back above it. But if we begin to reject this, like this, uh, the target to the downside is uh, roughly 450. 450. So that's another 500 point decline. So there's a lot of room to put to trade down. Well, that's 440 now, but it won't be when we get there. So you gotta remember it'll come up. Uh, so think like 450 would be the target to the downside, which is substantial. Um, that's That's big. That's a big downside move. I don't think anyone's expecting. Four, I think like bears are probably expecting that shit, but I don't think any bulls expecting four fifty. Definitely not expecting it. And here it is, right here. I'm gonna show it to you. So before we go, let's look at it. So you can see it right here. Right. Get rid of. Let me just clear all this out. So that move right there. This rejection. We've drawn this for you in the past, right? There is your confirmation of a correction this morning. And we are in a corrective environment until things, until things improve and with a likely target of the weekly trigger. And this weekly trigger is weak. It is weak. It is not strong. I do not expect a bounce off that. I expect a blast through it and likely rejection to the downside unless we recover we can recover too don't get me wrong here um if we begin to recover at any point like start blasting up here up here take that out turn this back up bulls will be back in charge again uh if you're a bear remember that if that does happen don't be like oh we're still going down if this happens you are you are stopping selling the rip and going back to buy the dip uh, but i don't expect that to happen i expect more downside uh bulls have to bulls have to hold 495 ish like right here 
uh, for a normal correction. If they do not hold that, uh, and we do come down here and fuck around with this with this weekly trigger, we will blast right the fuck through with it. It'll get saucy. All right, I'll see all of you guys tomorrow. Uh, 9.30 in the morning, you'll have a market brief out tonight uh, about 8, 9 o'clock-ish, and I'll check you guys out tomorrow. Uh, we'll go over it tonight. In the market brief, I'll show you guys everything in the market brief tonight. Yeah, dude, you guys have a great afternoon. You made some gain, dude. We made, we did good. This whole day was a good day. Like we knew where to we knew where to uh, sell the rip. We knew where to buy the dip. We knew to sell the rip into the close, and uh, everything was good. This whole entire day was good. We knew exactly where all this shit was. So uh, we knew that this was coming down. We knew it was coming back up. We knew where the uh, sell the rip was. So everything is good. Everything is. Um, I was gonna write a question mark, but I meant to write like check mark. It's been a really good day. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully, you shouldn't have. Uh, let me go try talking directly to you if you're a bull there was at no moment today as a bull that you should have been trapped if you followed us all day long if you followed us on friday you shouldn't have gotten any trouble if you followed us all day long this morning you should have gotten any trouble uh no point did uh we get trapped into anything so if you're a bull you should if you're doing just wealth preservation uh you should be safe at this point if you're a bear uh, we gave you the signals of where to sell, so you should be making money today. Uh, if you're a bull bear, if you're a buyer seller or whatever, you should have had a really good day. If you're losing money right now uh, between the market briefs, uh, the the membership, the people in the Discord, and the live stream, uh, you I would recommend that you start writing a journal every day and finding out where you're losing money because currently, uh, nothing that we're saying or doing should be leading you into doom. So if you're like, hey, I'm getting fucked up or I'm losing my ass or whatever, you need to start writing a journal uh, because there's too many people around uh, with enough information for you uh, that there should be no whammies here. Uh, there have been no whammies. Uh, with all the World War III shit, no, not a single whammy for you. So if you are losing money right now, um, I urge you to get in the Discord and raise your hand and say, hey, look, I know that you guys know where the market's going. You know where it's going up and down and where the pitfalls are, where you get caught, um, and I'm still losing money. So I, I'm, I think that if you are losing money right now, it's likely due to um, counter trading. If you're counter trading uh, the expectations, counter trading the bear case, counter trading the bull case, getting caught in places like this. Here, let's look at it really quick. So if you're like, um, if you're counter trading, if you're like, Hey cop, I'm getting long right here. Hey cop, I'm getting short right here. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, remember we squeezed up here. We knew where the cell was. That would mean that you uh, bought this dip and you stayed long, right? When you know that there's volatility right there. Uh, so I don't know what to say there. If you're getting like cuts and stuff, that's no big deal. Um, you, and you can take cuts. It's okay to like put some risk on to take some cuts. For like one percent of your account or something but there's no big moves here that we're not seeing so and as a matter of fact to bears uh just to bears regardless of where we wind up tomorrow or overnight if we do some kind of v-shape up here bears have no place being uh, long, uh short here i'll be honest with you you can like trade one minute five minutes you can trade futures here and there but even so this is how it goes ready down like this down like this and then down like that so where are you in that trade are you just getting short right here does that make sense so if you're losing money um you're either late to trades you're bulled up when you should be bared up or neutral when you should be neutral or like neutral when you should be long or short or you're um catching trades late and i'll say one other thing here uh let's say we squeeze down here in the nighttime and then by 9 30 we're back here Right, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I was in puts and I got caught again. Right, uh, you could have just waited for up here to sell the next leg. So you need to be putting risk on in places like that, pull ups like that, that kind of shit. Does that make sense? Like you're you're either long or flat here, short there, long or flat down here. You know how we talk about things like um, you consolidate, you get the new high, and then you make the move. Uh, this is where you're long, right? And this is where you're exiting, right? This is where the money is. 
always. That same thing is on the inverse too, right? And your stops, if this was inverse, your stops are right here, right? Right below. So you're managing your risk. And I want to, I want to, I hope, I really hope, right, that particularly in this, I particularly hope in this uh, correction that um, most of you come out, if you're a bull, that you come out of it unscathed, all right? That you're like, hey, I didn't make any money, but I didn't lose any money either. I didn't like get sent. There's a thing about the market is, the thing about the market is, um, you know what the market is, right? You're like, make all this money, make all this money, and then you give it all back, right? Um, bears do the same thing, right? Making all this money, making all this money, and then they give it all back, right? So you're either sitting on your hands in a downside move, or you're selling along with bears, right? Not drinking the Kool-Aid, because the market does go up and to the right. It does not go down. It goes up and to the right. Uh, but don't give that money back is my point. So if you're cash rich right now and you're a bull, uh, you should be sitting on your hands. You have, you've got no business buying dips. Um, you can buy little dips here and there, fuck around with some zero dates or something like that, but don't give your money back to the market. Uh, because even great traders, this is where you, what you end up doing is uh, you make tons of money, you think you're a great trader, there's a pullback, or... You're like, hey, pullback, oh, I'm back making money again. I'm a great trader, great trader, great trader. And then you go from a pullback to a correction, and you give away all these gains here. So don't get caught in that during a correction. You just hang tight. You don't need to be a bottom collar or a top collar. You know how many top collars got wrecked in here? All of them. Every one of them got wrecked all the way up. They're going to tell you that they didn't, but they did. They got fucking hammered. So you don't want to be that guy over here. You don't want to be that guy that's like giving back all this money in this bullshit move to the downside, or even if we go down here, right? If we went all the way down there, you'd be giving away all your gains, the entire thing. So don't get caught with that shit. Wait and be patient until conditions improve to the upside, or wait until we have a, uh, a known bottom, or wait for major uh, intersections right? 5,000 is a major intersection. The weekly trigger is a major, major intersection. The monthly trigger is a major intersection. Uh, just make sure that you're doing that. And don't drink the Kool-Aid. Drinking the Kool-Aid for bears is like drinking the Kool-Aid for bulls. I don't want to hear them either. When they talk craziness, you know, when they say things like, especially like Tesla bulls, I'm like, get the fuck get out of my fucking face. Like, I love Tesla bulls, but I don't want to hear you tell me what the fuck's going to go on, right? Um, so just make sure you're doing that or, you're, or make sure you're you're uh, prudent, your blinders are on, and you're here to make money. Remember that. What do I say to you guys? Last week I said, put your blinders on, right? Don't listen to the World War Three shit. Don't listen to the, I don't know, we're going to the moon shit. And just trade the price right now that's in front of you in range expansion. Don't be short when, when we are already went down so much. And don't be long. We're already riding up to the top. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, that's all I got. Okay, I'll see all of you guys tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, if you're a bull, just be sitting in your hands and be cool. You don't have to do nothing. Don't give a dollar away to anybody. There's no need to. Um, all right, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, you guys have a great afternoon. I'm going to go play some golf. I'll take some pictures of some shit.